Welcome, folks, to the morning show. My name is Zeris Page, and this is Kilani Raceway. And this is the Power Series. Thanks to Bruce, we are back. It's your bright eyed and bushy tail, oh, man. It's, it's been a while. It's been a long it's been a while. while. It's been and a it's, while. it's not just us. Oh, we're just trying to shield ourselves from the wind here. It is pumping out there. But it's not just the wind that's pumping, it's the gears, it's the drivers, it's the spectators. When I walked in here this morning and even yesterday, it felt different. It's been two months since we've raced. Yeah, maybe right. more. Right. And it's time to get going. It's time to start those engines, Listen, gentlemen and ladies. The thing is, during practice, the yes, there was free practice, obviously, as you know. During free practice, the guys were having a go at each other. That's how much they missed one another. <laughs> so you can only but imagine with a bit of a tailwind in the headwind. Oh, head yes. Today is going to be a humdinger of a day. A big time humdinger. I saw some in car footage, and you're right, the guys are <laughs> jonesing to race. But we know that feeling well. If you sit out for a month or two, yeah. you get the, 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 that heater, as yeah. we say, on the Cape Flats, and the guys have that in spades today yep. because today is race day folks this is going to be one epic day dexter lots to look forward to Whew, what really, are you looking forward really, to the really most absence makes the hard to oh, yeah. where, where do you start i mean firstly we've got spinning happening on that side and i can see the guys getting ready but besides that we've got a whole host a full tune of cars right from the top bikes i think there's like 40 bikes mm -hmm. all together uh louder classic cars have got the biggest number they're sitting on 39 entries yeah. clubman's is on 35 Mm. Sports and GTs are looking good. Yeah. M uh, Pirelli Masters V8 are looking good. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. The guys have got new tires. Oh. Fresh paint. <laughs> new wing mirrors. Not for long. <laughs> Not for long. I am supporting the GTI Challenge boys today. Ooh. VW all the way. And what I'm looking for today is the culmination of the Class C Championship. Today could be could the be. announcement of a winner in Class C. Could be. Dylan van Eerden chasing that championship down in Class C today. But he's not the only one that wants to get a piece of the pie yeah. it's not over yet so theoretically there are other drivers that can put stop to that campaign and we're about to find out because they're about to head out to qualifying soon and they've just gone out the GTI challenge guys all out at the moment for qualifying and finally we can see at least yeah. some of the action for so sure. if we do get a little bit distracted over here it's good it's a good distraction yeah it's a, it's a fantastic distraction I'm sure you guys can see some of that distraction on your screens right now so the thing is like I mean obviously guys are really starting to form a little bit of an alliance they're starting to form a little bit of backup with who's going to be playing blocker, who's going to play defender, uh, who's got the most amount of power. Obviously, there's discrepancy with these guys. There's a lot of discrepancies with mm. who's got more power, mm. who's got more weight, who's got an advantage. Mm. But then they're dealing with the Cape Town wind, and if you can just about see behind us, there's a bit of a, a bit of a 47 uh, knot wind that's going to play havoc yeah. today with the brick havoc. cars because with those square cars, owners, you know, from the front and the back, they aerodynamically impossible <laughs> to be racing. It's a brick. It shouldn't be the kind of car that it is. And I've got to say, the wind kind of messed up my plans. I've got to shout out to my nieces, Megan Jade, Amy Tara. We were supposed to go quad biking tonight. And then the wind picked up. No, it is pumping today. And Kilani has a habit of actually enhancing whatever weather condition is happening in Cape Town. If it floods, the floods are bigger here. Yeah. If, it, if it's windy, the wind is pumping here. And today, we're looking at 50 uh, to 40 on the wind factor as far as speed goes, kilometers an hour. So what does that mean? That means that down the straights, the drivers either have a headwind to do with. Or a tailwind. Or a tailwind yeah. to do with, depending on yeah. which one they're on. And then turning into the corners, yeah. you're either getting pushed to the one side or to the other side. And somehow you've got to cope with all of this. So it makes it very tricky, as you can yep. see. This is what we deliver. <laughs> <with. laughs> this is what we This is what we I was chatting to, uh, to some of the bike guys this, uh, this morning, and they very worried because obviously a tailwind with them plays a huge havoc going into turn one because your brake marker has now maybe 50 meters later than or 50 meters earlier than it should be so the really the, the bike pushes you the wind pushes the bike quite deep into turn one mm -hmm. and it's very gruffy out there there's a lot of marbles out there yeah and then again you have the opposite uh, going down the back straight coming out turn four going to turn five you have a headwind so you're really going to see guys sort of tuck behind the bubbles what they call it in motorcycle racing I feel for the biker guys I feel for the biker guys yeah. because they have it worst at the moment when yeah. it comes to the wind they feel it the most they're exposed to the elements yeah. and they're going to feel this a lot and the weird thing is that this morning the wind is bad you can yeah. see it in the Port Jackson's over there but this afternoon it's yeah. getting worse so the, the bigger older bikes have a little bit of advantage
advantage because I usually have a heavier frame. The lighter smaller oh, bikes interesting. kind of they get pushed left to right, side to side. So you see quite a lot of movement from them. Um, yeah, you were just talking about the poor Jacksons. Uh, and like they cut down the trees down the side of, of, the, of uh, the back straight as well. And obviously those trees have blocked a lot of wind going for us. So there's, a, there's that fact to be dealing with. Oh, wow. Look at that. They've cut them down completely. And of course, there have been some issues lately with those trees coming apart quite literally. So it's been good maintenance that needed to happen. But you're right, Dex. That whole section is exposed now. Yeah, I'm feeling the sunburn actually because that trees would have blocked it over there. That's why I'm sitting over here. It's a bit rude to be on TV with your sunglasses. But sorry, folks. The sun is bright. And as you say, Bushitel, like we all are today. Speaking of Bushitel, Marco Busi is pumping it out there over there, Dex. I know you can't see the screen over here. We've got to share this. No, no, you go for it. It's okay, fine. so I'll, I'll grab this. Marco Busi in the lead at the moment, Class A. He is first, and you guys, I'm sure, can see the charts over here. Kai van Sale, second place. But let's see who's in Class B. Tate Bishop leads us off. Tahir, Tahir Kalfi leads us off in Class B at the moment. And Dylan van Eerden, no surprises there, leads off Class C. But Marco Busi, look, what a talent. The 145 kilowatt guys, they're always special. They're, they're very, very special. The Boolean guys, Marco Busi, he'll be away for a while, come back, and he'll be top of the table every yeah. single time. Yeah. I, bit of, I had a bit of a running with him this morning. Uh, he's super excited, had a good night's rest, dreamt about the spiders, came there in the shorts and a t-shirt in the wind, and he's ready to go. So, well, 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 <laughs> well, you, you basically threw me under the bus to explain what you're talking about spiders. When, 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 when we had a conversation <laughs> many, many years ago, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the folks should know this or don't yeah, yeah. Like, the night before you go racing hmm. what is the one thing that you dream about I, I used to I, not anymore thankfully <laughs> but every time without fail and it would be some obscure giant spider on my ceiling <laughs> and then the spider would attack me in the middle of the night and now I'm awake did the spider have a 53 on it all <laughs> that's his car number by the way he's been attacking me all season but uh, yeah the, it, today it's one of those days I spoke to some of the drivers yesterday they were yeah. nervous Say. Yeah, yeah, because, no, no. Of, because of the gap. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm sure there's a lot of rust, a lot of cobwebs you got to get rid of. Just Faisal Jacobs this morning as well. Obviously, the Class C is a massive contention. He said he's been off the pace. Uh, race pace is very different to obviously free practice yeah. pace. And he started off so well his campaign, his new campaign, and but absolutely. now he's trying to find his feet again. Yeah, yeah. And the, the thing is, the margins are very small with these uh, GTI Challenge cars. Yeah. So if you're off, you're off completely. Yeah. And it's a matter of one hundredth of a second sometimes, or five hundredths of a second. So these guys are really digging deep to try and find that half a second. Dylan though, obviously he's on the pace, uh, yeah. you know, he's been there all the time. Yes. Uh, Waylon as well in the new back off. Yes, you know, Waylon's doing really well. A new addition to GTI Challenge Young. And, and this is what the sport is about, is getting those young drivers in, yeah. developing them and putting them in a situation where it's not going to be the car is faster than the yeah. other guy. It's your cars are the same. Now you've got to figure it out. Well, let's let's cast the spotlight a little bit on uh, on Mr. Wheelworks. I think the mm. chairman of the club, uh, Zaki Hendricks, he's been a stalwart really, been racing since 2005 competitively. Yeah. He's been there from the word go. He had a bit of an off time, but he's back now and he's doing exceptionally well. Not so only well. racing, but also behind the scenes, sort of steering the guys. Um, and he's sort of one of the older guys. I think he comes from your time, your era. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to put it out there. <laughs> For my heyday, so to speak. <laughs> Your but, but Zaki, Zaki was a guy that didn't do the main circuit thing. He came here, he learned the craft. Yeah. He put the time in, and then he just got better and better and better. And he's been a championship contender for years. I remember seeing a number plate a while ago on a road corner. This is sort of, I'm going to try the story now. And the number plate said no degree, but the guy was driving obviously a brand new Mercedes Benz. So sometimes you don't have to go to a hectic race school or you have to go to all these lessons. Zaki is one of those people. Mr. Wheelworks literally learned it on the streets right here. Mm -hmm. Race craft, mm -hmm. figured his way through it. And I mean, I, honestly, what yeah. a bloke. What a bloke. Yeah. What a good guy and a threat in Class B, that's for sure. As the time winds down, Nathan Victor now currently leads off Class A. And uh, Tate Bishop in the mix with Class B. Tate Bishop, also another young talent from yeah. Angry Racing Academy. And Beautiful. a big shout out to the Bishop clan and uh, Angry Racing Academy. They got pop in by them. In If you need any gear, yeah. if you want to just go check out a cool spot, if you have a Jeep, go check out the Angry guys. What a lick a bunch of Yo, guys. Eh? Really good bloke of guys. Yeah. And then, of course, the other old topi, Ian Cap. <laughs> I did a crawl. I mean, we can't get rid of those guys. They are, they've been here from the word go. He's had a bit of a, I would say, run of bad luck this year with his car. Rebuilt freshly car. 
one or two see one or two races he's had a bit of an off uh they struggle to get the car back again the car seems to be on pace now so let's see if ian cap can bring that hydrocool car back into uh winning contentions this morning oh they got two minutes left there marco busi now in second position uh kai van sale in third kai of course the second generation to race yeah. gti challenge at this stage and then in class b tate bishop still leads us off tahir just behind him kyle walcher wow. mario rue then zaki hendrick so zaki is looking mark van tini and dylan van eerden the two championship rivals just two tenths of a second apart wow. in class c brent van escape nura bus and the rest of the clan oh look at this list just goes on and on <laughs> craig the toy makes his return I after so some bad luck yesterday that's going to be someone to watch yeah. i mean he's been super aggressive back in the day yes. with the blue golf i mean mm -hmm. you drove the car what a what a championship contender what a championship has. contender and always has been right up there and also the kind of guy that can fix the car himself on the day yesterday shame yesterday he had some bad luck with the car something broke on the car and i saw him make a, a, a post and the crate probably going to see this at some stage i saw him make <laughs> a post where he was feeling sorry for himself oh we're not going to race tomorrow i'm thinking to myself no crate no. that i know no, is going to no. fix that car now uh, look, if he does it for other people, there's no chance he's not going to do it for himself. And he's cars here today, and oh. he's on track. So, okay. Craig the Toy, well done to you, my friend. Welcome back. <laughs> One name we should probably see back here soon, hopefully, is uh, Mr. Simon. Mm. We'll see him back in a, in a, in a GTI Challenge car. Two-time I mean, champion, eh? Oh, come on, that car. Two-time champion. Name yeah. on the board, forever in stone. <laughs> so, Paul Simon, of course, uh, runs the circuit over here. And uh, just, again, another talent of motorsport. He did two uh, few seasons of GTI Challenge, one, yeah. two in a row. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's been done too often. Uh, I, I think uh, Piet van der Valt might have done it yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. But uh, Paul definitely in a class of his own. Let's see if he's back. I've got to say though, as someone that's done GTA Challenge many years ago, these, these young guys are the, fast. The, the game is different though. The game these is young different. Guys are I fast. mean, they're working with 145 kilowatts in class A, 115 yeah. kilowatts in class B, sub 100 kilowatts in class C, and the guys are doing class times of literally now, our cars. I mean, yeah. 170, 180 kilowatt cars are yeah, there. The class C guys so, are just. Yeah, they're on it. I mean, the Spice Maker car, let's not forget about the Spice Maker car. Between the sandwich of Mark Fontini, uh, Dylan Van Eerden, the championship contender, those two, um, you're going to see that Spice Maker a cars get in between there and i think that's going to be for me that's going to be the the, the the class to watch today it's yeah. going to be the class c cars they always are but i think this time around i mean this is the penultimate run they've got one more to go after this yeah but the, the decider is today the decider is today and yeah. you can't win it in the first race but you can no. lose it in the first race so you can lose it on the first corner <laughs> <laughs> but these guys i don't think they get that memo eh? because when it comes to the first corner these guys go hard as the time has now clicked down and uh, we're just waiting for them to cross the line nathan victor in first marco busi second Kai Fansel third in class A. Class B so far, Tate Bishop uh, in first position. Tahir Kalpi in second place in B. Carl Wilshire rounds up the top three. Mario Ryu in the mix. Zaki Hendricks right behind him. So Zaki is within striking distance. And Dylan Van Eerd and Mark Fantini in class C with Noor Abbas third in class C. So that's what your class C looks like at the moment. It might change as they cross the line. If I miss it, I apologize. Yeah. But uh, have a look and check. You. I'm sure you guys can see sure. the graphics on your screen right now. Rest assured that that all does change going into turn one in race one. Oh yeah. You know, with, with, the, with the way these boys go into turn one, it's no old bods. It's no old bods. Pole position doesn't really mean anything. Mm. You know, it's the one <laughs> 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 and this is what they do. You've got Tiny in the house, so we have Tiny Brand in the house. And this is what they do, that first corner GTA yeah. challenge. That's where everybody sits yeah. because you know it's going to be action-packed. And it's one of the main overtaking spots on the circuit. These guys' race craft is so good, it's very difficult to overtake yeah. in other places. But they make a plan in turns one, two, and three. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people sit on the corner over there and watch the racing from that corner. So if you are coming to the circuit, make your way down to turn one for GTA challenge. You will not be disappointed. Pointed. absolutely and that's the end of challenge qualifying as it stands right now uh let's wait and see who is next and as i mentioned you guys can see the stats on the screen here hopefully our producers are sharing with you guys all the visuals that you need to see as we've got some people popping in in the background here coming in for interviews yeah and the first of those interviews should start shortly you guys don't have to listen to the both of us <laughs> all the time one of us will step out from oh, time to time you can come in let's, let's, let's have an interview let's with mr. Arendtse. have an interview with mr Orenser, please, number 33. <laughs> morning, morning. Number 33, wearing number 46. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? You, are you feeling today? You're looking sprightly. You're feeling good today? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Thanks. Um, it's just been a while since we've been here. Yeah. How long exactly? I forgot the date. How long has it been? We've been here. We raced also 29th of July. It wasn't. Yeah, I'm crazy. chatting to Dexter now like, like we're sitting at home now, but it was the 29th of July. Yeah. That's a long time ago. So, 
tell me, let's walk the audience through what it's like to have a gap like this. You talk about August, September, now we're in October, two and a half months. What's it like to have a gap like this when you're racing a no, bike? No, it had a big effect. I, I came down here on Tuesday for the first time since July and I did a few laps. I was five seconds off my pace. Jeez. Yeah, so crazy. Mm. And it's weird. I've, I've been four seconds off the pace after a big gap as well. And you think to yourself, I'm going as fast as I can. Where is that time? Yeah, look, obviously the circuit was a bit sketchy on Tuesday because it, we were the first uh, group to ride. You know, you know who messed it up. You know who messed it up. Yeah, you guys. There's a rally cross guys. <laughs> That's true. I blame you. Yeah, no, no, we, we, we know, but we understand. I mean, there's, there's a lot of preparation and work gone into preparing the rally cross circuit and then to undo <laughs> that to make it uh, main circuit it's, friendly it's again. Yeah. I actually, uh, uh, Dexter, I competed in the time attack. I'm really sorry. And I lost it in the same corner that we dirtied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I know the feeling. I was yeah. also a bit upset at the rally cross, guys, because turn three becomes a bit sketchy. Yeah, eh? no, no, no. But it's cleaned Especially up nicely. Okay, yeah, nice. it's cleaned up nicely. There was some cars out on Thursday that cleaned it up a bit, and of course yesterday's uh, sessions cleaned it up quite a bit. So hopefully today we'll, we'll be looking good. Okay, nice. So uh, the wind. What does the wind mean to the biker guys? Well, how does that affect you guys? It, it affects us in a big way. It, it affects us on both straights, mm. where it slows you down on the back side because it's southeaster, and on the front straight it pushes you into turn one. So if you break at your normal marker, no. you're gonna. So be arriving right. faster because of the wind and you're going to run off or run wide in turn one then besides that so what's your if you if you don't mind sharing the information what is your meter adjustment for the brake i would probably i'd probably adjust it by about five to ten meters yeah because of yeah. the wind yeah. yeah that's a lot eh? um and and uh, and then going into into five well going into five you could probably break about 10 meters later probably yeah. but um but but the, the wind in the turns is is where it affects us going through turn one and, and three and four because there's open areas um, where the wind can blow can, can get you to the to the to the corner. Yeah, and, and uh, it pushes yes, you either from this you. side or pushes you from that Correct. side. It pushes to riding three, and in turn four you've got to lean into the wind to get through the corner. If, and if you're oh, leaning weird, into a eh? gust and the gust suddenly stops, yeah. then the bike leans more. I've heard <laughs> that the, the the bikers have a big problem like that. I remember the first time I went through turn three with a golf, and I couldn't believe how the nose as soon as you turn the nose gets pushed wide. Yes. And I thought, and even back then I thought, oh man, the, the bikers must have it the worst. Yeah, no, look, but we, we got a, we got a, it's the same for everyone. So, so I love just, that saying. Yeah, the, the only advantage we have in the bigger bikes is that they are heavier and they get blown a little bit less than the smaller mm. bikes. So, yeah. so the, the guys in the 300s, they're going to be battling. De Dexter was mentioning yeah. earlier on, uh, I didn't even realize this, that the older frames are heavier than the, the, the newer, lighter sort yeah. of space frame stuff. Yes, the, the, the frame's going to be faster overall, but you're dealing with some different, uh, you're dealing with less weight, which means you're going to be pushed around a little bit easier. Yes, no, that's true, that's true. Uh, but I mean, so, like I said, the lighter bikes, they're going to be more affected by the wind. Um, but, but also, uh, because I, I commute on a bike as well, and, and when you... You're used to riding like this? Yes, <laughs> but, but also, also um, I, I get the feeling that if you go to, like when I commute, okay, if you go too slow in the wind, the wind has a great effect, because now you try and battle to keep the bike upright, whereas if you just go at 80 k's or 100 k's an hour, it, it, you I don't know wind. about that. I remember when yeah. I had my scooter trying to go faster in the wind <laughs> <laughs> on the vault. Right? Yeah, but, but look, like it's, 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 it's one of those things, it's, it's summer in Cape Town, the southeaster blows, we've got to live with it. We've got to live with it, that's yeah. one of the things and it's just another element that adds to the spectacle, that adds to the experience yeah. for the spectators and the racers. I love it when there's a little bit of spice thrown into the mix, yeah, it keeps no. things interesting. No, for sure, but uh, we, we actually had to qualify yesterday, so the super are done with qualifying. Uh, but the other two classes are qualifying this morning. And so. how did the Superbike qualifying go for you? Um, for me, it didn't go that great. I'm a second and a half off my pace. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to make up a little bit of that today. Yeah, I'm sure. And, push and, and it's better than when you started. Yes. So yes. let's see who's out at the moment. We've got Formula Libra out at the moment. Darren Liebenberg leads us off at the moment. Still early day. Oh, they've got two minutes left. We were talking a lot, eh? <laughs> we were talking a lot. So yeah, I'm going to bring Dexter in again. Sure. Mr. Orenser, thank you so much for joining us good luck today thank you very I much the 33 performs like the 46 usually yeah, that's does. A, that's <laughs> a, yeah, so too. thanks for having me cheers bye-bye bye-bye so there we go we've got formula libre out at the moment darren liebenberg leads us out
in class C. Cyril Somerville in there as well. Zane in class V. Ricky Anderson, the second generation. Anderson, Kelly Fletcher, a previous race winner. DJ Boyson right at the back of the moment. I don't think he's done a lap yet. So uh, they've only done two laps at the moment. Okay, I see. Okay, we've got seven minutes to go. I thought so. That was yep. only the time that's elapsed is three minutes. They've got seven minutes to go. So it's still plenty time to go for the Libra guys. They got, they got yeah, time. No, they, they're kind of figuring it out. Still. I think the, the wind is also going to play a little bit of havoc with them, but they stand the best chance. I mean, they're yeah. the most aerodynamic cars that we have. Yeah. Bar. But you, you do feel with the Libras, you do feel the wind push on the aero, especially yeah. on the on the side, those flaps on the side. Yeah. It pushes on the side through turn three, and it takes a bit of getting used to. But most of these guys are quite seasoned. Yeah. Uh, we'll go check to them later on and find out if there are any drivers that are finding their feet here today. But uh, most of them are quite seasoned. But I'm keen to hear what the experience is. Just like we Absolutely. heard from Wayne now, what is the experience it's, it's, like? I mean, I'm sure it's something difficult to deal with. But the clubman's guys, I think they're going to suffer the most as well. I mean, with those turbocharged bricks out there I mean most of the class A cars to be very fair is, is turbocharged cars at the moment mm. where there's a Golf Mark 2 which is square Golf Mark 1 which is square <laughs> a BMW which is square so I mean these guys, these guys should really look into aerodynamics at this track eh? and let's, let's, let's face it this is Chicago this is the Windy City we live in it's not yeah. PE it's not you P. guys don't get that title okay every time I've been to PE there's no wind but people say PE is windy they're I mean. talking nonsense <laughs> they're talking nonsense some w one dude went there and he probably just announced it on the news and now all of a sudden everybody believes it but Cape Town <laughs> as, uh, it's you know Dex I'm keen to hear if the trees made it difference because when we look back here and I know you guys can't see it at the moment yeah I don't know if we can uh, get our cameraman to zoom and check that out but when you look at the back here you can see the trees are gone oh, on yeah. their backs yeah. and there was a lot a lot of work done over the last couple of weeks and but there were a lot there were a lot of trees there, there were a lot of trees there but the trees were both good and bad yes to provide shade but also we had some incidents with it I mean they're old trees they've been here since I mean the good bridge was here yeah good, good year bridge sorry. I actually read an interesting article about why Port Jackson's are everywhere in Cape Town is because the Cape Flats was so difficult to get over with a wagon because the sand was so soft yeah so what they did was to make the sand easier to get across yeah. they planted a whole bunch of Port Jackson's from Australia and thought okay job done and now a hundred years later we're dealing with the problem ladies and gentlemen <laughs> David Attenborough <laughs> <laughs> our BB cycle <laughs> uh, when I read this I was like wow I'm totally gonna use that on the morning show at the next time but it's, it's such an interesting thing for that sure. we, we, we create these problems for future generations yeah. and now all of a sudden Kilani people are having to cut out for sure, for sure I want to throw a little bit of spice on the fire here a uh, little bit of a dark thing going around with regards to the sports and GTs not allowing certain cars to drive. Th those are the rules. Well, it's not really dark. These are the rules. But okay. did you have a car that you want to bring? I don't have a car that I want to bring. <laughs> but Marco Retta did. And, okay. and so did uh, so did me and the toy. So they've got pretty high powered, you know, either x scouting cars or they bolted it over here. I'm not sure. BMWs, eh? BMWs making well over 500 kilowatts with aero and the rest of those things. And truth be told, uh, there's no way for them to race in Cape Town, mm. right? They can't go do Clubman's, they, they're going to bust. Isn't Clubman's busy with a new class, class at the moment? Class S. Yes. Class S is sort of in yes. the making and they're yes, busy yes, sort of yes. getting that down. Look, I don't want to jump ahead of the game here, but let's hope that that pans out. That, I think that, we need that. I think a couple of years ago, if you remember correctly, they had the Thunder, thunder yes, Saloons. saloons. Yes, at yes, the yes. end of the day, it was a Rang Wachu Brang kind of a yes, thing. Yes, and it, was yes. really, it worked really well. Um, so now they actually were given the go ahead the green light to race the m3s and the 500 kilowatt cars in sports and gts now the rule of thumb is with the sports and gt it has to be classed as a sports car so according to their rules a bmw m3 technically it's a sports car right you know but, 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 but what we take a two door four door two door or four door because they're both m3s okay this is the spice uh -huh. Uh -huh. so do you say that my and i don't have one my bmw <laughs> 235 for example which okay. also makes 500 kilowatts is a sports car and somebody did actually approach nah me. but the 235 was most now not an m car well this, the m this car one's got sports this car. one's of mine I'm, I'm creating a story this one of uh -uh. mine's got a 2j in and it's got the best suspension it's a two-door sports car because so what are the rules with regard to the car being an original sports car from the factory so if you class if you go into wikipedia you'll see most coupes are sports cars yes. right and 350z type is, of is a sports car but so is an m3 and so is a 235 so this is this is kind of the gray area Ooh. and i think they're just sort of getting past that now where for the first time ever they've actually allowed a bmw m3 with high power to race with them 
So today oh, wow. is the very first it's time we've seen wait. it. Uh, they, they live near the toy race with them. They actually think Mark uh, and I hope the rest of them like coming second, third, and fourth. Eh? <laughs> now, so now. Do, you know, do you know the thing is that with the sports in GTs, they're doing 113s, 112s, 111s. You're dealing with a Janetta. Mm. There's a new car. Mike Gavetti's got a LSX powered BMW Z4. Wow. That thing's making 550. Marco Retta's brand new E46 is making who knows what. It's yeah. going to turn the earth around. Wow. You've got the W Bear in his Lotus Exige. Wild Rose. You wild, wild Rose. Rose. Boys. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, so, so, so the Sports and GTs today is going to be a bit of a deciding factor as to how well they treat this BM3 mm. and how well it does. I've, I've chatted to Marco Retta downstairs and he said, look, He's going to tread a little bit lightly, he doesn't want to tip on anybody's toes mm. and he's going to just drive to survive today. Yeah. We know that once you do that, Ooh. the drive to survive, I mean, we were, that, that, we had a good <laughs> conversation that I know you Yeah. And then that happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the word ready to race came on. <laughs> yeah, the two of us did rally cross together and we've been doing rally cross together and when, when the helmets are off, it's all high fives, but as soon as the helmets come on, then it's, then it's this. <laughs> I never saw the chicken flag, I saw a bull. <laughs> <laughs> with a target thing. Yeah, exactly. And and you can't blame the guys because it's motorsport. That's the mm. thing. They say they 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 I love the, the the quote. There are only three sports in the world. Motorsport, bullfighting <laughs> and combat sports. The rest are all games. Yeah, I know for sure. The rest are all games. You're for playing sure. with a ball. For sure. I love rugby as much as the next <laughs> person. But this is a, a sport of it's, it's a combat sport in a way because you put on your protective gear yeah. and you go out there and do battle and that's what these guys do speaking of battle as we go to uh, formula libra over here uh, i've got dj boyson now leads us off again he's back on top darren liebenberg in second position in class c so dj boyson i think the only the lone class s car here at the moment rainer pence in third place in the 65 kelly fletcher in there as well ricky anderson in there as well you guys can see your names on the list but dj boys are no surprise 122 uh 122 is not bad but i'm sure dj I'm, i think dj can definitely go faster than that well, i think he's uh he's the only one up there now at the moment so he's going to probably be sandbagging and not risking at all as well with this yeah. win it is maybe, qualifying maybe something all. is not right to the car but yeah. i'm sure you can do much better times than yeah. that I think it's a good time to bring in Frankie. Frankie should be standing in the wings. Oh yeah, Frank is Frankie here. I gotta say, Dexter, you and I are, are both commentators in the Western Province. Nobody right? can compare to Frankie. No, but but I gotta say, I've got a favorite commentator, and I'm not even just saying this because the man's standing right here. <laughs> I'm saying this because he is my favorite commentator around these parts, <laughs> Mr. Frankie Yenis. I'm gonna hand it over to Frankie now. Frankie, an absolute pleasure to have you in the studio. Please thank join you. my friend Dexter over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Oh, jeez. Oh, it's it's oh, always nice this, to put this, this face to the voice. This, this feels good. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally nice to sit next to you and chat to you. I haven't interviewed you for a while. It's been a while, it's eh? It's been a while. I've always missed you. I mean, listen, Rally Cross is finished. We oh, are man. now at local, local level, regional level. We were just saying how much the guys, how exciting the guys have been. But before we get there, what was it like? Just give the people out there, what was it like doing the whole World Rally Cross commentary? Well, I can I can say it uh, worldwide. I think that the uh, sideshow became the main show <laughs> at, at the end of the day, and then it was the other way around. Yeah. Uh, we had 36 cars. I actually worked it out. Um, if you take the WRX guys, if you take the quali the qualifying session away. Yeah. They had 18 races in two days. Wow. We had 48. Come on. For the um, the the, su the so-called support, support class, race, which yeah. actually became the main event. Yeah, look. <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, folks, uh, it, was, it was awesome. Um, not the amount of spectators that I thought we would have, yeah. uh, but we expected that. Yeah. And then the win factor as well on Saturday was, was horrific. Was big, was big. But yeah, it was an experience. It was good. And I think if local rally cross was not on the map, yeah. it's definitely on the map now. That's for sure. For sure. So there's a definite good future. And thanks to you guys and your team for delivering such a good message all day long. I and mean, we really, uh, we really appreciate you guys from our side. But back to the local stuff. Back mm. to let's start with Clubman's. 30, 35 cars. Yeah, there's about 35 uh, Clubman's cars. I know classic cars is around about the 40 mark, yeah. the 39. The yeah. last time I heard. Uh, GTI Challenge guys just went out to qualify now and the Libras just came in from sure. their qualifying session 
and yeah other than the supercars it's a it's a full house today it's a full house today and i'm sure the guys i mean we were chatting earlier the last time they all raced race together was the 29th of july so it's yeah. been a while so they've got some cobwebs they need to get rid of there's a little bit of rust so do you think the approach for them is going to be go all in race one or do you think they're going to leave it for the latter part of the day Look, it all depends on how the championship points lie because this is the second last race yeah. of the 2023 season, November being the final one. So uh, all depending on how the points is uh, will determine how the guys are, are going to approach the day. Sure, sure, sure. And then again, luckily we haven't got the rain, but we've got the wind factor. We do, we do. We and do. especially with the southeaster that's, that's pumping, it's going to affect the cars and bikes on certain parts of the of the racetrack the southeast are blowing from turns uh, four sidle sweep up to turn five uh, fast run you're going to have that southeast to help you up that back straight yeah but between turn five and turn one you're going to go into the teeth of the southeaster and through the corners yeah it's going to unsettle a car or a or rider bike, yeah. on a bike yes. so if you were sitting at home watching this where would be the best place in your experience to sit to see the most amount of action Basically between turn three and four on the main grandstand by the bull bar. Yeah, and if you stand on the track and look up, it will be the top left hand side. Okay. You can basically see ninety eight percent of the circuit from there. And over there, I mean there's, there's toilet facilities, there's there's yes. a bar facility there, you're gonna yes. see most of the track. So that's really generally the best spot. Basically to between between turn three and four, between interceptor and, and sidle sweep. Fantastic. So Getting back to the clubman's cars, I mean, uh, I'm hoping to get my clubman's car back as well to be back with the boys. I've seen quite a few turbocharged cars in the Class A, but then yep. I see Cedric Burgers back in his BMW. There's quite a few BMWs in, back in the mix again. And then, of course, there's that near the toy section of cars, Mia Bench and those things. Yes. What are we looking at in terms of those cars? I mean, how competitive are those guys in A and B? Oh, look, if they're part of NDT racing, of Neander toy racing, guaranteed they will be prepped to uh, perfection. Yeah and uh, we know what quality of work Neander Toy can put out sure. <laughs> so it all depends on the buyer on the day and, and uh, Neander will obviously have taken those cars out on track in the week himself to yeah. make sure that they are right yeah. and that they can go fast <laughs> so uh, it, all, it all depends on, on the driver on the day but uh, it will be good to see what they do knowing that Neander's behind it you can't go wrong Classic cars, 39 entrants, obviously yes. Franco He's going to be up there with the best of them, Michael Hitchcock. Who yeah. else do we have? Oh, geez, I don't know. I'll have to look through the program quickly. Yeah, we've got quite a few of them to be uh, quite, quite honest with you. But I think um, the, the, the Ford Granada, I mean, he's, he's in the mix as well there. That, that, uh, that car is also pretty quick. Yeah, but if you have a look at the entry list just here on, on the program, you've got Franco Donadia, you've got Glenn Ethan Bogard in the Granada, Michael Hitchcock, as you said, the Mustang. Yeah. Charles Arton with the Rotary RX2. Louis Powell back with the Meisner Escort. So good. And uh, it just keeps on going. And then there's a few fine cars that have entered in Class X. I see. Is that what it was? I saw Chris Catalan's name back on the list as well. Yeah, and there's a couple of classic cars. There's a lot of fine cars in okay. Class X as well. Yes. Okay, okay. And then, of course, Ernest Leet is back in as well after a couple of... Oh, he's uh, been away for a while. <laughs> been yeah. away for a while. And then the last... Uh, people i want to talk about is of course the pirelli the masters v8s yeah gold and silver quite a few guys they really are the gti challenge of the upper echelon they they don't they, they don't mince their words when it comes to look last year um <laughs> and even the beginning of this year yeah. um i was on the mic for quite a few of the v8 masters yeah and at one stage i even said to gary i think it was these guys think that they are gti challenge <laughs> class c because uh, there was no uh, no, no punches pulled, that's for sure. And uh, cars that cost that amount of money, um, they, they might be 40 plus, but they drive them like uh, teenagers. <laughs> it, it makes for good racing, though. It makes it for does, good entertainment, it does, it does. good racing, you know. And always good to see 14, 15 V8 Thunder down the back straight. Absolutely, that's always ab nice. Absolutely. But, Frankie, for the people out there, last few words before they come out there. Should they be coming today? Is it going to be a good day? Yes, yes, yes. Come calm on. down. If you can't come down, I'm your set will be uh, going out live, but there's nothing like being at the track on, on race day to smell the racing fuel and to enjoy the atmosphere. So race one is scheduled in an hour from now, half past nine. So if you can get here half past nine, please do. Otherwise, join us as the day goes on. You heard it first. This is Frankie Innocent, the man of Cape Town, the voice of choice. Thank you very much, Frankie. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you very much. That's, uh, that's Frankie. We're going to bring Ernest back in again to frame.
I uh, think we got on track now. Uh, looks like it's the Clubman's cars. Mm. Uh, Clubman's cars. Oh, on track finally. Now. Finally, it's Clubman's time. Finally, it's Clubman's time. The and Tin Top Boys. The Tin Top Boys. And the Tin Top Boys today are going to be pushing it. Because, you know, the, the thing I like about those cars is that the front running guys are incredibly fast. Yeah. It's incredibly close. The fields are big. And then you've got a dice happening everywhere. everywhere. You could be class E, class D. You've got a dice happening everywhere. And at the moment, speaking of dicing, we're waiting for our... Uh, results here if i can just get my produ producer to have a look at this uh, pad over here because the ipad's not working we could just get that sorted out if you don't look, mind what i like the most about class a Ernest, is you have uncle jesse Hagen. we're gonna call him you know the, they call themselves the old topia racing team <laughs> yeah 13 inch rims normally aspirated motor doing the times yeah and he doesn't want to change it eh? he likes his car he likes the way his car drives he wants to be competitive against the turbo boys 191 kilowatts and he's delivering fantastic times against 350 kilowatt bmws and that's the beauty of tin top racing clubman's racing you have all of these different sort of uh, cars that also that we can relate to Ernest. these, these yeah. are cars that you and i can actually own and buy and our family members drive you know yeah. so it's it's really very relatable form of motorsport yeah and again i mean you have all cars so that's what it is i mean uh, uh, leading off at the moment yeah uh, we got uh Kosi Swanepoel in the mix <laughs> someone that both of us raced against uh, recently Co friend and foe friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in yeah, joke, you're not allowed to do in jokes on these types of platforms. But let's what get it, it is. What it is, uh, we raced against Kwasi Swanabul other day. What, what an honor. I eh? made the mistake, it's a good mistake, of yeah. phoning him and saying, We need you to race. Yeah. And then it ended up actually being to my demise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two of them came together twice. Yeah, so. But what a driver, wow. what a personality. He races with a brain. He races with a brain, and it was just an honor to share the track with him. And I'm sure the same can be said for the rest of the guys. Are the Imad Modak in the mix, Niyaz Modak, Cody Alberts, Jesse Agat, Shane Smith, Bassi Berger. I mean, the list goes on and on. All of these are known names. Speaking of known names, we got DJ Boyson over here yeah. from Deco Racing. We're going to pull him in. Dexter, I think it's time for you to get out the sun for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, my turn to Morning. chat to one of our racers over here. Right, so lekker, lekker. Just out of breath, um, we had so long period off, so I'm a little bit unfit now. But so. people don't understand how <laughs> physical it is to drive those Formula cars. You're, of course, leading off Formula Libre at the moment. Um, what's it like, and, and this is the question and the theme for this morning, what's it like in the wind in those cars? I, I, I forgot, the last time I drove one of those was in 2010. Yeah, the wind is bad, um, but it has its ups and it has its downs. I mean, it's helping us in the, in the front straight, so obviously it's pushing from the back. Mm. But the back straight is it's hectic. It keeps you back. The, and the yeah, car does this as well, doesn't yes. it? Yes, and especially with the rally cross, that was I think it was two weeks back or something. So you can feel turn two and turn three is not really there's not much grip on the on the tarmac, mm. especially now. So I don't want to change the car a lot. So I get a lot of understeer there. But I think it will, during the day, will get all, all better and better. Okay, better. cool. So, so, so basically, you're going to try and feel it out and see how that goes as Niaz yes. Modak leads us off at the moment in the number 37 or the 122. And you can see that on your screen right now. So the side wins, that's also another theme that we're talking about over here. That's the big one, especially into three. Now you've got less grip going into three. You're turning in there. You've got the crosswind coming over there. What's that like? Yeah, it's it's ridiculous, eh? but it's, it works, especially with the Formula 4 Falcons that we so much error on the car with all the wings and all the end plates and the diffuser, everything helps. I mean, but like I said, I don't want to discuss too much with the with the car. I think mm. the wind is going to calm down a bit later on, so the car I, feels I, good. So I, I checked the wind report last night. Uh, granted, I didn't check this morning, but last night it looks like the wind is picking up towards midday and then only tapering off much, much later. So I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. And you know, Yevyet Moskilani's got a climate of its own, eh? So it could be no wind here later on and windy everywhere else. Yeah, I know, especially. But let's take it from there and then we do some settings on it. Um, our main goal is just to finish the day because it's for the championship, we're leading the championship mm, now. Yes, at the you moment. are. So I think if we have a good day, we might close it up. Hopefully, we don't have any issues on the car and stuff. So the main goal is just to finish, basically. Yeah. To finish first, you must first finish is a saying often said. And uh, Deco Racing over here, 
is one of those drivers that will hopefully implement that today. We wish you luck for the championship. We wish you luck for today. Thank you so much. And yeah, if, if you can finish the day without pushing too hard and driving through that understeer, then why not? Yeah, and then we can have a cold beer after that. <laughs> oh, I look forward to that one. <laughs> nice seeing right. you again, but Cheers, like, come on. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, Daniel Kutsir leads us off. And uh, one of the guys that I support in Clubbins is the 46 of Daniel Kutsir. Good car. Good car, good, good, car. good gent. Niaz Modak keeping him on his course. He's wonderful in third place. Twos, but he's always in the mix, eh? <laughs> always in the mix. You know, yesterday I went to him just to exchange some cool drinks and whatever. <laughs> and uh, he wasn't going to race today. <laughs> At that point, he didn't know whether or not he was going to race. I just looked down and I happened to see his cock pulling out a pit lane and he's ready to go. Yeah, born, no, a racer, born a racer. Born a racer. And, and, and we did an interview with him for uh, the TV show that we work on, All Things Motoring. And one of the things we spoke about is the legacy that the Swanepoel name has. How his father was one of the people to literally start motorsport in the wow. Western Cape. wasn't even here. It was uh, at some circle somewhere. I can't remember which one it was. I'm sure Frankie will be able to tell us the history lesson. It slipped my mind now. But it wasn't at Kilani. And then they started Kilani and he was part of the core team. And of course he was saying since as far back as he can remember, he's been running around here in Kilani, practicing at the go-kart track. He said there's some, they did some sneaky things where they had to move cars <laughs> from that side. But then they actually raced it around the track when he was younger. So of course he's wonderful a name that rings true it's, here at Kilani and once again it's top of the uh, top of the bill there in third place let's go see what class B is up to Andre Diedrichs in class B leads us off there oh that car is beautiful it's a the camel E30 with an M3 body kit wow it is absolutely beautiful wow I'll go check that out uh, so we've got to finish up soon as uh, the rest of the commentary team start making their way up. If we can just get an indication of how many minutes we need to go, then uh, we can uh, wrap this one up over here. We've got two minutes left on screen. Uh, one, two, one, two. So, I think that... that well, they, no, no, I'm, I am. Everything seems on. Apparently, our audio seems to be down here. Okay. Uh, I think our audio is going to be down. We're going to cut this one off and start sending it back up to the commentary team. Uh, let's hear from. Uh, let's can I? Let's see if we can hear yeah, you. Yeah. I think uh, one, two. Come. Yeah, let's you, Dexter. If you wouldn't mind uh, sending yeah. us off, just in case, we're going to say goodbye now. Over yeah. To you, so. If you're out there and you want to come out to the track today, today is going to be a really good day. It's the penultimate round. There's one more to go after this. The guys are going to be ready to go. The wind has definitely settled down just a little bit. Between turn 3 and turn 4, that's going to be the best spot. Bring your family. Come and braai. The hill is available. There's plenty of braai spots. Of course, entertainment for the kids. That's what we love. The racing is going to be epic. Mm -hmm. Well over 150 vehicles and motorcycles racing today. Yeah. Bring it in. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And we're going to see you guys at the lunchtime show.
and uh, welcome to Kelowna International Raceway. A little bit windy and um, I think it's going to stay that way all day long. You can see the cloth over the top of Table Mountain. Once that's the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, it carries on like that the whole day. But I think it'll be warm enough for us to enjoy the day. Coming to you from the commentary box, myself, Gary Gaza Fleming from Second Gear Productions, the voice of Kalani International, Frankie Hennis, Byron Height are joining us as well upstairs, and then uh, doing duty with the uh, nearby farm lookers, otherwise known as binoculars, will be uh, Tiny Emil Brunt, the man from uh, Tiny's Pit Box. We'll bring you as much information as we possibly can. Right, folks. Good day, Frankie Ennis, Mike Side. <coughs> and uh, welcome to Kalan International Raceway, everybody around the track. And all you people that are watching the production at home, brought to you by I'm You Set. You're getting ready for the opening race of the event. Uh, Byron Height will be joining us, Mike Side, as well. And the opening race of the day will be in the uh, Pirelli V8 uh, Master category and uh, the cars are in the uh, opposite uh, pits getting ready to come out onto the circuit and uh, Fabio Tafani and Marcel Angel will lock out the front row of the grid followed there by Sean Moore, Alistair Brown, Jason Iberton, Barry Ingle, Mark Vogert, Gary Thompson, Brandon Dean, Ken Finneman, Stuart Spooner and then Lynch Jordan that is a new driver car combination out there and he is uh, at the tail end of the field. Nice to see that uh, Mark Bogart is the fastest of the silver class alongside Gary Thompson. So that's going to be a pretty interesting dice. The difference between the front uh, three, just 0.6 of a second. Nothing much in that whatsoever. Marcel Angel, Fabio Tufani. Well, who knows? Can Fabio Tufani? Lock out the front end of the grid once again, like we've seen him do so many times for 2023. Marcel Angels had a pretty good run recently as well. Can never ever count him out. And his teammate Jason Ibertson on a 116.360, just a little bit further down. Sean Moore on a 115.8, as opposed to Marcel on a 115.75 so just six hundredths of a second between the man on the outside of the front row and the inside of row number two and that's pretty much just one quicker gear change uh, that's all there is into it or just going slightly high and putting a wheel on a curb stone and just getting a little bit of spin on that wheel that's a difference in a couple of hundredths of seconds as such so the first race of the day, Pirelli V8 Masters. Big, big thanks to City of Cape Town and Wingfield Motors. City of Cape Town coming on board big time with Kalani International Raceway and Wingfield Motors. I think it's now 10 years back to back. Wingfield Motors have uh, been the main sponsor of the local series, the power series as such. But frankly, the last time we were here was with Extreme Festival and wow, that was quite a session. Yeah, that was in uh, September month, and the last time uh, these uh, drivers and riders raced here at uh, Kalani was in July. It was the last time we had the uh, Wingfield Motors Power Series, and then we had the Extreme Fest in uh, September. Nothing happened here in October, uh, up until now. So uh, we are already in all systems go for the following round <coughs> of the Wingfield Motors uh, power series so the cars working their way down the back straight towards uh, turn five out of um, Fostron corner they come down to the line and then we will get them underway shortly as uh, Fabio Tafani will uh, line up in P1 with uh, Marcel Angel there on his outside uh, Sean Moore and then the uh, 22 car coming through there and that will be uh, Alistair Brown in the 22 in that fourth position. Frankie, speaking about Alistair Brown, he's come on pretty strongly in the second half of the season. He has indeed. Alistair Brown with the uh, NAC.co.za outfit. Then we've got Jason Ibertson that sits there in P5. And uh, Barry Ingle is there in that 7 0 car. He is the final car on that third grid. So, rolling start as always. These. Uh very powerful V8s. You don't want to put stupid, unnecessary amounts of strain 
on the drivetrain on a uh, standing start massive amounts of power under the bonnet Alvapisa the sponsor of Fabio De Fani Autos Angel for Marcel Angel Campos Racing Lock on digital all of these guys involved in keeping these cars out on circuit for your and our pleasure So as they work their way around, Fabio Tufani and Marcel Angel will be on the front row of the grid. It's going to be interesting stuff to see who wins that one out. Marcel Angel will know that if he does not get the whole shot on Fabio Tufani, it's going to be very, very difficult to get past him. Few can uh, spend some time on a Friday night around the fire and say, uh, you know, when I went past uh, Fabio Tufani, no sir, not very easily. Once Fabio gets to the front, it's pretty much game, set and match. But if anybody can have a go at him, I think Marcel Angel is definitely the man. Don't forget about Sean Moore. Sean Moore just 15, no, five hundredths of a second slower than Marcel Angel on that qualifying session. Don't forget about Mark Voggett and Gary Thompson going down to turn number one, the leading silver class cars. Brandon Dean and Ken Finneman in there behind them with Stuart Spooner. And then as Frank said, the new guy, Lynch Jordan, or your Don. It's a new name to us, not a name that we know, Frankie. Nothing from the karting side of the world? No, that's a complete uh, new name. Remember, these drivers all 40 years and older. They're all uh, masters as uh, they exit to turn five out of Fostron Corner, heading down towards us. And this will be a eight-lapper as they head out of uh, Fostron Corner towards the uh, start lights the lights on pit lane is on red the moment they go off we will be underway towards us the lights go off they drop the hammers and off they go as they power down into turn number one into holes they go who's a late on the brakes there's a big lockup going down there into one and there's trouble Marcel's already out. out there for marcel angel trouble gather in turn one in holzuk for Marcel Angel. Well, remember, I did say if uh, Fabio Defani comes out on the whole shot on turn one, you know you've got a problem. Marcel Angel obviously he had to try and do whatever he could. So Fabio Defani breaks away. That means that Jason Ibotson has now found himself ahead there of Alistair Brown. Then it's Sean Moore is the next one coming through. And right on his case there is Barry Ingle in the 7 0 as they work their way down through interceptor corner. Out of turn three they come, race up the Tiger Big straight towards turn four. Through the double right-hander, that is Sardle Sweep, also known as Malmesbury. Down the back straight they go, and it's Stefani setting up there in P1. There's a massive gap before we see Jason Ibertson, and hot in his case is Alistair Brown, followed there by Sean Moore, and the 7-0 of Barry Ingle. Oh, Barry Ingle's going to have to try and kill those. That gap up the front three will be able to make use of the slipstream from one another going into that housing southeaster down through turn five they work their way and out into the front main Fabio de Fani just up dusted and disappeared Jason Ibotson carrying the Autohouse Angel name up high here comes Sean Moore Sean Moore has a look up on the inside of Alistair Brown going down into the first corner and he makes the move Sean back into that third overall yeah in P3 just ahead there of Alistair Brown out of turn one they go racing up the Jaber straight towards Castrol corner through Castrol they go watch that fight for second third and fourth then Ingle sits in there then we've got the 17 car oh, Gary goes. Thompson we got a uh, well it was almost gonna be a spinner going uh, into the corner and uh, into turn two get it uh, completely sideways and wound up and uh, well that car got it all sorted out so one two three four five six seven down into eighth position right now yeah that is the 29 of mark vogert and he races in the silver class <coughs> But down the back main goes Fabio Tafani. He's got a massive lead there on Javidson Ibertson. That's in second place, but here comes Sean Moore. Moore has a lunge up on the inside. Will he be late on the break? He's got the line for 
Pertamina Fostron and uh, Sean Moore does not make the move stick there on uh, Jason Ibertson. I think Jason closed the line off just a little but he saw it coming. So, uh, well, Moore having gotten past uh, Alistair now having a look up on the inside of the Marcel Angel team car. The Auto House Angel car can Moore make it stick down into turn one. Oh, they almost make contact. Ibertson backs out of it to make sure they don't. But all the time, it is Fabio Tofani that just leads them out. Working them out of turn one as well is the 7 and 44 car. That's a Brandon Dean and Ken Finneman. And Ken locked up that 44 car's brakes going into turn number one as he sits in there behind Dean as they exit Castle Corner. But the leader, he's working out of turn three, out of interceptor. Then it's a bit of a gap before we see this fight there for second position. It's been held there by Sean Moore. And uh, on the dirt is Ibertson, way, way off the track. And he loses that position there to Alistair Brown. Now, Alistair went right around the outside. We've got uh, our spotters giving us information here. Mark Vogert is uh, in the 29 car there's continuous light smoke from the left hand front wheel i remember he uh, locked it up and ran it a little bit wide going down into two that could be brakes that is overheating on the left hand front just my summation from what we see father Tavani comes across the line underneath the wingfield motors and castro and city of cape town bridge sean has now broken away from alistair and then uh, jason that's dropped down behind alistair barry Ingle holds on to that fifth place ahead of the first of the silver class cars which is in fact one of the top two qualifiers gary thompson now thompson racing down out of turn number one out of holes behind him is uh, Finneman and then uh, we'll have a look at the rest coming out there but yes that 29 car is uh, busy making its way through there and he is losing a lot of ground with some smoke coming out that's Mark Vogel ahead of him is a recovering Marcel Angel in that uh, 14 car that had troubles out there in turn one as uh, he makes his way out of Castrol and he's going after Brandon Dean and Brandon Dean through an interceptor corner is on the heels there of Ken Finneman. Oh, Marcel Angel's doing a brilliant job to uh, close up onto the back of the silver class cars but there's five gold class cars that are up front chances of catching that with uh, five laps to go well if your name is marcel angel yes it's possible well he's the quickest man out there with a 116.363 therefore marcel angel in car number 14 as the leader comes under the wingful motors castrol and city of cape town bridge and racing down into turn one down to the porsche club straight into turn one he goes that is a fabio tofani and uh, he is sitting in a comfortable p1 with four laps to go as he works his way towards turn two castrol second place man is sean moore he's getting away now from alistair brown who's been hassled here by jason ibertson oh jason ibertson on the last lap a 117.57 a 117.68 so uh, a little bit of a difference uh, 11 hundredths of a second is that enough for ibertson to get close enough the bottom line frank is he's got to close up on alistair through sorrel sweep to try and make use of the slipstream of the alistair car as they work their way down the back main that might give him the leapfrog well, I'm watching the fight coming out of a turn three out of Interceptor and Marcel Angel has uh, gone past a lot of them. Here comes uh, Vogert as well. So he has cleared the 07 car of, uh, of, um, of um, uh, Brandon Dean and he's gone past the 44 of Ken Finneman. So he is absolutely on a move and he's chasing down the 17 car of Gary Thompson as they race down towards turn five Fastron. Well, just uh, three more laps to go. Fabio Tofani from Sean Moore, and then uh, Alistair Brown, and then Jason Ibertson. Jason uh, it's dropped just a little bit further back now. He's not been able to hold on. Barry Ingle has been in that fifth place uh, all day long. Gary Thompson, he got the silver class. Marcel Angel is already up to the back end of uh, Thompson. Can he get to Ingle? with uh, three to go i think if he does that's about as good as it's going to get for marcel angel after that off on uh, turn one in a lap one well they two of them are racing down towards turn two castle corner now and he tried on the outside they have gary thompson but thompson had that line covered as they exit two out of castle he's like quick on the gas there he's marcel angel will he shove it up on the inside of uh, Thompson he does so and makes the move stick there on uh, Gary Thompson up uh, the uh, 
Tiger Bird straight towards Saro Sweep. And the next man in his gun sights, if he can catch him, will be the 7-0 of Barry Ingle. Well, Mark Vogel having passed Ken Finneman has now passed Brandon Dean as well. The 7 car, and that was on the exit of uh, the Castle Corner, turn number 2. Don't forget about this man coming past the start finish line, Fabio Tufani, doing what he does best. Dominate up front, Sean Moore comes through in second. Where's Alistair Brown? Here he is. Alistair Brown's dropped over it back and he's now falling very, very close to being in the clutches of a recovering Jason Ibertson. Right, here comes Barry Ingle across the line, followed there by Marshall Angel as they head into turn number one. And Angel is getting away from Thompson as they work their way out of holes. But the leader, all on his own, with a lap and a half to go, working his way through uh, turn three interceptor. He's a Fabio Tafani working his way all on his lonesome lonesome up there towards a turn four. And uh, we've already lose somebody slowing down. That's Sean Moore. Sean Moore slowing right down there through interceptor corner and he's losing tons of ground and, and posi uh, positions. Trouble out there for the one car of uh, Sean Moore. Well, yeah, that uh, from second place uh, from Fabio Tafani, Sean Moore dropping down now uh, behind uh, Alistair Brown and then uh, Jason Ibertson. Oh, he's going very slow. He's going very slow. Ingles passed him as well. Here comes Marcel Angel. Marcel will say, hey, bad luck for you, bud, but a bit of good luck for me. Marcel Angel gets gifted that uh, position and now he is still going to try and get to the back of Barry Ingle with just one to go. Fabio Tavani already across the line on his uh, final lap. Now this is the uh, final lap as uh, the leader works his way towards a turn two, towards a castle corner. All on his own up front has been <coughs> a flag to flag run here for Fabio Tavani. Alistair Brown in second position heading towards turn two Castle now and right on his heels is the 46 of Jason Ibertson as they work their way out of Castle Corner. Well with what happened with Sean Moore it's not impossible that uh, Jason Ibertson could get onto the back end of uh, Alistair and uh, I think he might actually be able to do it down into Cape Town Corner. At the same time, Marcel Angel is barreling down towards uh, the back end of Barry Ingle. Barry Ingle was fifth all race long. Then eventually with Sean Wood dropping out, went up to fourth. But he might be um, moved back further down the... Uh, Picking order one more as he works his way down the back main and he gets closed down very, very quickly by the 14 car of Marcel Angel. Right, the checkered flag is out and coming towards the checkered flag is your leader and that is uh, Fabio Tafani that brings it home in P1. And uh, that fight for second, Gaza, it's not finished yet. Here they come oh, towards oh. us. This is going to be good. Alistair Brown's quite fine. It's the fight for third and fourth. Third and fourth, yes. Can Ingle hold out? I think he's done enough. Has Ingle done it? Yes, he has. He says, Marcel Angel, you just stay behind me. Barry Ingle ends up with a third. That's brilliant for him. Alistair Brown has uh, dropped down one position. Well, in fact, Alistair Brown has not come through. Alistair Brown is gone. Not sure where on circuit he is. I think that might be Alistair Brown in turn one. That might be Brown in turn number one. If that's a 7 0 car, we'll get time to have a look there. No, it's not. It's no, it's the... not. There goes the 7 0 car. He did take the checkered flag, Barry Ingle. Not Alist sure. Not sure who that is. Alistair, Alistair Brown. Brown is the 22 car, and that's not Alistair Brown standing there in one. So Barry Ingle has finished, but I cannot see that number. Just looking through all the camera shots, Frankie, I don't see him at all. He's, uh, oh, there's a car into the barrier somewhere. I think it could be turn four, if we can maybe just pick up that camera shot. I think it's on the apex of Sorrel Sweep. I saw a quick shot of a car that was in the barrier. I'm no. trying to have a look and see. Uh, look, he definitely did not finish Alistair Brown, that I can promise you, because it shows seven out of eight laps he's done. And uh, he's not out on track, so he did so well up until the last lap, and that was the end of it, sadly, for Alistair Brown. So two big disappointments there, Alistair Brown and uh, Sean Moore, Frankie, both of them. Top five contenders in class, uh, top five qualifier, top five contender, and uh, yeah, it didn't work out for race number one for V8, uh, Pirelli V8 Masters for the day.
So confirmation there in a turn one. It is the silver class driver. That's a Brandon Dean. That's got trouble out there in turn number one. Well picked up there by uh, Tiny. He's the uh, commentator's assistant and gets us all the information that we need. And of course, he also represents a Tiny's pit box. A lot of Tiny's pit box stickers on quite a few uh, race cars uh, out there that uh, race here at Kilani today. Next up will be Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge race number one. Once we can remove the two stricken vehicles, one in turn one, one in turn three, interceptor corner. Let's uh, get those ones off and we'll come back to you with race number one for Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge. Co-sponsored by Hydroquad Hydraulics, Authentic Autos, Spice Mecca and Wheelworks Mag Repairs.
to the hard workers, the steady, the strong. Right, here we go with Alert Engine Parts, GTI Challenge, race uh, number one, rolling out onto the circuit, and man, this is going to be some entertaining stuff. I've got the uh, points here from uh, Emil uh, Tiny Brunt, and uh, Umpi Swart with uh, two races to go, or well, should I say four, because it's two today and then two in November. He leads Class A on 90 points with Clinton Mercedes note on 78, and Nathan Victor on 61. Dylan Jaber is on 37 points. And Kai Van Sale on 36. So one point separating the two of them. And then Skull Caldenace in P6 on a 29. If we go to class B, Zaki Hendricks way, way up front with 86. Mohamed Kalfi with uh, 54. Mark Thompson with 41. Brent van Escape 34. And Ryan van Eerden on a 23. Then Class C, Dylan van Eerden on 75, Matthew Rowe on 60, Nur Abbas on 52, Faisal Jacobs uh, 48, and Mark Fontini on 37. want to say big thanks as well, not only just to Alert Engine Parts, the main sponsor for uh, GTI Challenge, but a big thanks as well to Hydrocore Hydraulics, a big, big thanks to Spice Mecca, and then to Mr. Zaki Hendricks himself, of will works mags repairs and uh, zaki one of the big sponsors this year and he says he'll be continuing in uh, 2024 and we'll can let you people know what uh, all the other sponsors are about oh authentic autos previously known as cheapercars.co.za that's uh, mr Hermann lazarus and uh, it's nice to have him on board as well so the main sponsor is alert Part in uh, alert engine parts, then hydro core hydraulics, authentic autos, spice mecha, and wheelworks mag repairs. There are the other sponsors there 
for alert engine parts VW GTI Challenge. Oh, this will be good stuff up front. Nathan Victor, Marco Busi in the absence of Umpini Racing. Umpi Swart, he's up with uh, Cara Hill at the four hour event at Swart Corps today. It'll be at the end of the race day at Swart Corps. So uh, a lot of interest there. I see they are uh, not charging entry fee to the track today and there is some live streaming is there as well. So uh, once we finish with our racing, you can click across to that and go and have a look, see how Umpi is doing there with Car Hill. Right, here they line up, Summit Racings and Nathan Victor is on the front row of the grid. Then uh, we've got uh, Marco Busi with the GT Raps, well also GT Raps for Nathan Victor and the RUE Digital Marketing on the side of the Busi car. Then we've got Kai Fan Sale, wow. In the Oregon Oils car, he sits there in P3. Then uh, we have got the Progress Precision Engineering outfit of Clinton Beside Note in P4. GNA Motorsport of uh, Skull Heldenais. Then we've got uh, the 65, that's Ian Cup. And then the Euro Blitz car there of uh, Dylan Hubert, he rounds off the final car in Class A. Oh, what an amazing looking field this is. Class A, uber strong. Class B, uber strong. Class C, massive. Dylan van Eerden from uh, Mark Quintini, Neuropass and Daniel Muna. That's the front four in that Class C. That's going to be one hell of a battle. That Class A battle with the Umpi not there. Well, I would tend to think that there should be a little bit of a open space on that one for Clinton Mazade note but Nathan Victor and Marco Busi have locked out the front row of the grid so that's not finalized whatsoever right a big thanks to NDT that's Neander Toy for assisting Dylan Jaber as well in getting that to 44 car he sorted out for that race he had all sorts of problems uh, building up to this uh, race event and uh, Everybody else that assisted, including the undertow of NDT, thank you for assisting Dylan Hubert. So we are about to go racing in the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge very, very shortly. Well, this is going to be good as they work their way off the Class A cars going down towards turn number one. Class B being held back, Class C being held back. But let's watch Class A as they work their way through turn number one. Right, the Class B cars make their way off the line, but we go to those are Class A cars that are working their way out of holes. Racing down towards Castrol Corner. Yeah, they come down towards us, and it's side by side up front there. Oh, it's going to be hectic stuff as they run down into turn number one. And it is Marco Busi that muscles his way ahead there of oh, Nathan Victor. Then we've got Kai Fan Sale and Clinton Beside Note is right in that fight as well. As they race down towards turn three, Interceptor Corner, Ian Cup is in that fight. Just ahead of him, we see Dylan Jaber. What a rumble it is in Class A as they race up the Tiger Big Straight towards Turn 4 Saddle Sweep. Well, oh, they're still all side by side as they work their way through there. Nothing much in that front group. Jaber, Victor, Busi, front sail. Now out into the back main they go on the exit of that Saddle Sweep. Look at that. Line of stern. Six cars. Line of stern. One dives towards the outside. But that is a car that's slowing down and everybody goes through. Clint was eight note. Oh, looks like he's up into that second. Right, that is the uh, Class A cars. Not too far behind them, the Class B boys are busy racing down that back straight towards a uh, turn five, working their way now towards uh, Fostron Corner. And it's nose to tail stuff out there as the Class A cars work their way to turn number one. Already we've got a problem for one of the Class A cars that's sloping right down as they come down towards us. It's a 14 car that sits out there in P1 in a Class B. As they work their way down, it's uh, Tayer Kalfi that works his way down into turn one. And he has got Tate Bishop right on his case there as they exit turn number one and race down towards uh, Castle Corner. A lovely battle in uh, Class B. We'll still get to see that Class C battle as they work their way down into turn number one. Right, it's a massive, massive fight now as uh, we watch the Class C's work their way out of turn number one. And at this point in time, it's been led there by near bus from Dylan van Eerden. And really trouble for a car there on the inside of a turn one. 
Back to class A, and it's all about Nathan Victor, the man that was the fastest qualifier. Through Sorrel Sweep, he goes. He's got Kaifran Sale that's in there behind him, but Zaidnot is into that third. He's got Geldnace in behind him, Jaber and Cup. That's the class A cars working their way down the back main. Nothing much in that class A. There in the background, you can see the class B cars coming through. Here they come through now. Kalpe from Bishop down the back main for the second time. Yeah, and they are getting away there from Zaki Hendricks that sits there in that third position as they race down towards uh, turn number five. It's virtually side by side. We've got a new leader in class B. It's Tate Bishop that has got his nose up front as they come down towards us. They're side by side. It's Tayyip Kalfe and it is Tate Bishop that is a side by side as they work their way across the line into turn number one. Right in there behind them is uh, Zaki Hendricks. As they, and then it is Carl Walsh that's in that fight as that group works its way out of turn number one. Well, the Class A guys now through turn two, Castrol Corner. Still Nathan Victor leading out from front. Sal note all over his back bumper. We'll see them come into view now as they go into turn three. And uh, wow, it's just a bit of a gap that he's managed to get now from the rest of the pack is Nathan Victor. Francel battling to hold off Poseidon Note and Geldenace all over his back bumper in Class A. Well, uh, watching a fight going now into turn uh, number two. It's a lovely fight out there for P1 and P2. And uh, that is uh, Mark Fontine and Dylan van Eden as they make their way now through the kink. And they are nose to tail in Class C, heading down towards Interceptor Corner. Dylan van Eerde and Mark Fontini, the two of them are P1 and P2, as they make their way up the uh, Tiger Book Strait. And it's very close between the two of them towards Turn 4, Sardal Sweep. Going back towards Turn 5, it's the uh, Class A guys. Oh, they side by side going down into Turn 5. Nothing much in it. Well, so that's the Class B and that's the Angry Jeep entry that's gone to the front end of the field bishop ahead of calpe and uh, the two of them have broken away from zaki hendrix that leads out from carl walsh that's past mario rue and then thompson in there behind that as they work their way down towards turn number one changing lines is bishop to break that toe as they work their way down to turn number one well we'll stay with this fight in uh, class b that's making its way out of turn number one because it's a massive massive war there there's five of them that's right in it Tate Bishop, he's got the uh, Calfe that goes and sits right on his outside. But Bishop will have the line for Castle Corner. Then Zaki Hendricks, Carl Walcher and Mario Rue are all in this fight. It's a five-way fight in Class B as they work their way through the kink and towards Turn 3 Interceptor. Well, that third, fourth and fifth battle is just as good as that in the front end of Class B as they work their way through Interceptor Corner. Nothing much between them at this stage of the fight using the curbstone and more but I think our Class A guys are going down into five. Yeah, working their way out of turn five, out of Fastron Corner. It is absolute nose-to-tail stuff. It's still Summit Racing's Nathan Victor that sits out there in P1. As they come down towards us, he's been hassled here by Kai Van Sale. Let's see, is it still Van Sale in there behind him? Yes, it is. Followed there by Clinton Versaidenout. And hot on his heels is Carl Caldenace. As the four of them work their way down into turn number one, followed there by Dylan Jaber. Well, if you think Nathan Victor was on the front row of the grid, Versaidenout was on the second row of the grid. He didn't manage to get onto the front row but Nathan Victor is doing it all right and Frankie this guy is an eye racing buff as well yeah he does very very well he's also one of the top uh, runners in the Comcare VW uh, Polo Cup as well he's that man that sits out there in P1 in class A namely Nathan Victor and he's got the 2022 champion sitting there in third position Clinton Mercedes out as uh, they exit interceptor corner and work their way up towards a turn number four saddle sweep so that Class C battle right now is Mark Fontini from Dylan van Eerden, Faisal Jacobs and then Rosa Levy, the next one that's coming through there. So they split out Frankie right around the circuit. Going down towards turn number five, it's still Nathan Victor from Guy van Sale. Can Van Sale somehow take this one away from Nathan Victor? Takes the uh, inside line just a little bit tighter. But look at that. Geldnace has gone ahead of uh, that man that he's been fighting with, Dylan Jubin. Nothing much between them for third and fourth. Right here they come down towards us. Yeah, he's right down his case as they race down towards us. 
It is Skalkal the nice, and he's got Poseidon out that sits right there on his outside. But Skalk as a go to turn number one has got the line. Clinton Poseidon does not give up the fight as they go through and somebody going very wide. That is Skalk that went wide there in turn one and he's all over the place. And uh, he is now going to drop into the clutches of Dylan Jaber because Skulk is going very slow heading into turn two, Castrol. Well, we need to have a look at that uh, Tate Bishop fight as well. They're just a little bit further back than these cars they got. So coming out of turn number one, and we've lost uh, Kalfi. We've lost a year, Kalfi, because heading towards Castle Corner is the leader of Class B on his own there. That is a tight bishop, which means Zaki Hendrik is in second place, followed there by uh, Carl Walsher and then uh, Mario Rue. Then we've got uh, Mark Thompson and Brett Van Escape. So trouble out there, Gary. We've lost the 14 car of Tayer Kalfi. Well, the Class C battle is uh, busy raging at the same time as well. We'll pick that one up for you as quick as we possibly can. Nathan Victor still leading out. Class C is going to be working their way now into the kink. They'll be coming through into Interceptor Corner. Ah, oh, it's still Tate Bishop that leads them out there. He's doing a lovely job at the front end of that pack. Right, I want to stay with this uh, Class C fight that's heading down towards a turn number four. And that is a brilliant Class C fight there. And it's uh, as the race out of turn number four going down that the back main. We expected this one. Uh, and it is Van Eerden. And he sits in second position. He's chasing Fontini. Down the back main they go. He's up on the side of Fontini there, side by side. Down into turn number one. Fontini on the outside. Van Eerden on the inside. And Mark Fontini dives across the bar there of Van Eerden as they exit turn five uh, fast run. Yep, nothing much between the two of them, but remember Fontini is a multiple South African title ace on oval track racing. Now uh, this side of the world and doing a lovely job as they come through under the city of Cape Town and Castrol Bridge, closing off that line on the inside as they go down towards turn number one. Right, that is a lovely, lovely fight there between the two of them. Then it's Faisal Jacobs and Reza Levy. That is in the heart. Oh, the karting boys are coming through. Reza Levy is a... Uh, right in there and he sits in that third position in the class c as uh, we wait for the class a cars they should be heading out of turn five here they come gaza and it's very close up front and we've got a new leader as a matter of fact we've got a new leader in his kaifan sale that's in p1 and he's getting away from nathan victor as they make their way into turn number one Yep, down into turn number one, and yep, he's gotten away just a little bit. You can see the gaps now starting to open up with all those Class A cars. Uh, the Class B battle, that one's still raging on Bishop from Hendrick. That's coming out of turn number five, that one that you're talking about now, out of Interceptor Corner. And Tate Bishop, man, is all on his own as he races down towards turn number one. But Zaki Hendricks in second, followed there by Carl Walcher and Mario Rue as they head into turn number one and they're sitting second third and fourth the leader in that jetta two all on his own out of one and that is tate bishop yeah oh, tate's now got a decent gap you can see that uh, hendrix that's uh, still ahead of Welch is up into third position and uh, he's done well to get past rue but rue's all there with him hendrix closes off that inside line Walsh going just a little bit wider to make sure that he holds out rue into turn number one is that fight for first and second in Class C. And it's still Mark Fontini that's holding off Dylan van Heerden. Out of turn number one they come. They are so, so close. They nose to tail these two as they work their way up towards turn two, Castle Corner. And Mark Fontini has not got away there from Dylan uh, van Heerden as they exit Castrol. Up through Castrol Corner, they go a little bit of a gap now between the two of them. But uh, I do believe the Class A guys is going to be coming down towards the line. They will take the checkered flag. Kaifan Sale from Nathan Victor, Clinton Bezade, and Skull Kaldnes, as fast as you can say the names, so they come across the line. Right, as you wait for the others to come towards us now, here comes Ian Cup. He will finish his race in Class A. Tate Bishop will win Class B very comfortably in the angry racing uh, Jetta 2 as he brings that car towards a checkered flag way way down the line we've lost a, uh, a Kalfi here comes uh, Zaki Hendricks, Carl Walsher 
and Mario Rue across the line, second, third and fourth in Class B. Well, what's happening with Fontini? Whoa, Frankie, bring him to the line. Well, we first got a couple of Class B cars. This is close, this is close. It's Mark Thompson just ahead of Brett van der Skaif. Here we go with this Class C fight for first and second. And it's going to be Mark Fontini just, just ahead there from Dylan van Yeden in that second position. Oh, there was a brilliant fight between them. Then it will be uh, Faisal Jacobs from uh, Noura Bus. The next two that's coming through. And then uh, Daniel Muner, that's the blue one coming towards you right now. Daniel Muner, the next car that works his way across the line. Right, as the rest of the cars come through. Well done, young Reza Levy in the 45 car. He finishes his first ever main circuit event. One of the youngsters from the Western Province karting section, Reza Levy, that has now made his way into Class C of GTI Challenge. Well, Carl Wiltshire had a pretty decent uh, run through the pack. He started off a long, long way back, did Carl Wiltshire in class. So, uh, Kai Francel from Nathan Victor, I think Nathan Victor will be a bit disappointed with that one because uh, he was well on his way to uh, a very good qualifying, a very good uh, start to the race, a very good mid-sector of the race, but just losing out to an on-form Kai Francel eventually. But Zaydno, that was on the second row of the grid, ends up in third. Him and uh, Geldenes had a brilliant dice. Class B, Tate Bishop eventually working his way to the front. Zaki Hendricks doing what he does best, being very, very consistent. Carl Wiltshire working his way through a there of Mar Mario Rue from Thompson and then Fun Escape and then that battle Frankie Fontini and Van Eerden uh, with Jacobs not far behind but I think uh, with Fontini and Van Eerden if they get inverted a little bit further back oh, oh watch that freight train come through yeah then Rosh uh, Schroeder was in that fight as well and then as I said well done there to young Reza Levy finishing uh, in uh, the top half of class C so that was alert engine part the VW challenge together with uh, Hydrocore Hydraulics, Authentic Autos, Spice Maker, and Wheelworks Mag Repairs, the other sponsors there for GTI Challenge for 2023. I've got some information here from a Tiny that uh, does all our spotting. We did lose Mohamed Kalfi, but he, uh, sorry, Tahir Kalfi, I apologize. And uh, he pulled off in a turn a number four in Saddle Sweep. And that is uh, where he went to. And uh, that's the reason why he didn't finish. He did not get there. He was in turn number four. Also trouble here for the 52 car, and that is uh, Weiland Falskink. Also having troubles out there in turn two, Castrol Corner, and uh, the flatbed going to pick up that Class C Golf. Well, just a reminder, Frankie, as well, that on the Porsche straight, which is the main straight, is going to be the fan walk for the GTI uh, Challenge before they'll have their second race uh, later in the afternoon. And then on the Tigerberg straight, it will be the uh, Clubman's uh, class uh, that you'll uh, find there. So, like I say, the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge, uh, guys and girls, will be on the straight, uh, the Porsche straight, uh, where the grid hatchings are the main straight and then uh, as I said it's going to be Thermo Buyers Clubman Saloons on the Tigerberg straight. We just have a little bit of clean up to do before we move on to the uh, Formula Libras. So the uh, opening race uh, for the open wheelers uh, coming up shortly.
just taking a look through uh, our program for the day. As I said, Formula Libra up next. No sponsor for Formula Libra. It would be nice to uh, get one uh, perhaps for the 2024 season. And then the Lauda Classic Cars will follow them. Followed by the Thermo Fires Clubman Saloons, the Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT Cars doing two races today. Not an, in well, you could say a, a long distance race. And then uh, the tribute to our absent friends uh, we'll have as well around about midday if all goes well there. And then the three bike races. So if you are a bike racing fan, you are in for a real treat uh, today as the uh, Super Twin Cup and the 300s uh, will uh, commence as well with, along with the Super Bikes and uh, the uh, Clubman's and Breakfast Run Motorcycles. And then uh, we'll round off that first part of the program with the second of the Pirelli V8 Masters races. That's uh, before the lunch and the fan walk. But uh, remember, of course, the bike races are sponsored by none other than Bridgestone uh, for the uh, 650s and 300s. And then South for the Motorcycles uh, Clubman uh, Classics and Breakfast Run Motorcycles. And then Byron also, uh, two big events coming up. Uh, well, one will be next weekend, Cape Al Drivers, the second last race of the uh, 2023 calendar. And then there's another big one for them on the 2nd of December. We'll get to that one. But the Kalani Motor Show will be on the 5th of November. And that is going to be absolutely massive. Sunday, November the 5th, the Kalani Motor Show. It's huge, it's big, it's monstrous. It's the biggest motor show in the Western Cape and one of the biggest in the country, that's for sure. The Kalani Motor Show, that's from here, 8, 9 o'clock the morning. The gates open all the way through to 5 o'clock this Sunday afternoon. And uh, if, if last year was anything to go by, it's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be massive. I remember the first one, we couldn't get people in. Uh, the whole day there were cars queued. That was, I think, 2016. We had the first one, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, except for the one in 27, well, the one after it rained that uh, Sunday morning, the crowds didn't want to come, and eventually, when it cleared up, the crowds uh, came in by the gate. And uh, but yeah, this one is penciling to be a big, big, big one. Sunday, November the 5th, the Kalani Motor Show. Yes, Frankie, last year's event was cooking. It's uh, hard to believe that it's actually a year ago already uh, that uh, that event occurred. But they always promise every year bigger and better. And yes, you're going to have to get here early because uh, last year the queues were going all the way to the fire station, all the way down Kuburg Road as well. So there's going to be a lot of folks wanting to get in here desperately. I mean, talking about the Cape L drivers on uh, Saturday, December the 2nd, it is going to be as big as it gets. The um, National Hot Rod Tour drivers are down here. We are expecting 27, 28, round about there. They were talking about 30 at one stage. Uh, but it's probably going to be around about 26 to 28 cars that will be coming down. It is something unbelievable. Um, if you have not seen a National Hot Rod Tour event, then you don't know what you're missing. It is quick. It is absolutely mind-blowing what these guys can do. And then you've got 26 cars racing together. And then the guy that's last is as quick as the guy that's in front. And that is what this tour is all about. They're coming down to finish their 2023 season at Cape Hall Drivers on the Kalani Oval in uh, December month and there's going to be classes for everybody they're talking about Lexus V8s, Dirt and Tar guys doing their thing they've sent invitation out to the uh, Dirt Oval guys all classes come and run but you guys run separately from Tar uh, it's going to be absolutely massive that one on uh, Saturday December the 2nd and Frankie as a commentator that will be my first ever hot rod to a event so I'm looking forward to it Gary Fleming will be there uh, Emil Tiny Brunt will be there you and I Frankie yep. will be there the entire the entire commentary team that's up here today will be involved for the National Art Rod Tour and a big thanks to everybody that's involved there including Gaza with all the, and, and Tiny with all the marketing and promoting of that one and the CHD committee well, Frankie, we move on to uh, single-seater racing now. Formula Libra, Formula Open, as you can call it, uh, the uh, Libra word. 
And, uh, well, there is no Byron Mitchell today in no car. Of course, he's going to have no uh, Formula V out there. He's going to have no Reynard out there. He is completely not here today. So, it is going to be a bit of a different race. DJ Boyson, who looks to be able to wrap up the Class S Championship here today. He is going to be starting on pole position. Darren Liebenberg in the Formula M is the uh, pole man in Class C. He is going to be sharing that front row with DJ Boyson, whilst Reino Pence and Zayna Munson, they'll be coming third and fourth as uh, the uh, cars are all out onto the circuit now. It looks like it's going to be, well, just over 10 of them out there. And like I said, Frankie, no sponsor for this class. It would be nice uh, to try and promote for a sponsor in 2024 and maybe some bigger fields as well. Yeah, we do apologize. Yeah, you know, just uh, like Frankie was saying, uh, apologies uh, to those viewing online. We are sorting our cameras out and uh, hopefully soon uh, they'll be... Uh, pointing all in the right directions and up and running. Yeah, but the wind's also causing chaos with the uh, cameras out there. It's very, very windy for those of you that are not here. The uh, Cape Southeaster is pumping again here at Kilani. Uh, I had a look on weather.com and they say from round about now until four o'clock, we're looking at winds between 41 and 42 k's an hour. And that will mess around with the surveillance cameras and uh, so yeah we do apologize for that but that's mother nature nothing we can do about it dj boyston who i've been mentioning now the pole man the uh, daiko racing the burner factory car and he's a formula volkswagen two liter uh, motor and uh, well uh, stephen reed and myself were talking earlier on uh, about uh, the factors in this race, of course, a lot of the drivers have been complaining about the uh, wind down the back straight. They get a nice tailwind on the, this main straight, but what happens is they carry far more speed up until that first turn, and picking your braking points is incredibly important here. And then also remember, if you're going to be on a bike later on, the moment you turn into the wind and turn out of the wind, that's going to unsettle a bike and a car for that matter. So yeah, they're going to battle between turns four and five, going into the teeth of the southeaster, and then between turn five and one, they will have the wind blow them down into turn number one. So yeah, that's going to be pretty, pretty uh, hectic to see what these guys can do. Andrew Rackstraw was supposed to race today. I see he's not out there. It's only DJ Boyson. And then we've got Darren Liebenberg that's sitting there on his outside with the uh, Formula M car. Then uh, coming through is uh, Reino Pence, and on his outside is the Repsol car of Zayna Munson. Oh, uh, Frankie, it's going to be a humdinger, that Formula V class. It's quite a well-subscribed class as well. Veynant de Ritter, Ben Jack Phillips, Kelly Fletcher, Luan van Yeden, Zayna Munson, Nick van der Westhuizen, and Donovan Ramsey all entered. Whether or not they're all there, that's another question. Yeah, van der Westhuizen is not there, that I can promise you. The number 35 car is not out on track. So away we go, and what a lovely start off the line there by Darren Liebenberg. He got an absolute fly off the line, so did Reino Pence, but the DJ Boyson now will tuck into that second place. He's got Pence around him on the outside, and not a good start there for DJ, as he's in that third position just ahead there of uh, uh, Zayna Munson as they race down towards turn number two towards a castle corner but right now that formula m car sits out there in p1 that's darren liebenberg reino pence in second boyson in third and amundsen is in that p4 yeah that's a kawasaki motorcycle engine that uh, formula m has a uh, 636 and uh, well down the uh, tigerberg straight he goes look at the gap he's already now uh, made over second position uh, reino pence they go now through saddle sweep turn four double apex right hander and then down the straight uh, as we go now it looks like in the slipstream of pence and gonna go off the racing line here is going to be uh, dj boyson and should be side by side towards turn five and take that second place right back there Frankie yeah racing down that back main towards a turn number five towards a Pertamina Fostron as they exit Fostron here comes this uh, motorcycle powered Formula M car in P1 of Darren Liebenberg listen to the sound of that thing as it howls past us 
Heading into turn number one, and DJ Boyson sits there on the outside of Rayno Pence and puts that class S car into that second position, followed there by Zayna Munson. Then there's a lovely dice. This is a lovely one going into turn one. It is uh, Ramsey. Oh, sorry, Frankie. There is a spinner into uh, turn one. Yellow flags will be waving over there. It's a black uh, Formula that's, V. That looks like it's a 17 car. That's Ben Jack Phillips. That's gone off there in a turn one. And I don't think he's beached it. I think he has beached it there, Frankie. So uh, there will be a continued period of yellow flags over there. Uh, no Kelly Fletcher in this race. No Nick van der Vestes and Cyril Somerville. And Vainant de Ridder, I see, is in the race over here as well. Vainant de Ridder in that bright green uh, Formula V going through the uh, kink now and towards turn three. And keeping uh, the rest in sight ahead of him, such as Luan van Yeden. Oh, Fletcher is actually in that green car, the 22 car that's making its way out of uh, Interceptor Corner now. She's not having a good one out there, is Kelly Fletcher, as uh, she will be making her way down the back straight. But let's pick up the leader. Here he comes, out of turn number five, out of uh, Fostron Corner, all on his own, working his way down into uh, turn number one. Right behind him, we have got uh, DJ Boyson. Then behind DJ Boyson is Rayno Pence. Then behind him, we have got uh, Zayna Munson. He leads class V, does uh, Zayna Munson. Then we've got this fight raging on towards us. Donovan Ramsey, and he is sitting in there behind uh, Ricky Anderson as they work their way into turn one with yellow flags waving before turn one. Uh, that's because Ben Jack Phillips' car is there. Well, actually, I just see now, Frankie, so apologize, apologies to everybody. Kelly Fletcher is uh, in the race. Like you said, Frankie, just the transponder wasn't picking up. She finds herself just off of Luan van Yeden at the moment, who finds himself in turn off of Ricky Anderson, Donovan Ramsey, a little bit further up there as well. So we watch them as they come around then. And uh, yes, this is uh, eight uh, laps left to go, third lap. And uh, Liebenberg still leads from Boysen by 1.8 seconds as they come now towards uh, turn five per Tamina Fastron. But I think it's a foregone conclusion that uh, it's going to be anytime soon now that DJ Boysen, who put in the fastest lap of a 121.582 on the last lap, will uh, take uh, the uh, Formula M ahead of him. Yeah, working out of turn number five at a fast run. It's only a matter of time now. Under the Wingfield Motors, City of Cape Town, Castle Bridge, they come. He'll dive to the inside. Well, DJ Boyson, surely he's going to have a lunge up on the inside. But he may not overtake. He pulls back in there behind him, Byron. Remember, he may not overtake into turn number one. Because that 17 car, Ben Jack Phillips, is there in the dirt. So we had a look, realized I cannot, as they work their way now towards turn two, Castrol, and he pulled in there behind uh, the uh, Formula M car of Liebenberg. Oh, he looks on the inside into Castrol there, uh, Frankie, but look on the gas. You can see that Liebenberg just sprints out of the turn, but then what happens is uh, through the corners, because of the uh, front and rear wings, the uh, more downforce, of course, that uh, the uh, Formula VW will have, the Raynard, uh, that uh, helps him through the corners, but on the straight, he just sprints away there. That uh, light uh, Formula M with the motorcycle engine. And uh, well, seven laps left to go now. Zayna Munson basically on his own here, the leader of uh, the Formula V section by quite a bit, as a matter of fact. 6.8 seconds from Donovan Ramsey, but Ricky Anderson is two tenths of a second off of Donovan Ramsey. So uh, that is the uh, second place in Class C at the moment. Well, the leaders are coming out of turn and five out of Fostron Corner and that little if I you can use that word Formula M car Darren Liebenberg is making life uncomfortable for the Class S the uh, Reynard of uh, DJ Boyce into turn number one they go now now let's stay with us and that Formula M car will not give in that Formula M car that runs in Class C of Darren Liebenberg will not give in to the more powerful Reynard. Up the Jubeir straight they go. The Reynard will have the power, but Liebenberg has got the line for Castle Corner. This is now where Darren must climb on the gas to the tighter bits, Byron, and try and get away from that quicker Reynard of Boyson. 
Yeah, he's uh, much lighter than Boyson as well, Frankie. So what happens is later on the brakes and then quicker on the gas as well uh, for the uh, Formula M. Look at him now. He's got a little gap between himself and DJ Boyson once again. But remember, the front and rear wings, that helps uh, DJ Boyson through the corners. He's got that he, uh, the downforce. But then as they get on the gas, Darren Liebenberg will have the uh, slight advantage. Down the back straight they go now. He goes off the racing line, does DJ Boyson, and he should now make it easy work of uh, Liebenberg in uh, Pertamina Fastron and take the lead right away from him. Well, uh, in turn number three, interceptor corner, there's another right roll battle that's going on there, and that is uh, between uh, Donovan Ramsey that sits out there in that uh, 95 car, and he's got Ricky Anderson there with him. We'll pick him up as they go down that back straight. Here they come down the back main, and here they go. The two of them are nearly side by side. As a matter of fact, they are side by side now. That's Ramsey and Anderson, uh, Byron, as they're right next to each other, heading into turn five, Pertamina Fast Run. Oh, what a battle we're having over here. They're going to be side by side through Pertamina Fast Run, and then we'll just uh, poke the nose ahead will be Ricky Anderson. As they come now out of turn five, they'll run towards the city of Cape Town, Castrol, and Wingfield Motors Bridge. And they look almost like one as Ramsey will come right back down the straight as they go. He will set himself up nicely there for turn one, Frankie, and should take that position right back. Yeah, and they are still side by side. And it's Donovan Ramsey. Oh, man, Ricky Anderson goes a touch wide there in turn one and loses a little bit of ground to the car in front of him. But down the back main we go. There they come again. The Reynard gets its nose ahead this time of Darren Liebenberg. And I don't know if Darren can come back at him now as they work their way into fast track. It'll be a lot later on the brakes for Liebenberg, but I think it's all going to be about... Uh, DJ Boyson at this point as they exit fast run corner turn five. Yeah, there was three tenths of a second between the two of them when they crossed the line the last time out, Frankie. Let's see them as they go now. The Reynard of DJ Boyson, the Dyco racing machine, crosses the line. It's nine tenths of a second, just under a second. Reynard Pence is still holding that third position at the moment, but he is quite a distance back. Here he comes now into Pertamina fast run, the uh, turn five section, and then, then behind him, that is going to be the Ricky Anderson Donovan Ramsey section. Yeah, that group is going now into turn, or that group of, uh, that one group of two cars heading into turn number five, and uh, they are side by side at a fast run. Anderson on the inside, and Ramsey on the outside, Donovan in the red car, and Anderson in the blue one as they come down towards us under the city of Cape Town Bridge. It is Donovan Ramsey that's got his nose just, just ahead there of uh, Ricky Anderson as they head down into turn one. They're absolutely side by side as uh, they race through turn one out of holes. And that is the battle for second and third as far as the Formula V section is concerned. Reino Pence ahead of them. He is currently third overall but second in the class for uh, the uh, class C section. Darren Liebenberg still leads that class and is still battling it out with DJ Boyson as we do speak. Four laps left to go, Frankie, in this first Formula Libre race of the day. Yeah, here they come, the leaders towards us under the city of Cape Town Bridge. There'll be three more laps to go when DJ crosses the line and he's done a 118.669 as a DJ Boyson and he's now got away there from uh, Liebenberg in that second position. As I said, three laps now left to go as they did cross line. DJ Boyson, a 118.669 compared to the 121.730 of Darren Liebenberg. And you'll start opening up a gap. Look, four seconds now. So I think pretty much these uh, play times over. It's time to go. Well, back into turn number five. Here we go again. That's a fight between Ramsey and Anderson into Fast Run. And they were nearly side by side going into Fast Run Corner. As they come down towards us, are they close? Yes, they are. It's Ramsey that's just ahead there of Ricky Anderson as they race down towards turn number one. Is Ricky Anderson close enough, though, to launch any sort of a move? I don't think so. And I think uh, at this present moment, Donovan Ramsey will hold it at the present moment. Now, Zayna Munson will be coming down the main straight as well. And Oh, sorry, he's coming out of turn two. My apologies. And uh, he'll go through the kink towards turn three so uh, here now comes Luan van Yeden crosses the line and uh, is Kelly Fletcher still out there I think she just came across the line now 
Right, so the leader making his way out of turn number one all on his own. And he's going to put a lap there on uh, Van Heerden. He'll put a lap on Luan Van Heerden that just keeps right out the way as he makes his way towards Castle Corner. And then second place is uh, Liebenberg. He's making his way now towards a turn two. And he will put a lap there on Kelly Fletcher. Just a slap and the next one left to go as the leader makes his way through turn three, interceptor corner. He's put the lap on Luan van Jeden as well, who's in the uh, second last place, which is seventh at the present moment. Coming across the line, though, was Reno Pence on the main straight. But watching on the screen over here now, uh, coming out of uh, turn four, Sarl Sweep. Down the back straight is our leader with only this little bit of the lap left to go and the next lap. Into turn number one. Here we go. This is not done yet. Donovan Ramsey on the outside. Ricky Anderson into turn one on the inside. These two will not let each other go. That I can promise you as uh, they exit turn one with uh, a lap and a bit to go for the leader as we keep an eye on these two cars working their way towards turn number one. As a matter of fact, the leader started his last lap as uh, the two of them, Donovan Ramsey and Ricky Anderson, work their way through the kink and towards interceptor corner with the leader Byron on his final lap and they will try and pick him up he's making his way into turn two Cash all on his own the leader on the last lap DJ Boyson yep out of Castro corner he'll come and uh, 11 and a half seconds ahead of the man he was battling with earlier on uh, Darren Lieberberg but just uh, going through uh, turn four now we just go a little bit back into that Formula V class and it's Donovan Ramsey versus Ricky Anderson and Ricky Anderson is going to have a run now down the back straight the ever so slightly curved back straight towards turn five per Tamina Fastron he's got the inside line over here now but who's going to be later on the brakes so it's going to be uh, on the outside of him it will be uh, Donovan Ramsey who will keep ahead of that uh, Formula V uh, of uh, Ricky Anderson right the leaders just behind them but towards uh, us to start another lap is Donovan Ramsey and uh, Ricky Anderson and as they go through to start another lap the leader makes his way towards the checkered flag and that will be DJ Boyson that comes home in a P1 and to boot a 118.776, his fastest lap of the race on this final lap. Right, here comes Darren Liebenberg towards us. He will finish in that second position and first in class. Darren Liebenberg. And then coming towards us now, that is a back marker. That is Van Heerden. Here comes Fletcher. She's also a back marker. We are waiting for Reino Pence. There he goes, down the back straight. And he will finish third on track. Rona Pence working his way towards turn five, fast on corner. And not far behind him, uh, Byron, will be Zane Amundsen. Now you can't miss Zane Amundsen. That Repsol Lantis, he bright orange but meanwhile down the back straight it is the last of the battle of course and we have Donovan Ramsey and Ricky Anderson and uh, yes let's uh, first bring them home and it's Reno Pence that comes across the line and then Zayna Munson will follow shortly underneath the Castro City of Cape Town and Winfield Motors Bridge now we can go to Donovan Ramsey and Ricky Anderson going out of uh, Pertamina Fast Run Turn 5 now. Ricky Anderson will try and run him to the line. Is he going to be able to make the move? Who's going to get it? It's going to be Ramsey who will get it ahead of Ricky Anderson by only a tenth of a second. And that was our first Formula V, oh sorry, Formula Libra race today, including the Formula Vs and the Class S and Class C cars. Only eight of them out there but uh, you'll see them a little bit later on as well in this race day. And a 118.276, the quickest man out there in car 2-0 is DJ Poison. Now Kelly Fletcher having a bit of a tough time out there, having to make do with eighth position, 7.6 seconds off of Luan van Heerden. Hopefully she can come back uh, a little bit later on. Meanwhile, a few replays on the screen now from our uh, GTI uh, challenge race. Uh, and uh, that was the Ben Jack Phillips replay as he lost the back end into turn one into the sand and uh, was beached for the rest of the race and that's why the yellow flags were out in that section you can see they're just ahead of uh, Ramsey and uh, Ricky Anderson thankfully of course they're not going into the tires there so uh, he'll just dust himself off get that onto the uh, flatbed 
and uh, hopefully be ready for race two a little bit later on today. We're going to be moving sh sh soon, I should say, on to the louder classic cars for their first race of the day and we have quite a field of classic cars so uh, we'll wait for the formula libras to get back to the pits and we'll be with you shortly So the next race will be the Lauda Classic cars. Franco Donadio and Michael Hitchcock on the front row of the grid with Glenn Aiden Bogard, uh, Charlie Otten, the third row Louis Powell and Arnold Neufelin. And uh, that's all the Class A cars that there are out there today. And they are all pretty close to one another time-wise. So looking forward to a nice battle with the Class A's. The Class B, Andrew Honeywell, as always, up front there with Trevor Momberg, Mark Adam Bogard, and Jaku Lambert, and Byron Bedin. So uh, pretty much the same number of Class A's as a close to uh, Class B. So the front end of the field looking pretty strong. I must say a nice size field that we've got there in total. Class C, Vaynard Nell from Brian Evans. Malcolm Adam Bogard from Lane Hutchins, Martin Bench, then uh, Dion Conradi and uh, Trevor Hutchins. A little bit further down in Class C, a big Class C, Hammond the Cock from Chris Carroll. Nice to see Chris Carroll out there again. Vance Kearney and then Aaron Stafelyun. I believe uh, Vance Kearney not going to make it out? I saw the car, though. I saw the Jetta in the uh, pits, uh, Gary, but I don't know if it's going to be making it out and I'm sure that uh, the Alpha uh, of uh, Alan's for Yoon won't be making it out. I saw that car on the trailer uh, being uh, taken out uh, of the uh, pit area. So uh, unfortunately, uh, seems to be some uh, issues there. So uh, quite a number of great machines in here as well. Look at Franco Donadio in Chris the Cosworth. Out there again? Yes, Chris Carroll and back out there again, which is great to see in the... Uh, let me just see where... Because he used to, of course, campaign that uh, Mazda uh, Capella. Chris uh, Carolyn today he's got the Alpha Bellina two litre that he will be uh, behind the wheel of actually missed uh, Chris Carolyn in the class for a period of time I think it's quite a while probably about a year that he hasn't been uh, out there on circuit but uh, nice to see the likes of uh, Jermaine Bedin, Pete Mathieu, Derek Wilson, James also there at the back end of the pack they're all in there Young uh, Yaku Lambert in the uh, middle uh, towards the back end of Class B, so he'll be pushing pretty hard. He's accustomed to being nearer the front end of his class. Well, also, Gary, a uh, pretty well subscribed Class X as well. Remember, for your yes. new car driver combination, Bradley Rowe in the 2002 Turbo BMW, that's the uh, felt reared uh, sponsor car. Mark Aiton Bogart in the Ford Fairmont, the Superior Elevators car. Yaku Lambert in the VW Jetta. Stephen Manuel in the SGL Nissan Skyline with Theo Klaassen in the GTX Skyline. Jaco Oosthuizen, these are a lot of guys coming up from the fine car section into the classics and uh, Jaco Oosthuizen in his uh, Toyota Conquest, uh, the Ravenel sponsored machine. And then uh, Jermaine Burdin in the GX Datsun with uh, Derek Truscott in his Alfa Romeo Bellina and Dan Hirsch in the two, uh, 924 uh, Porsche or Master Porsche is the uh, proud sponsor. I see we've got three Aiton Bogards that's out there. We've got uh, Malcolm Aiton Bogard, we've got Glenn Aiton Bogard. Uh, there was a third one that I saw there as well. So all three of the Aiton Bogards are out on track today. 
Yeah, the, uh, the other one is Mark, Malcolm, and uh, Mark, Michael. Malcolm and Glenn, yeah. And Glenn, yeah. I'm sorry, Michael Hitchcock I'm looking at there. Charles Arton in the Mazda Rotary. Uh, the only uh, rotary in the race. Uh, that's in Class A. And you we were speaking about Class A earlier on, Gary. Franco Donadio in the uh, Mark I Escort. That's a Cosworth uh, Escort. And then the likes, of course, of Michael Hitchcock in his uh, Mustang, the Cape, uh, Cross Cape a, Forklift. Is that a Cosworth or Cos Plenty? <laughs> that's a plenty. Uh, the lines like are blurred there, Gary. Yeah. I think what happens is, uh, I don't know if he's got uh, what his accountant says over there, but uh, I think they keep it, keep it on the hush. But I think the uh, photographers also go to a faster shutter speed when he comes towards them. And uh, it's always lovely to see him in his 10 tenths racing style. The back end coming out there in the uh, saddle sweep section. And even kicking up a little bit of dirt as well. He likes to hang it just a little bit uh, coming out of the corners. Nothing flashy, nothing Zakunwald style. But uh, he likes to just drift that tail end out. Probably find the steering wheels pretty much straight for a lot of the third sector of all the corners he pretty much gets it in a straight line and then just just drifts the tail that last little piece and then lets it bite so nothing fancy nothing shiny just getting uh, the hammer down nice and early and uh well it gets the pace eh? uh, he's he is one of the quickest out there a full list of uh, races for you today the louder classics now 10 45 for the folks at home they'll see it on their screens thermofires clubmans at 10 past 11 in the Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT Cars. 12 o'clock, tribute to our absent friends. We'll still get those printouts here by us. And then we go biking from there on out up until uh, just uh, before quarter past one, where we have the second of the Pirelli V8 Masters races. The Pirelli V8 Masters running both of their races before the luncheon interval and the fan walk. And Byron, the two fan walks going down there today. Yes, uh, that's on the main straight, the Porsche straight. That will be for the uh, Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge. And then on the Tigerberg straight, uh, you'll have the Thermo Fires Clubman Saloons. That will be the race after this one will be their first race of the day. Michael Hitchcock comes out of the pits, followed by uh, the uh, Glenn Aiden Bogart uh, Ford Granada Piranha. And that's, of course, the Cross Cape Forklift Services cars. I see, uh, as you see, uh, Gary's been saying, a lot of uh, eight and Bogarts out there in Fair Lanes and uh, in Fair Monts as well. Loving their Fords, the uh, eight and Bogarts. There's Anton Rolino in the uh, Morris Minor. The Burdines in their Datsuns. There's Vance Kearney uh, to answer your question from earlier on, uh, Gary, uh, in that yellow uh, Jetta, all the way from the United Kingdom, Vance Kearney. And uh, we love having him here in the Ferris Cape. Derek Wilsnach in uh, the uh, angle box coming out at the tail end uh, of the field, uh, looks like it. But uh, a little bit of news from earlier on as well. Uh, it was uh, a broken uh, belt, a uh, broken fan belt for um, the uh, Sirocco of uh, Trevor Hutchings that uh, got him only one lap in qualifying and uh, he will be starting right at the back today but uh, you have to kind of give him a little bit of a uh, from the back start because the challenge is nice and great and uh, that is the exciting part of racing so watch out for that orange uh, Sirocco he's ahead there of uh, the uh, Beetle or the uh, Baby 917 uh, as I like to call that little Beetle and that's the Dave Rowley flat four racing machine. Ernest Leet, I saw the 128 Rally Fiat back out. And uh, I think that's, uh, he's not raced very much this year. It must be at maximum the second time this year that that uh, Fiat has been out on the, uh, on the circuit. There is the Charles Arton Mazda uh, Capella, the RX2. Mount Carsten's out there in the Cortina as well. Conradi, as we're saying, one of two uh, conquests out uh, in the, the race. Usually he's been the only conquest, but uh, there's more Toyota, uh, Toyotas in, the, uh, in this race. We also have Bruce Avon Taplin. Basically, I could say the king of the uh, front wheel drive section, if you could make a front wheel drive section here. Louis Powell, Arnold Neerfelin, Andrew Honeywell, he's 944 Turbo.
onto the handful of turbocharged machines. There is uh, the Ford Capri as well, the familiar blue Ford Capri of Trevor Momberg. And that, of course, is the M and E auto and all scale car. Two warm up laps. It's going to be, I've got the confirmation from uh, Tiny and uh, Martin Bench. I think he's uh, got to be reminded he's going to see everybody driving off. And I think some folks, like Dion Conradi, are pulling into position already. So watch out there, chaps. There we go. The cock comes past in the Mark 1. Escort Charles Arton. Come, guys. Let's get it going. We're doing ourselves a second warm-up lap. Yep, Christmas has come early. Vance Kearney will do likewise. They're actually starting to line up already as uh, Brian Evans comes to his grid spot, but he'll start going again as well, as will Michael Hitchcock. Well, sorry, actually, that's not Michael Hitchcock. That's the 777 uh, Ford Mustang. And that's Arnold Nierfeling. That growl as he comes off the, uh, the grid. The 700 of uh, Matia, that's James Matia, all the way out from the far off land of uh, Stellenbosch, coming here to Cape Town, or to Kalani, and he drives here in that Honda CRX. Rowe comes off the line there, that's 84 BMW, that boxy shaped Beamer, of Robert Rowe, it's 325 BMW. And this will be an eight lap race as the majority of the field now start filtering through the sweep, Saro sweep. There's the Alpha Berliner that uh, you see going through that section as well. And that is the Derek Truscott Alpha. That is that wonderful, beautiful Rosso Corsa and uh, yellow. Rosso Corsa red. And uh, yeah, here we go now. So yes, remember everybody, thank you for joining us here at Kilani. If you are here or on the online stream, myself, Byron Height, Gary Fleming, Emil Brunt, and Frankie Hinnis, all joining you today. And Mike's side with me is going to be a none other than Frankie, the Zortonian Hinnis. <laughs> I was waiting for that one to come through. Yeah, I just saw Mel Carstens come out there now with that uh, Cortina of his, the Ford Cortina joining. He uh, joined very, very late, did uh, Mel Carstens, but did make it out before we uh, get this one underway. So, front row of the grid will be Franco Donadio and Michael Hitchcock. This uh, fight between this, uh, these two will uh, continue. Donadio and then of course that big V8 powered Ford Mustang of Michael Hitchcock as the cars come through to take their positions. We see uh, Aiton Bogard out there as well in the uh, 66 car as they line up. There's a lot of classic cars. A couple of fine cars have uh, joined in as well as the cars are still making their way out of uh, turn uh, five out of Fast Run. That's Glenn Aiton Bogard that's in the Granada. Good to see Louis Powell out there again in the Meisner Escort, the 151 Meisner Escort, and then Arnold Neerfilling. Marlboro Crane higher on that uh, 777 RVs. And then uh, coming through as well is Charlie Arton in the Mazda Rotary, that's the RX2 Capella. Almost everybody in. I see that uh, row, Bradley Rowe in the 2002 BMW, still getting into position. It's the BMWs that are a little bit, uh, a little bit delayed here, so uh, just excuse them a little moment, and uh, they'll get into position fairly shortly. We see Fadi Maton in the Cross Cape Forklift Services Ford Mustang out on track, and uh, then we see oh, lovely Trevor Momberg. It's been a while. Every now and then he comes and puts in a stunning performance. That's Trevor Momberg in that uh, blue Ford Capri, the 73 car. Good to see him out there as uh, the cars all begin to uh, line up. Now Lambert right behind him there, uh, Frankie as well. We also have ourselves a, a pair of uh, Anglias as well. You can see that uh, number 44 uh, Anglia there of Vaynant Nell. That's a Class C car. 
uh, quite a subscription of uh, Class C cars. Sorry about it. Look at that big Ford Fairmont. That number 36 car. That is Mark Aiton Bogard in that uh, Ford Fairmont GT that stands there just on the outside of Trevor Momberg. Yeah, the superior elevators car. You can see on the uh, window there, number 36. And uh, there is a grid spot behind uh, him that is uh, empty at the moment. I see Brian Evans a little bit further back. Then you see Lane Hutchings in the uh, Mark II uh, Golf. And uh, we are ready uh, to uh, go on the, uh, the sighting lap, the, the, uh, the warm-up lap. behind uh, the safety car. Watch out for that uh, Ford Fairlane of Malcolm Oatenberg that runs there in Class C. There's a lot of big hitters out there. As a matter of fact, uh, the Oatenberg guards have come out here in uh, full swing today with all their heavy metals, if I can call it that. These big uh, V8 cars of theirs that uh, are busy working their way through but a lovely lovely feel there Byron of uh, louder classic cars. Uh, that's what I love about the classic cars uh, Frankie it's always a great mix of various different machines in here whether it's uh, front wheel drive rear wheel drive big engines smaller engines you name it I love it I know a lot of everybody else loves it here too. When last and Tiny just uh, mentioned that to me now we've seen all three Aiton Bogards father and both sons Malcolm and then uh, the sons Mark and Glenn, all Aiton Bogards out there. It's been a while since we've had the entire Aiton Bogard family out in the classic car section. Good to see. Well, they'll filter through the uh, interceptor, turn three now. And then uh, it will be an eight lap race. When those lights go out, all hell will break loose here. A Renault safety car takes them around. I can only think then it's none other than Phil, the Dolphin Herald. That will be behind the wheel in that car, Dr. Phil. Not Uncle Phil, Dr. Phil. Yeah, he's gone from the Dolphin. He's got promotion now to Dr. Phil. For those of you at home saying, what are we talking about? <laughs> Never mind, it's a, Dr. Dolphin. <laughs> it's a personal one. <laughs> right, so uh, for the folks that are around the track, hello, welcome. We hope some more of you join as the day goes on. To you people watching the IMSAT production at home, Thanks for watching. Don't go from your TV sets, your computers, your cell phones, wherever you are right now, your laptops, because this is loud of classic cars and almost 40 race cars out on the track. If you have a look at your screen at home, you'll see them head on as they work their way down the back straight. That's a view and a half as we look out the window and then pan towards the TV screen and you see them go past the main sponsor, Wingfield Motors, 10 years thanks to Mr. Johnny Wingfield himself, Johnny van die Kerk. Lights are on and that uh, safety car will peel off to the right and we'll be racing with almost 40 cars in the next few moments. Talking about the van die Kerk, so Tamika had a birthday in the week so from our side a big happy birthday to uh, Tamika that is the youngest daughter of Johnny. Here they come. On the right-hand side, our right-hand side, it will be Donadio. And then on his left-hand side, it'll be Hitchcock. Here we go now racing as we charge up towards turn one. On the outside will be Hitchcock. Will he take the lead on the inside? Later on the brakes, of course, it will be for that uh, little escort mark one. Then the Granada of Aiton Bogard. Glenn Aiton Bogard holds third at the moment. Then it's the Mazda Rotary of Charlie Arton that holds fourth. And then the Mazda Escort is under pressure now from Arnold Neffeling on the inside going into turn two Castro Corner. Yeah, Honeywell is in that fight as well and Arnold Lambert's got his nose up there uh, next to uh, Fadi Maton in that uh, V8 uh, Mustang followed there by Trevor Momberg as they race through the kink down into Interceptor Corner. But out of Interceptor they come now working the way as we still watch this other group of cars working their way through Interceptor. The leader is now making his way onto the back main and that is Franco Donadio down the back main he goes that car squirming underneath Donadio 
as he races down towards turn five fast on corner and he's been chased down there by michael hitchcock in that uh, mustang and right on the case of hitchcock is uh Aiton Bogard and that is Glenn Aiton Bogard as they exit turn five Pertamina fast run. Oh, Arnold Nierfeling with that Mustang of his was just on the inside briefly of Charlie Arton's Mazda, but Charlie Arton uh, remains ahead for now. Here they come towards the line. It's going to be side by side down the main straight towards turn one and Charlie Arton stands no chance in a straight line against that uh, big V8 Mustang and I think Arton has got issues. Oh, I'll have a look and see Charles Arton. He's got that uh, Capella and he is still in there. He's just ahead of uh, Louis Powell as they make their way towards turn two. But it's a whole lot of them working their way towards turn number two. And that group has been led there by Glenn Aiton Bogard. Arnold Leerfling is in there behind him, followed there by Charlie Arton. Louis Powell says, I want to have a go through the kink. They go now. Then it's Andrew Honeywell that wants to catch up with that Porsche as those group of cars, Byron, race out of Interceptor Corner, Turn 3. Oh, Aiton Bogart in the uh, Fairmont. Uh, Frankie is in the pits, unfortunately. What? one? Not even one lap into this race, and he's now pulling into the garage. Now that's the end of Mark Aiton Bogart's Ford Fairmont GT. Well, they go down the back straight now towards turn five, Pertamina Fastron. I can see now Arnold Nierfeling, his favorite passing spot. It's going to be here uh, alongside uh, Aiton Bogart. That's of course of Glenn Aiton Bogart that he passes up into third position in this race, Frankie, as they complete lap two of eight. Now, because we apologize for the cameras. The wind is causing havoc out there with the surveillance cameras, and it's uh, not easy to do the camera work with this wind that's howling over here. But the leader is making his way out of turn number one. Out of holes he comes. And it's that uh, escort, Mark One, of Franco Donadio that sits there in P1, working his way towards Castle Corner. Michael Hitchcock in second. The V8 Mustangs are sitting second and third. Arnold Leerfeling is right in the fight as well. Then it's Glenn Aiton Bogart coming out of Castle now. We have got the Capella, and that is Charlie Arthur up on his inside. Oh, trying to squeeze him there is Louis Powell, and catching them, Byron, is the Porsche of Andrew Honeywell. Uh, Andrew Honeywell, Frankie, is the leader of Class B at this time, and uh, that's the 944 Turbo in the Gulf Colors. And uh, Honeywell will find himself uh, ahead there of Mouton by 1.6 seconds in the other uh, Mustang, and one of the other Mustangs in this race, the red and black Mustang uh, for 30 Mouton. Second Trevor Momberg, third in class. And uh, then we go a little bit further back. The number 63, a little bit further down, that is Malcolm Aiton Bogart in the uh, uh, Ford. Um, the, uh, so he's in uh, the lead of class C, Aiton Bogart, ahead of the Anglia of uh, Nell. Right, so the leaders are making their way into turn number one. And uh, it's still being led there. The race still being led there by Franco Donadio. Through turn one they come now, Donadio will lead them out. He's got those two Mustangs tucked in there behind him. But heading into turn number one now and eventually diving across the bars of Charlie Arton out of turn one is the Mark 1 Ford Escort, the Meisner Escort of Louis Powell. And he did all he could to get his nose ahead there of Charles Arton, who's now been hassled there going into turn two by the Porsche of Honeywell. He looks up on the inside. Then Fadi Maton in that red Mustang and right behind him is that blue Capri of Trevor Momberg. I'm sorry Frankie, he doesn't look at home in that Capella at the moment, does Charlie Arton. I think he's not very happy over there. We're going through turn four now, just a quick uh, update here. Number 46, Brian Bedin in the Datsun Triple S has been, has been smoking, it's been reported. So uh, keep an eye out on that Datsun. Meanwhile, down the back straight, we're having ourselves an all Mustang battle over here. And here they go into turn five, Pertamina Fastron. Nierfeling is right on the case there of uh, Michael Hitchcock and this is allowing of course our leader Franco Donadio to get away and Arnold Nierfeling a 122.502 fastest lap of the race. Yeah they come towards us now so if they keep each other back these two thundering V8 Ford Mustangs that will allow Donadio to get away no but won't because those cars squall and Donadio's all over the playing field. Oh. He went in hot. It could be that wind that's messing them around. Remember, the wind is causing havoc out here today. And now they've got a lot of back markers ahead of them as they work their way towards turn two. 
You've got uh, uh, Derek Wolslach with that uh, Anglia that keeps right out the way there. And now Frank O'Donnell that's going to have to go because these two Mustangs are right on his case. Michael Hitchcock and right on Hitchcock's case is a triple seven of Arnie Neffelung. Watch them as they go through turn three now, Frankie. You could see the flags in turn one, how they rippling. That's quite a wind that we have here today. On the Tigerberg straight, we then run towards Sardle Sweep now. Watch them onto the back straight, how it's going to work. Arnold Neffelung has been particularly strong and under braking for turn five per Tamina Fastron. Here they go now onto the rumble strip to him. It just shows you how much that triple seven Mustang is pushing Frankie and they'll run it down now side by side. Is he going to be able to make it? They've got back markers coming through there too which is making it hell of a difficult. Yeah, Mel Carter just came out the way with that Ford Cortina and allowed those two thundering Ford Mustangs to come through. Out of turn five, Fastron, they come now towards us and Franco Donadio will have three laps to go when he crosses the line. Can he hang on to that uh, lead? 122.502 by Arnie Neffelung. He's the quickest man. Here comes Glen Aiton Bogard across the line. Then we've got a couple of back markers, two of them, and then we've got Louis Powell who's on the lead lap coming through, but here we go, here we go, heading towards turn one, heading towards turn one, it is uh, Mouton, it's uh, Charlie Arton, Trevor Momberg, and right up between both of them and taking those positions away from them is that uh, Porsche of Andrew Annual. Well, Ferdy Mouton now currently leads the uh, class uh, section now. That's class B, uh, Frankie, ahead of Andrew Honeywell. Andrew Honeywell is right over the back of that Mustang ahead of him. Look at Trevor Momberg coming through. Trevor Momberg's ahead of Charlie Arton at the moment. Anton Rolino is coming out of Castro now, turn two, and joining that gang as Byron. Brian Bedin slows it down. That smoking Datsun Triple S through the kink. Well, let's have a look at a f uh, other other cars that's heading here into Castle Corner. There is Malcolm Aiton Bogart in the fair lane as they come out of turn two. Yes, right behind him is the angler of Vayner Nell. Then the escort coming through now, Brian Evans, and then Lane Hutchings in uh, that golf. That's another group of four that's making its way out of turn three interceptor. Yeah, Lane Hutchings as he goes into turn three now, Frankie, he is now 1.8 seconds off. Actually, yes, 1.8 seconds off, 1.9 seconds off of Evans at the moment and ahead of his dad, uh, 2.3 seconds uh, Hutchings coming through in 15th ahead of Conradi. Dave Rowley leads class D at the moment and the man who leads class X will be Bradley Rowe in that 2W2 turbo BMW. But the leaders are now making their way into turn two. Working the way out of Castle Corner, and we have lost one of the Granada, uh, one of the Mustangs. We haven't lost him; we just lost a lot of ground, and that is uh, Hitchcock. Hitchcock is still ahead of Aiton Bogard, but he's lost a lot of ground to Franco Donadio and to Arnie Neffling as the two of them head towards a turn four. Uh, Sardle Sweep. And look at the traffic Frankie that they are encountering as they come through Sardle Sweep. Now onto the back straight as they run. Donadio is right behind the Honda CRX of uh, James Matia. Makes easy work of him. Arnold Neffeling will carve through. They got past Anton Rolino. They got past uh, uh, the uh, Row BMW there as well. The boxy shape 325. And uh, we now go for one more lap left to go. When they cross the line now as Donadio Watch him as he comes out, out of uh, turn five, underneath the wing field, Castro and City at Cape Town Bridge. He flashes the lights for the back box as well, just telling them, I'm coming through. One more lap to go. We've got the blue flags waving there for the back markers. This is the final lap at a 122.507 by Neffelung. Out of turn number one they go. Byron, this is the last lap. They're going to pick up a back marker. That's uh, Adam de Kock. They're going to pick up now going into Castle Corner. Frankie, it's in the effort, like it's slowing. Yes. Neffeling is slowing, there's a problem, and that has now robbed us of a wonderful battle as the big Ford Mustang has come to the end of its race, and that's going to be easy work for Michael Hitchcock, who just keeps ahead Glenn Aiton Bogart in the Granada. So that means that uh, we might have a new second place man. Oh, yeah, they go through the king side by side. The Granada gets its nose ahead there of the Mustang. That's Glenn Aiton Bogard ahead of Hitchcock. But they both, before they get to Sardle Sweep, will get past the triple seven of, uh, of um, Neffelung. Well, down the back straight, though, and all the Christmas is coming at once here uh, for uh, Franco Donadio and his Cosworth uh, engined uh, Ford Escort.
and goes into Pertamina Fastra now. You'll see the checkered flag. You have quite an advantage over the second place man in this race as Arnold Nierfeling is just trying to make it to the end of the race now. He's still running down the back straight. Flash the lights for Donadio and the uh, man comes to the line. The Donadio plant tire car takes the victory. He comes home in P1. The cock finishes, but he's a lap down. And here we go, the first of the Mustangs towards the checkered flag. And it's going to be, it's not going to be the Granada. It's going to be Glen and Bogart, then the Mustang of Hitchcock across the line, followed by Arnie Neffeling. Uh, then we've got a couple of back markers coming through. Louis Powell is the next man through. Fadi Maton, Andrew Honeywald, and right on his case is Trevor Momberg, followed there by the Capri, uh, the uh, um, Capella, sorry, of Charlie Arton. And it's uh, Oosthuizen coming across the line now, one of the Class X uh, uh, conquests uh, coming to the end. Here comes uh, the uh, Lambert Jetta to the line. And Lambert will come through in 10th position. Now Charlie Arton in that 9th position. Now we wait for Veynant Nell will come through as the winner. Surely here of Class C, just ahead of Brian Evans. Brian Evans will uh, miss it by three tenths of a second. And then the Hutchings will be coming along in Class C. First we have uh, Anton Rolino. And Anton Rolino uh, will be in 23rd position in the uh, 57 Ford Anglia. And uh, then we have Conradi that uh, will uh, join him as well across the line. Dave Rowley comes through 16th overall, but the winner of Class D and uh, we still have a few just to uh, come to the line. Vance Kearney in 17th, De Kock in, uh, in 18th position. And there's nothing more over there. So Jan Willem uh, de la Porta, and that's in 19th position, is second in Class D ahead of the CRX of James Matia. And uh, the 84 there uh, as it is row, uh, the 84 for Class D. We just get the uh, first name. I always forget the first name of one of the rows. Bradley Rowe. I think Bradley Rowe is in the BMW 2002. Robert, Robert Rowe. There we go. Sorry there. Sorry there to the rows. And uh, that was our Lauda Classic Car first race of the day for them. And we had some exciting times in there. And uh, Frankie, just looking at how before, of course, uh, Nefeling started slowing. How squirrely um, Anton, sorry, um, Don Donadio looked into turn one to show how late he was braking. He felt the pressure behind him wind. of, uh, of Nefeling. Pressure how, how, and, and wind. The wind is really causing havoc, Gaza. How, how was his car handling? Squirrely. Squirrely. So, uh, so that's how it was handling. It was handling squirrely. Squirrely, that can be like a word for the day. Our, so th our word of the day calendar can be put up. All right, so our first word of the day on the calendar for today, 21st of October, the year of our Lord, 2023, by Byron Height. Your car is squirrely. We will give Frankie Innes a couple more races to come up with uh, okay. his version of the word <clears throat> for the day. But yeah, Frankie, you were correct over there. That wind was coming across at quite a rate. You can see the flag still here, the uh, Wingfield Technical Center and best price for my car flags are rippling quite a bit. I'm telling you, they're really testing the strings out. Rippling. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wordsmith today, I can tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to say big thanks to all our sponsors. You're talking about uh, Wingfield Motors and best price for my car. That's a Johnny van A big thanks to Pertamina Fostron. A big thanks to the uh, Porsche Club. To uh, Castrol, they do so much. The bridge, turn two, the whole tower. Um, to Interceptor Shoewear, King Tony Tools. A big thanks to them as well. And then uh, to the city of uh, Cape Town. Those are all of our main sponsors here at Kalani International Raceway. And without them, we can't go racing. And a big thanks to the city of Cape Town for backing us up. And then to Smile 90.4 FM the official media partner of the WPMC.
Thermo Fires, Clubman Saloon Cars, race number one. Roll out onto the track. And this is going to be some good, good stuff out there. There's a lot of Clubman's cars. They're still busy making their way out the pits. The last car actually is making its way towards turn two, Castrol Corner. As uh, the others are all going down the back straight. There's the eight call 24-7 car. Is that the doc himself, Mike Verrier? I would think so. Yeah, Frankie, he has. It is indeed. He's, he's actually got a new car now, and uh, he's out there. Just to tell you, the battle up front in Class A, a uh, complete new uh, top end for Cody Alberts. Uh, Jess Huggett hauling out some old tires from uh, a year and a bit back and trying to soften them up a little bit. So, uh, Cody Alberts with uh, a bit of an advantage in this one, rubber wise. But then again, to beat Jay Sager, the two of them are at the top end of Class A and standing on the front two rows of the grid as well. Right, here we go. Quirsi Swanapool, DNA reinforcing, KSD, Skullpot Flay. He is on the <clears throat> front row of the grid in that second position. Jess Huggett pulls in there behind him in P4, row two, as the rest of the cars come through. Oh, Jess always giving us always a good salute there uh, from behind the steer behind the wheel and uh, well you know it's just great to have a field like this uh, Frankie and it's always you know when Clubman's field start getting well subscribed you know things are going well you know we're gonna have plenty of action there is Diedrichs coming in uh, that uh, number 73 uh, boxy shape beamer Right behind uh, Jess Huggett's uh, second generation Golf, sorry, uh, Jetta. And uh, then, yeah, Cody Alberts. I've heard Cody is not feeling uh, that uh, healthy at the moment. So I don't know if he's just uh, a little under the weather. You know, he's got a, a kid that uh, is coming and, uh, you know, had the, uh, the gender reveal party here at Kilani as well. But hey. He's ready to race. Right, so uh, Graham van Royen also in there. Behind him is Algen Gasper. I see Yusuf Hendricks pulling in there just behind uh, Cody Alberts as the cars come through. Imad Modak in the 47, taking up his position in P5. And then uh, we have got uh, Nias Modak coming through in the 37 car is there in P3 then we've got uh, Michael Lassier that's taking up his position there Dr. Mike Vera is a bit further down here comes the 46 car that is a uh, Daniel Kutsia he'll be in P1 Daniel Kutsia with the 46 a uh, and plumbing machine standing there in P1 yeah there's uh, Nian, Nias Modek uh, in the Audi, uh, Frankie, with a very prominent front splitter oh, yeah. uh, on that uh, machine of his, number 37, third on the grid, and as well also the splitter on the car behind him, the BMW, the number 47. Now that's the Imad Modak, the 47. So that's like a, it's like a DTM race, uh, old DTM race, Audis versus BMWs and uh, these uh, these particular kind of cars. But yeah, looks like we uh, off of the grid now, Frankie. Michael Lassier, Yusuf Hendricks, and uh, yeah, Gaspel, Hoes, uh, Yevald Valant. Always good to see Yevald Valant in the GTB6, Alfa Romeo. And if I'm not mistaken, that is probably the oldest car out there in the clubman's field is that the gt 6 of Ewald Weiland. And one of the oldest cars here at Kalan International Raceway. And uh, it still does what it has to do in the hands um, of Ewald Weiland as they work their way through Castle Corner, behind the uh, safety car, through the kink towards uh, Interceptor. Yeah. 133, eh? Burger. 
Yeah, Cedric Berger, the 133 car, uh, parked uh, on the infield uh, there. Unfortunately, going to be taking no further part uh, in this first clubman's race of the day as they now do their warm up lap. The first Thermo Fires clubman saloons car, uh, you know, race of the day. And remember, on the Tigerberg Strait at uh, lunchtime, that's where the fan walk will be for the clubman's. Yeah, here they go. Down the back main, behind the safety car, Daniel Kutsia, Kursi Swanepoel, Jesse Huggett, Nias Modak, Andre Diedrichs, Imad Modak, Cody Alberts on his outside, Michael Lassier, it just keeps on going. Graham van Royen is in that uh, group as well. Yusuf Hendricks, Argen Gasper, JP Scher, Stephen Goos, just to name a few of them as they roll down the back straight towards a turn five lovely sight there on your monitor when you watch those uh, clubman's cars work their way into turn five fast run corner the lights on pit lane is on all five of them and uh, we are about to go green soon eight laps of racing here in the thermo fires clubman's regional saloon cars as they roll under the wingful motors, Castrol and City of Cape Town Bridge. Down the main straight, call the Porsche Club straight. The lights go off and away they go. That's hammer time as they run down into turn number one. All the cars making it nice and neat into turn number one. A little bit of a lock up there, but everybody seems to get out of turn one very clean and very neatly. And up front, it is a Kursi Swanapool that gets his nose up front. On his outside is Daniel Kutsia. Kutsia on the outside of Swanapool. He outbreaks him and he takes the lead away from Swanapool as they work their way out of turn number two. We've got a car that's getting all over the place there towards the back of it, but they catch it very neatly as they work their way through the kink and into turn three interceptor corner. Yeah, it's man wearing. It's uh, going all around at the back of the uh, field there at the moment. But a good clean start, as you have said, Frankie. And look at them go now through onto the uh, main uh, back main. They'll go through uh, saddle sweep and uh, down the straight uh, we'll then go and it is the 46 beamer that uh, of daniel kutsia that leads the way then uh, down ahead of course he's one jess huggett uh, was up into a position but i think he's dropped back down again in the jetta as they go now into turn five per termina fast run for the first time Nias modak and the rd sits there in that third position as they come down towards us it is very close it's nose to tail under the castle bridge they come now then behind them, it is Imad Modak. Jesse Huggett on his inside as under Didricks. As Didricks takes that position away from him as they work their way into turn number one. Out of turn one, they come now. All still, no to tail stuff. That's Daniel Kutsia. Here comes Nias Modak. Modak up on the inside, the Audi on the inside. And Nias Modak takes the lead away, going into turn two, Castrol. Yeah, forces his way through there, Frankie. Look behind him. Didricks is really on the move as well now. And uh, he will be having Modak as his next target as they go through the kink and uh, Remini Modak is already all over the back of Swanapool there in that third position. Right through the kink uh, that lot goes through um, interceptor corner as they make their way towards turn four into Cyril Sweep. It's all gaggle of cars that's making its way into Cyril Sweep. Down the back main they go. It is Nias Modak from Daniel Kutsia. Kursi Swanapool and here comes Imad Modak. He's up on the inside of Swanapool, Andre Didrex, Jess Huggett, Cody Alberts, all of them racing down towards turn five. Michael Lucia is right in there as well as they work their way towards five, Fastron. Well, just looking at the grand scheme of things, Diedrich uh, in that 73 BMW does lead uh, his class at the moment, Class B. Uh, Hendricks and Van Royen all the way down 10th, 11th position. JP Scher, uh, number one car, of course, in 12th position and uh, fourth in class at the moment. Eugene Gaspel, uh, Ogden Gaspel rather, in 13th in that number 95 car. Man Waring still holding second in class ahead of Goos. Leaders making their way into turn number one. As a matter of fact, they're making their way towards turn number two now. The leaders will be built. There's a lot of other fights going on. We'll get to that now. 
Let's have a look now at this fight raging and out of turn uh, two. Didrix had a look there at uh, Swanapool and made the move stick there on Quisi Swanapool as the leaders work their way out of interceptor corner. Let's have a look. Let's go. But further down, heading towards turn three now, there is a lovely fight. Yosef Hendricks is involved in that fight. If the cameras can pick that one up, Hendricks is in there. Graham van Royen, JP Shea. It's a whole group of cars uh, that's working its way now towards a turn four. Dr. Mike Veria is in that fight as well as they head out of turn four, out of saddle sweep. Yeah, six laps left to go as the uh, leaders come now onto the bay, the main straight, and uh, we'll start uh, that uh, next uh, lap. Here comes Modak now, the man, of course, who has got a fastest lap, so 126.15 is Nias Modak, who crosses the line now. Will he go even quicker? We'll find out. No, he doesn't. And uh, it's a Modak 1, Modak 2, Audi versus BMW. One and a half seconds between them. Kutsia up in third position, still ahead of Swanapul, 2.9 seconds, and then Diedrich's 1.2 seconds back. Leader of Class B at the present moment. We'll stay with this fight that's heading into turn number two. There's another one that I want to go to a bit later on, but we stick around with this one coming out of turn number two out of Castle Corner. It is all about uh, Modak that sits in P1 and 2. The Modaks are sitting in first and second position, followed there by Daniel Kutsia in third. Then it is Percy Swanepoel, Andre Didrix, Jesse Huggett, Cody Alberts. That's that first group of cars that's working its way now towards turn number four. Out of side or sweep they go down the back main and it is, uh, well, somebody's slowing right down. That is Nias Modak. He's slowing right down on the back main and gets overtaken there by Daniel Kutsia and by Imad Modak as they race towards turn five per Tamina Fastron. I was also just looking, uh, Frankie as well, in seventh, now going to be sixth position, Cody Alberts closing up the gap to Jess Huggett as well in that BMW of his. He's left uh, Le Sieur in eighth now, coming up to seventh position behind by 6.1 seconds at the present moment. Four laps left to go. Yeah, as that leading group makes its way to turn number one, all of a sudden the Audi is back on pace again as uh, here comes another group under the Castle Bridge heading towards turn number one and that group has been led by uh, Michael Lassier and this is all nose to tail stuff as they work their way out of turn number one. Could see her, um, uh, Lucia leads uh, that fight. Then he's got Gary Smith right in there behind him as they work their way towards turn two. Lucia, Gary Smith, then it's Yusuf Hendricks. A bit of a gap before we see Graham van Royen and uh, JP Shea and Razi Harris is in that fight as well with that number four golf. Then uh, behind them, we've got Algen Gasper, followed there by Dr. Mike Veria. That's that fight that's making its way through turn three as the leaders are heading now towards turn five, Fastron. Yeah, underneath the city of Cape Town Bridge, and uh, it's going to be three more laps left to go. And uh, well, so uh, it will go now. He has a very slow moving uh, golf of uh, Lance Orenser uh, on the uh, straight as well. And uh, then our leaders come. There we go. So uh, here goes. It looks like uh, 46 of Kutsia is also not really going well. Yeah, that is uh, uh, Daniel Kutsia that sits now in that second position as we wait for the wind to stop messing around with the cameras as they come out of turn number one, heading down towards a turn two. They're going to pick up a bank marker now, this uh, group of uh, three leaders. Led there by Imad Modak from Daniel Kutsia and uh, Nias Modak through the kink they go. Not too far behind them is Kursi Swanepoel, Andre Diedrich and Cody Alberts as they head towards three interceptor corner. Yeah, uh, Paul Minnick has just come through uh, a position. Did I just see Jess Huggett's name drop down uh, the order? I uh, might be mistaken. But let's watch to see where our leaders are and where they are coming. They're going to come down the Tigerberg Strait onto the main straight. Back main now. Look at their nose to tail between Kutsia and uh, Nias Modak. Nias Modak will be side by side and on the outside will take that place right away. I don't see a Jess Huggett anywhere. Yeah, you're quite right. I think uh, Jess has dropped right off the leaderboard, that's for sure. As uh, the leaders are coming out of turn five now. When they cross the line, they'll have two more laps to go. Coming out of... Uh, 
appear to be in a fast run. Yusuf Hendricks and Razi Harris is having a lovely fight down into turn five as well, into fast run corner. We've lost all our cameras, it's coming on and off. We have a problem in the production as they work out of turn number one. That is your leaders that's now making their way up towards turn two, towards uh, Caltech's, uh, sorry, Castrol corner. The penultimate lap of this particular race now as the Modex battle it out. BMW versus Audi. And just holding a watching brief a little bit further back, but I don't think he can come up near them, is Daniel Kutsier going through turn three. Interceptor corner onto the Tigerberg straight now. And uh, they've left pretty much everybody else behind. Call off in turn one. You've got to call off in turn number one. That's why the yellow flags are out. So there may be no overtaking. We'll see if you can pick up a number on that car that's off there on the outside of turn number one. But the yellow flags are out, Byron, so no overtaking going into turn number one. And Graham van Royen comes past us very, very slowly indeed. Yeah, there's a number of slow moving vehicles on the circuit at uh, present and it is now going to be only one more lap left to go when they do cross the line of course that will be uh, the uh, Modak uh, BMW followed by the Modak Audi so it's all Modak uh, family affair at the present moment and they cross the line right now for that final lap and Daniel Kutsia does the same a little bit of a gap between himself Quirsi Swanepoel still fourth all right so uh, here comes as well uh, Diedrichs all right, just uh, trying to pick up on the camera now. We can't see who it is. It's uh, Yusuf Hendricks that's lost the car there in turn one. Yes, it is Yusuf Hendricks. Yeah, he's beached there, unfortunately, and uh, he can't uh, go anywhere. But uh, now is the final lap that we are currently on. In turn two now, that is Quirsi Swanepoel coming through there. Diedrichs coming through that section as the leaders go into interceptor corner turn three. Yeah, this is the last time they've got a half a lap left to go. As the leaders are going to pick up a slow car, that's Paul Minnick. They're going to pick up there on the Tigerberg straight and uh, make their way into turn four, Sardo Sweep. For the final time, they're coming to view now. Down the back main they go. And it is uh, Nias Modak from Imad Modak, first and second, followed there by Daniel Kutsia. The BMW and the Audi are side by side, or they were side by side, as they race down towards the final uh, corner. That's turn five, Fostron heading towards us and the checkered flag is out. The checkered flag waits for them as they make their way towards the line and it is going to be Imad Modak in P1. Nias Modak comes home second. Daniel Kutsia finishes in third, followed by Kursi Swanepoel across the line. Andre Diedrichs finishes his race and so does Cody Alberts. Coming towards us now, very slow. This is uh, Graham van Royen. He picked up a problem out there. And then we are going to see Rosie Harris will be the next man on the lead lap. And he's out there in Class X. A lot of slow cars limping across the line, of which uh, Stephen Hose, uh, no, not Stephen Hose, here comes JP Shea. And right on his case is Mike Veria, followed there by Algen Gasper. Yeah, here comes Paul Minnick, who's also had a bit of an adventure in this race as well. He comes across the line there, uh, Frankie Michael Lussier, uh should do likewise there as well. Mia Bench, and uh, it looks like Azar Davids, uh, Adam Omar, Zahir Phillips have all finished. John De Silva also coming across the line as well earlier on, but uh, we still wait for Charles Opperman, Andre van der Merwe, and Eva de Toy. As, uh, yeah, there is uh, Charles Opperman. And there's only another two more to come across the line then. It's Stephen Khos, Jess Hager, Shane Smith, Lee Fielding not uh, finishing this race. Barcy and Cedric Berger not even starting uh, the race uh, as uh, now that uh, race has come to its conclusion. Well, the car that I earlier thought was a host was actually um, Azar Davids in the uh, Jetta that uh, came across the line very, very slowly indeed. Oh. And then the last two cars out there, probably two of the biggest cars out there, was Evert in the... Um, oh, that's just a replay. <laughs> the two big cars that came across the line there was Evert the Toy in the Falcon and then Andre van der Merwe in the uh, Chrysler. I cannot stop in the middle of a sentence 
but the world listening to me because you want to show me what's on the screen. They come up sound them. So they'll make their way back to the uh, pits then. And uh, that will be the first uh, of the Thermo Fires Club and Saloons uh, races uh, done for the morning. And uh, we'll move on into uh, the uh, next uh, part of the program. And uh, if you've got a physical program, you can get them uh, downstairs if you are here at Kilani. Of course, it's on the uh, Facebook uh, page for Kilani as well. I'm uh, paging myself into another dimension over here, but we'll pick that up shortly. Here we go. Uh, it is, of course, going to be the uh, Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT cars uh, coming up next. And uh, we have a number of races just before the lunch break, uh, a little bit later on. Just a reminder, GTI is uh, going to be on the Porsche straight, the main straight, for the fan walk, and the Clubman's on the Tigerberg straight. So uh, if you want to go to both, a little bit of walking to do around Kilani here today. So brave the wind and go and uh, feel part of the action.
Right, here we go with the Wild Rose Gin Sports and GTs race number one over ten laps. That is making its way out onto the circuit. Lovely lot of uh, sports and uh, GT cars that is uh, circulating around uh, Kalan International Raceway. Been led by the safety car out of turn two, out of a castle corner. This will be a 10 lapper uh, as well, Frankie. We've uh, been used to in the past having the 100 kilometer 31 lap races. The uh, Orns AC uh, 100s and the Wild Rose Gin sponsored uh, uh, long distance races or longer distance races. But uh, we have ourselves a, a bit of a pack of a field over here. Josh Broom and his uh, radical SR8 uh, Spitfire furniture. Uh, the uh, proud sponsor of uh, that uh, machine, Darby Ube and his uh, Lotus Exige. The uh, Rembrandt Racing and Wild Rose car. That's, uh, of course, uh, Class A that we're talking about here. Josh Broom in Class S. Clinton Thorne in uh, the Lotus 7 full pullout. Lotus 7. Gary Kieswetter in the Advanced Packaging Technology Porsche GT3 Cup car. And then Francis Carruthers in his pull beam, the Hop Motorsport pull beam. That's uh, going to be going to Class B then. Martin Pugh, the Shelby Can Am, the Appleberry Farm uh, sponsored car. Martin Prince, the Dutchman, in the Motul Porsche GT3 Cup car. Paul Beachy Head. I saw Paul Beachy Head was parked uh, at uh, Turn 5 Pertamina Fastron earlier on. And uh, he uh, wasn't going anywhere very quickly. So I don't know if he's actually a CDR8. The Audi R8 is in this race. So uh, hopefully a nice stable picture. So yeah, Marco Retta in there as well. And uh, that will be in the BMW E46. And uh, looks like we're ready to go racing, Frankie. So we have uh, Joubert and uh, Carruthers leading them off. The Lotus Exige versus the Pull Beam. And uh, wait for the lights. Away we go for 10 racing laps. As they get off the line now, it's going to be into turn one. It's going to be the Lotus Exige of Joubert. And uh, a little bit of a lockup there from, I think, one of the, uh, the Nissans. But uh, they all get through nice and cleanly, looks like it. And uh, a 911 Porsche there at the back as well, just rounding things off as they come around the uh, back end uh, of the field. That's the Richard de Roos, uh car. There is Paul Beachy Head. He's back in the race after having stopped in qualifying. And uh, we are racing now here yeah, for the uh, Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT Cars uh, Race 1. As they go now through uh, the interceptor corner section, turn 3. And on to Tigerberg straight as they've completed the majority of this first lap. Right, down the back plan they go. Davi Hubert and Francis Carruthers will uh, lead them uh, down the uh, back straight. As the rest of them just filter through a good couple of Porsches. That is in this fight as well. As these uh, Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT cars work their way out of turn number five. Out of Fastron Corner. Davi Hubert. He's made his intentions clear. He wants to get the hell out of here. Carruthers is there in that second position. Then coming through in uh, third place, that is uh, Steve Humble. He's in that third place, a new driver car combination. That is uh, Steve Humble as uh, they exit the turn number one holes. Yeah, the number 11 car there, Steve Humble, is a Juno SS3. Uh, and that's sponsored by Hart Motorsport and Ravenel. You'll be in third position as Frankie has appointed out. And uh, Martin Prince will be just off of that if you uh, take a look at things as well. Humble, Pew, Lasmo uh, in the uh, 350Z. He's the leader of the 350Z in that Class C section. Ahead then of the likes of Marco Retta, who leads Class D at this moment in time. Lap 2 of 10 at the present moment the first flyer of the race as steve humble comes through the picture now and martin prince in that beautiful dutch orange uh porsche yeah so the leaders are now busy working the way uh down the back straight towards uh, turn number five and through turn five foster on they come now let's have a look and see what uh, lap is going to put up here davi you bad 
as he comes towards us under the Wingfield Motors and Castle Bridge. And uh, Darby will do a 112.399. I don't know if they're going to do any quicker than that. With Carruthers in that second position, here comes Steve Humble. Then uh, Martin Prince, he's also busy working his way through with uh, uh, Pew in there behind him. And uh, then we've got Devon Lasmo in the Nissan that's heading into turn number one. That's a Nissan 350Z. Yeah, the leader of the uh, 350Z, uh, Frankie, as I said. And uh, he finds himself then ahead then of uh, Marco Retta. Marco Retta uh, is uh, currently in the BMW M3. And then Emil Buerta, also a Class D runner as well. He's just off 2.2 seconds off uh, of uh, Marco Retta. Eric Salomon bringing up that uh, Elf Sports card based on a Lotus 23. Uh, comes up into the top 10 as well. But uh, the news is that the uh, report... Uh, the reports have come in that uh, that Audi R8 of Paul Beachy Head is smoking. Right, so the leaders are working their way out of five, out of fast run, heading towards us. That's a lovely shot to see there of Davi Uberi at a 112.399. Can he do better than that? As he goes into turn number one, he does not. He stays at 112.399 and he's way, way ahead there of Carruthers that's in that second position. Here comes Steve Humble towards us in P3. Then you've got uh, Martin uh, uh, Prince coming through and right on his case we have got Martin Pugh and then Devon Lasmo busy working his way into turn number one and then it's a massive, massive gap before we will see Marco Retta. So, as they work their way out of turn uh, number three, that is your leader that sits out there and that is uh, nobody else up front than uh, Davi Uber. Just want to go back to turn one, uh, uh, Frankie, of course, Eric Salomon having a little bit of a battle now with the uh, 350Z of Emil Buerta. It looks like he is coming through uh, the number nine in that section as well uh, of Penev. Uh, is in that uh, little battle as well uh, and I don't see on the uh, the list at the moment over here but uh, Simeon Penev and Ray Farnham rounding off that uh, top 10 down the back straight as we go we just caught a glimpse there of Francis Carruthers then behind him closing up the gap looks like it's Steve Humble in the, the Class B uh, machine the Juno and uh, in that uh, number 75 ahead of Martin Prince by 6.1 seconds the two Martins the Dutch Martin and the South African Martin both uh, fighting it out between each other for what is the fourth and fifth positions but also second and third in class B. Yeah it's a huge huge gap here comes a Martin Prince and Martin Pugh behind him that's the two cars that's heading into turn number one then Divan Lasmo in the 350Z he's working his way into turn one then we've got a huge huge gap before we should see the BMW of Marco Retta yes here he comes towards us now lovely looking machine there of Marco Retta and then right behind him is Emil Buerta right on his case is Eric Salomon Byron and then this fight heading into turn one now yeah it's Penev versus uh, Ray Farnham Frankie Ray Farnham is on the inside for turn one now and he will poke the nose head surely yes he does and uh, takes Penev and Penev will lose a bit of ground coming out of that corner now you can see there as the crosswind plays uh, a heavy heavy uh, effect over there as well on them they have now got a try and keep sight of the two ahead of him of course Eric Salomon in that uh, Elf sports car as Darby Hubert crosses the line five laps left to go in this race including the one he has now started and uh, he's built up that gap between himself and Francis Carruthers coming down the back main as uh, the main straight here as uh, we now go into that uh, turn three on the screen though Ray Farnham still holding Simeon Penev right ahead yeah, that's a good fight. Eric Salomon coming through your picture there. And then this is this fight between Penev and the man ahead of him, which is uh, Ray Farnham. As they head down the back lane. Ahead of them, you've got uh, Eric Salomon and Emil Buerta. But uh, we have a look at the cars coming out of turn number one. That's a two Martins that are going nose to tail towards a turn two. That's Cashel Corner. And that is... Uh, Martin Prince versus a Martin Pugh as uh, they headed through turn two out of Castro. Yeah, still a 112.399 by the number 28 uh, Darby Hubert in the Lotus Exige. 13 and a half seconds ahead of Carruthers, both in the same class. Sorry, yeah, that's, I'm just going to say that Pugh and Prince is both in class B with Prince in the Porsche GT3 Cup car and Pugh in the Shelby Can-Am. 
Yeah, 1.2 seconds between them, uh, Frankie, going through uh, Sardo's sweep now, as well as we just go down, down to the... Uh, uh, it's of course Gavin Erasmus coming through the uh, picture there now. Now the leader comes through, Davi Hubert. Four laps left to go. A very quick last lap still. A 1.13.949. Not as quick though as he's 1.12. So uh, quite a bit of time uh, that he's reduced over there coming into turn two, Castro Corner. Yeah, he's going to pick up one of the uh, slower cars uh, through the kink is Davi Hubert before he goes into Interceptor Corner. That's the slower car and just behind him is uh, Davi Hubert, the leader. And he'll get him uh, pretty soon. As a matter of fact, that fight uh, uh, between Panev and Farnham is not too far ahead of him. They're going down the back straight, and then behind them is the leader. <laughs> He's the leader. He's going to pick up that fight, uh, Byron, between Panev and uh, Farnham, and they both get the blue lights to show that the leader is behind them. Going into turn five, Pertamina Fastron. Oh, one of them's going to be very red-faced, I'll tell you that, uh, Frankie, because he's going to now spoil the party for them, unless he can just slide past, uh, does the uh, Lotus Exige of Joubert. He will start will be the uh, next lap, and three laps left to go, as look at the battle ahead of them, turn one as well. Salomon having a go there at Emil Boerta, as uh, the leader goes through that turn one section, and onto the Joubert straight, you can still see a heady crosswind over there as well, but Simeon Penev right on the back there of uh, Ray Farnham. Yeah, watch the leader going into Castro Corner and ahead of him is that fight that Byron was talking about, Emil Boerta and just behind him the elf of Eric Salomon and they fighting for track positions coming out of turn three out of Interceptor and right behind them is the overall leader that is Davi Hubert as they work their way into turn four through Sardal Sweep. Well, right behind uh, the uh, Salomon and Boerta battle comes our leader now. So he'll glide past off the racing line. He'll come and uh, Salomon and uh, Eric, uh, sorry, uh, Emil Boerta will keep the racing line all the way there to turn five per Tamina Fastron. That means now it's only a lap and a few hundred meters to go for Darby Hubert. And that's 21.1 seconds the last time around that he has over Francis Carruthers. Francis Carruthers now basically, you can't say on a low only uh, second position because Steve Humble is only 1.1 seconds behind. Right, that's uh, Puerta and uh, Salomon that's heading into turn number one. Just behind him is the leader. Here comes the fight into turn one between Panev and uh, Farnham as the rest of the cars come through. Well, the battle for second is hotting up here, Frankie. Look now, coming through the back markers. It's now Carruthers fighting it out with Steve Humble. And they're trying to squeeze through on uh, that uh, 350Z. And then he goes and looks on the inside. There's two more laps left to go there. Nose to tail. Steve Humble has come from nowhere here, basically, in that Juno. And is all over the back of that pull beam. And uh, the man, I think they just got past over there. Uh, I know Gary uh, Faree uh, just came through earlier on. And, uh, well, the other 350Zs that's uh, all in this race. Oh, big lock up for that uh, Porsche of Richard de Roos in turn two. I'm going to stay with this one that's going into Interceptor Corner and that is uh, Francis Carruthers and right behind him is uh, Steve Humble. Steve Humble does pretty damn well in rally cross as well does Steve Humble and that's the fight the folks at home are watching on their screen right now coming out of the double right hand a sidle sweep down the back main they go the leader has started his final lap the leader is on his last lap as these two are racing down towards turn five uh, Foster with a couple of back markers ahead of them yeah that's the battle to watch at the moment Frankie between second and third overall in this race remember Steve Humble is a class B runner but this is all for pride now they'll accelerate on the gas out of uh, turn five Pertamina Foster on down the straight they will then run across the line underneath the Castrol City of Cape Town at Wingfield Motors Bridge it's going to be a now or never lap for Steve Humble over here as they go into the left hander at turn one they got back markers ahead of them over there as well and uh, that's going to play a huge factor over here because we've got Penev, we got uh, Connor Kilbride and Gavin Erasmus that will all spoil everything as they try and cut through Frankie. Last lap, leader going down the back straight, this is the flag lap, this is Davi Hubert all on his own racing down towards turn five into Fostron corner. He's done a 112.399, car 28, Davi Hubert, and the checkered flag is out, waiting to meet and greet Davi Hubert. To the line he comes, and Hubert finishes this one.
carrying the Wild Rose Gin sponsorship in first position. Well, let's watch them to the end now, Frankie. We have to watch out for the uh, battle down the back straight, which is going to be the Francis Carruthers and Steve Humble battle. But I think Carruthers has done enough to uh, get himself ahead in that second position. He's been second place for all the whole race, I should say. And, uh, well, a last lunge or last battle from uh, Steve Humble. They're going to run it to the line, but I think Carruthers has done more than enough to take second position and second in class. Steve Humble will win class B far ahead of Martin Prince. Here comes uh, the uh, Ray Farnham ahead of Simon, Simeon Pinev. That's the Class D battle. Of course, that will be second and sorry, third and fourth in Class uh, D. And then uh, here comes uh, one of the Wild, Wild Rose Gin cars as well of uh, Gavin Erasmus. And Martin Pugh on the line has got his nose ahead there of Martin Prince as Shelby Canham gets ahead of the Porsche GT3 Cup car. Devon Lusmore yet uh, to finish. There he comes on the uh, screen. If you are watching online, he is coming down the straight. If you are watching at Kilani, and uh, here is the Nissan 350Z, the leading uh, 350Z, and the winner of Class C. I think it was only uh, two Class C cars entered in the three Class C cars. Uh, Paul Beachy had unfortunately had to pull into the pits uh, during the race after having completed four laps. And that's Gary Fourie that uh, will come along in the Porsche, crossing the line, and will finish uh, in the last position, the last of the classified finishers. Yeah, that's uh, in the uh, Porsche Boxer, Gary Furry finishing that race. He's been away for quite some time as Gary Furry, and it's a welcome return for him in Class X, and we know that he is a front runner. The moment he's got that car sorted out, we'll expect him at the sharp end of the field. So that was the Wild Rose Gym Sports and GT race number one.
of Oaks. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, ever since the advent of COVID, somehow we seem to be just losing so many of our own. And today we say goodbye to five icons in different sectors of motorsport. First of all, Basil van Royen. South Africa Motorsport has lost an icon with the passing of Basil van Royen. Racing driver, race car developer, inventor and engineer on Thursday the 14th of September. While studying engineering at the Wits University, he built a Ford-based Formula Junior engine which led him to fitting it into an Anglia 105E and going racing at the then brand new Kyle Army circuit. He went on to win multiple SA championships, competing in saloon cars, Formula One and endurance racing through both here and internationally. He retired from racing in 1981, emigrated to Australia in 1987. He was also a talented and prolific inventor. Among his inventions was the twister, which enables automatic pool cleaners to get into corners and out without getting stuck. Basil van Royen will be remembered in South Africa as one of the great engineer drivers, a giant among his peers and one of the most approachable drivers in the pits. Always willing to chat with brash teenage fans. Our thoughts and prayers are with his wife Pookie, his sons John and James. We wish them strength and comfort in this difficult time. Right, we move on to uh, Marius uh, Bruxma. It's with sad hearts that we say farewell to Marius, a long-standing member of the Kalani family and a familiar face in the pits for decades who passed away unexpectedly on Monday 11 September while playing golf. Motorsport cannot function without the dedicated efforts of the pit crews preparing and uh, repairing cars and their drivers when necessary. Most of whom do it purely for the love of the sport. Marius was one of these. He and Richard Schroeder met during the military service in 1975 and bonded over a common love of motorcycles. And when Richard began racing at Kalani some years later, Marius was his go-to guy for help in the pits. By then, Marius was a successful advocate, but he had never lost his talent for working on cars immensely um, knowledge. He was a self-taught expert on suspension setup and tuning and uh, was both liked and respected around the pit paddock. Richard credits him with much of his success in Formula Supercar racing. Their friendship spanned almost half a century and Marius will be sorely missed in the paddock. Our con condolences go to his wife Monica and their family. Yet another person we need to say goodbye to today is David Krobler. We pay tribute today to the memory of David Krobler, a behind the scenes man in the best sense of the word, who passed away on Saturday 16th of September at the young age of 61. David was not a petrolhead, but he supported his wife Michelle's passion for all things Porsche in every way, always with a deprecating grin and a laugh. He was above all else a people person who could fit into any group and appreciate it for who he was, passionate about food and an outstanding cook. Our condolences go out to his wife Michelle, his oldest son James and the twins Matthew and Nicholas. He'll be sadly missed wherever Porsche people get together. And then another icon in SA Motorsport, uh, Chalso Scribanti. A legend has fallen with the passing of Charles Oskrabanti on 11 October 2023, leaving behind a massive legacy for his sons to follow. The son of Aldo Oskrabanti Sr., after whom the famous racetrack in Cabeja, formerly Port Elizabeth, is named. Charles was an avid supporter of sons Silvio and Aldo's racing careers, which saw the Cabeja kart circuit named after him. Charles raced He's a Scribanti Concrete Lamborghini Hurricane GT3 in the Eastern Cape Saloon Car Championship, which he won in 2022, fulfilling a long-held ambition. He always stepped up to the plate to invest in motorsports infrastructure without any consideration for reward. 
He will be fondly remembered by his friends and racing rivals as a tough but fair competitor and gentle guiding hand to his two boys, a motorsport legend and a great businessman. We extend our condolences to Chelsea's family and friends and our thanks to Eric Bass for these words of tribute to a giant of motorsport. Last but not least, one uh, of our closest, David Wenzel. There's a big gap in the pits at Kalani this weekend. As a bid farewell to one of uh, local motorsport's most enduring supporters, Divan Wenzel's father, Wim Davi, who passed away in the early hours of uh, Tuesday, the 17th of October. Wim Davi had no background in motorsport, but he wholeheartedly supported his younger son's racing career from the very beginning. When Divan began racing karts in the early 1990s, the almost every category of racing at Kalani. He was always there in the pits at every event, ready with a helping hand, always asking the right questions. He was Divan's confidant, team manager, spotter, and most of all, best friend. From the early days, he took on the job of keeping Divan's race vehicles immaculately clean and shiny, which earned him the nickname Mr. Min among Divan's pit crew. He will be sadly missed by the racing fraternity at Kalani. Our thoughts and prayers are with Divan, his mother Marina, and older brother Jean in this sad time. Folks, we ask you all to stand, remove your headgear for a minute of silence for Basil van Royen, Marius Brooksma, David Krobler, Kelsey Scribanti, and um David Wenzel. Thank you, folks. This meeting is dedicated to these gentlemen, their untimely passing. David Wenzel, Kelsey Scribanti, David Kobler, Marius Brooksma, and the iconic Basil van Royen. May they all rest in peace. Now, I remember seeing a David in the pits when I started uh, commentating carts, and he was always there with a divan, and from then already, now I'm going back to 1994-95, uh, he was known as Mr. Min in uh, the uh, karting uh, paddock. Um, as the uh, tribute goes, always keeping the carts clean, clean, clean. And uh, that nickname of Mr. Min started way, way back here in the mid-90s already for uh, Wim Davi.
Well, we're going now to the Bridgestone the Super Twin Cup 650s and the Super Sport 300s for their race uh, one of the day. And remember, three bike classes, three bike races, I should rather say, with multiple classes. And uh, the first of those races coming out right now as uh, it's quite a, a little field. We have uh, three ladies in this class as well. Um, Wayne Arendt uh, was uh, reminding me earlier on to look out for the ladies uh, in this class. Elmay Mostert uh, is uh, one of them. And uh, of course we have uh, in uh, this, uh, let me just get uh, my bearings here. It is going to be Megan Hall, who's Jamie Hall's uh, sister. And then Abigail Bosson, who uh, raced at Imola not too long ago and did a fantastic job of it. She is also in this race as well. Going to be starting inside the top uh, 10 in 8th position. But it's going to be a 9 lap race. They're doing their sighting lap now. To get uh, to the grid. And uh, then we'll be ready to go for this combined 650 and 300 class race. Two classes in one race. So yeah, as we have them uh, all out there, Paul Medell on the track back, Kawasaki ER, ER6 and uh, Peter Hill in Suzuki, Hillbilly Racing, Trevor Smith and uh, Garrett Goss both on Yamahas, uh, Livingston Baths uh, Yamahas, Stavra Michel saw him down earlier on in the uh, pit lane having a bit of a relax uh, just uh, in between the qualifying sessions, ballistic uniforms and apparel. He is on the uh, SV650 Suzuki. Ryan Kutsia on his Quacker, the ER650 Project 60 racing team. Nigel Everts on his Suzuki. Jamie Hall on uh, the MGA racing Kawasaki. Nicholas Hutchings, uh, we were talking earlier on, he was going to be on an HSC racing machine. He's going to be actually now on the uh, Project 60. Uh, racing machine so uh, if we we're just got to keep our eyes peeled uh, for a, a different livery out there for Nicholas Hutchings Braddon Hutchings uh, on the ER650 HSC racing bike Michael Reifarth on Team Bulldog Racing Team Bulldog Racing uh, Kawasaki Yamaha Livingston Baths Gavin Smith Lance Jonas the Samurai Racing 1X and Livingston Baths he's on his Suzuki Keegan Wasserfall on the Quacker Matthew van Nikak on his Suzuki Bulldog Racing. And we look to be getting onto the grid now for the start uh, of this race. Van Nikak, 92, in position on the front row of the grid. Then it's going to be uh, the 32 of uh, Kutze. Kutze, rather, I should say. Jamie Hall will falter into the second place position. There we go, on that black uh, machine. And of course will be the Suzuki Bulldog racing bike but uh, looking at how things are standing Solomon Adrian Solomon on his Ninja 400 Kawasaki Pool King ULAG and Western Cape uh, uh, machine he is going to be the pole man in the 300 class and Bosson will be second in the class 51 bike Raymond Alexander in that uh, group as well as they all get into their various positions Right, so um, we'll have a look and see. We'll have the 650s ahead of the Power Sport 300s. 
Pole man in the uh, Power Sport uh, 300s will be the number four bike of Aidan Solomons in the Kawasaki Ninja 400. He will be the man that's there in pole position on his inside. Will be the 20 of Garrett Goss and then the 74 of Braden Hutchings. Matthew van Niekerk is in there as well, but the man that's on pole is Ryan Kutsia for uh, Project 60 Racing Team. That is uh, Trevor Westman as the motorcycles uh, line up. Jamie Hall will be there in second pole on the front row on the inside of the 92 uh, Bulldog Racing's Matthew Fanica. Well, Frankie, we look to be ready to go. The bravest man in motorsport runs out of the way. Go with the wind there, John, and away we go, Frankie. Off the line they go on a lovely, lovely start here. Off the line by the man that sits out there in pole. That's Kutsia. Did he get the whole shot going down into turn number one? I think he has. I think Ryan Kutsia has hung on to that uh, pole as they work their way out of turn number one. Down the Jubair straight they go. Racing towards turn two. Jamie Hall will still be there in that second position. And is Fandikak still there in third? as they work their way out of Castrol. Yes, I think uh, Matthew still sits there in that third position in the 650s as they work their way through the kink and down towards turn three interceptor. Yeah, it's a good clean start from everybody, uh, Frankie, through the kink, as you said, there through interceptor corner, turn three, and on to the Tigerberg straight now. We'll be able to pick up from everybody who sits where on uh, this uh, first bike race of the day, in this first bike race of the day. Down the back straight, we then run towards turn four by Pertamina Fastron. Yeah, the first three are still the same as they make their way in there. That's a 650 class that's making its way down into turn number five. As a matter of fact, uh, in P6 overall is Aiden Solomons, and he's the first of the 300s, and he's right in there with his 650s as lap number one is in the bag. So lap one of nine uh, will then take uh, across the line. Yes, uh, the uh, leader will be uh, then uh, Kutsia and Hall. 1.3 seconds uh, between the two of them for Nikak. The two Hutchings, uh, of course, Nicholas first and then Braden Hutchings. Yes, Frankie will take the 650. Solomon is in sixth as Frankie has been saying. 1.4 seconds off of uh, Braden Hutchings. And uh, then ahead of Paul Medell, but uh, Bosson, Happy Gal Bosson, still second in class. One, point f uh, one, sec one tenth of a second off of Paul Medell in eighth position right so out of turn number two they come now working their way through the king towards interceptor and it's all about ryan kutsia that sits out there in p1 jamie hall is in that second position matthew van Niekak sits out there in p3 but he has got uh, nicholas hutchings that's in that fourth place and he's not far behind him as they work their way through turn four out of a silo sweep they go down the back main is keep an eye on Hutchings where is he there he comes down the back main and he's hunting down uh, Fanikat as they race down towards turn five yeah, uh, Solomon at the moment is two tenths of a second as he crossed the line ahead of Paul Medell. Paul Medell then uh, one tenth of a second ahead of Bosson, who in turn is uh, ahead of uh, Smith by seven tenths of a second. Raymond Alexander down in 13th position, but third in the 300 class. Then Max Munton in, 70, uh, in uh, 17th position of bike number 84. That is the top four in the class. Frankie, I see Ryan Kutsia has come through, putting the fastest lap. He has indeed, but I'm watching here for Hutchings, for Braddon Hutchings. He is right there on the case uh, of, uh, of Medell as they make their way out of a turn number one. So it is a massive, massive fight there as uh, they head into turn number two into Castrol Corner. I see uh, Bosson uh, in the 300 class has closed to within five hundredths of a second of Adrian Solomon. She is pushing incredibly hard here and uh, it is of course now going to be uh, that experience from uh, Imola that uh, she's going to be uh, to give, using to good use of it, putting to good use I should rather say. They are ahead of now of Nigel Everts as uh, things stand as uh, the uh, crew go down uh, that uh, back straight now towards uh, the turn five Pertinina fast run side. When they cross the line it will be six laps left to go. Right, down the back main they go. You see them race down the back straight. The leaders are heading into turn five. As they come out of turn number five now, there's a lot of them going down the back straight. But coming out of Fastron Corner, towards us, Ryan Kutsia. 
out there in P1. He is the quickest man with the 122.496. Does he better that? Yes, a 122.012 by Kutsia. And then Jamie Hall right on his case, followed there by Nicholas Hutchings. And uh, then it is Matthew Van Nicker. Right behind him is Paul McDowell. And on his case is Braden Hutchings. Just trying to pick up here now the uh, battle between Solomon and Bosson and Frankie. Half a second in it between them as they go into turn one now. Uh, the uh, number four Solomon, number 51 of Abigail Bosson. They've broken the gap three and a half seconds uh, from uh, Nigel Evers. The two Smiths uh, behind them, the uh, number 13, uh, as I say, over there. I'll just uh, try and pick that one up there as well. But uh, that, of course, is six laps left to go, including the one they are currently on. Ryan could see a 122.0. 1-2 uh, is the fastest lap of the race so far. Right, where are the leaders? They're making their way down the back straight. And he is just disappearing down the road. There is Ryan Kutsia of uh, Project 60 Racing heading into turn number five. Working his way through Pertamina Fostron. Out of five he comes. And he's done a 122.012 on bike 32. Your leader, Ryan Kutsia. Here he comes under the city of Cape Town Bridge all on his own Jamie Hall is there in that second position and Jamie's in trouble he's been caught here by Nicholas Hutchings Nicholas Hutchings is right on Jamie Hall's case as they head into turn number one five laps left to go just taking a look at how things stand at the moment in the 300 class Solomon and uh, uh, boss on five uh, hundredths of a second between the two of them half a second exactly as they crossed the line earlier on Raymond Alexander finds himself down in 16th position but third in the class on bike number 11 then Max Munton ahead of Robinson two tenths of a second Solomon and boss on into turn one now they go by so quickly over there as well out of turn one onto the Joubert straight as they then run if I look at the gap between them is now eight tenths of a second and then they'll stop now there was a break into turn uh, two Castro corner and they've come by uh, they're coming up the field a little bit looks like it over here because they've got quite a number of bikes in between them right back to the 650s and the leaders overall and in class heading towards turn five into foster on corner they've got a couple of slower riders that they are busy catching and let me tell you this is fight for second he's not done the fight for second is going into foster on corner jamie Hall has got nicholas hutchings crowding his back wheel as they make their way out of a turn five out of foster the leader crosses the line here we go this fight for second and third jamie Hall, nicholas hutchings racing down towards turn one hutchings up on the inside Hutchings has got him. Hutchings nails him going into turn one. Yes, he stays ahead there of Jamie Hall. But Jamie Hall will try and fight back at the exit of turn one. But Hutchings will hold that position. On the main straight now, we just uh, wait uh, for Solomon and Bosson to come up now. Eight tenths of a second between the two of them. They'll be coming through uh, shortly uh, just behind this gaggle of... Uh, of 650s here yeah, they come across the line now between them is now one second so Solomon has just really turned it open open up the wick turn up the wick as you may and uh, they're still there between them is Goss at the moment only uh, 12 thousands of a second between himself and Solomon as they cross the line Everts outside of the, uh, the top 11 Alexander still 1.6 seconds off of uh, Michael Michel so Stavre Michel at the moment now is five uh, uh, five, f f five hundredths of a second, sorry. Well, I'm watching this fight going down the back straight there. That's a one, four, second and third in class. And overall, they've got two back markers ahead of them. Ahead of those back markers is your overall leader. And that is Ryan Kutsia. He's picking off a couple of back markers as well, is Ryan. As he comes down to start another lap. And Jamie Hall and Nicholas Hutchings. They are basically side by side as uh, it is now Hutchings that's ahead of Hall going into one. We've got two back markers behind them and then we wait for the rest of the field to come through under the city of Cape Town Bridge and it is pretty intense out there as they come through and uh, Paul 
Medell is right on the back wheel in turn one of the 92 machine of Matthew van Eker. Yeah, three laps left to go, including the one that has been started now by the leaders. Brad Nutchings comes through uh, this position now in the, uh, on the 74 bike. Uh, in sixth position, Smith uh, will be just ahead of Solomon. Nine tenths of a second it was, but it looks like Goss has got past Solomon once again into the top eight. Solomon now nine tenths of a second between himself and Abby Goldbosson. They came through the line now and uh, already open up onto this third last lap of the race. Alexander, though, has gotten ahead of Michael Reifard again and then he's now just off of uh, Stavro Michel who I'll just find out for you now when they cross the line now it is now 1.7 seconds between Michel and Hill but then Alexander three, uh, three tenths of a second back right the leader is making his way out of a turn number five out of fast run corner here he comes towards us now project 60s Ryan Kutsia Storming down into turn number one is another quick lap. No, it's still a 122.019. And then we've got uh, Nicholas Hutchings, Jamie Hall going into turn one. And I want to see this fight between Fanikat and Medell. We've got a couple of back markers that's coming past us now under the city of Cape Town Bridge. And here we go. And now it is Fanikat that is ahead there of Medell as they work their way into turn number one. Penultimate lap of the race and uh, Solomon the last time around in the 300 class nine tenths of a second ahead of Abigail Bosson. Let's watch them come down now towards the uh, line and uh, if you take a look at them now the uh, number four ahead of the 51 I think she keeps it outside no seven tenths of a second so she closed up by two tenths of a second Abigail boss on a 128 six to the 128 nine of Solomon as they come through in ninth and tenth overall they've only got this one and the next one left to go they've left Vassafal behind a 650 leader going down into turn number one all on his own not that far ahead though he's uh, should i say behind him is that fight for second and third here he comes towards us now he'll be making his way towards the bridge here he goes under the bridge now does your leader ryan could with one more lap to go and the fight is on nicholas hutchings into turn one versus jamie hall right on his case is jamie hall but now hutchings begin to pull away from hall as they head into turn number one into holes then we've got a bit of a gap there was a bike slowing down going into the pits and here comes this fight here comes this one between matthew van and paul medell as the two of them work their way into turn one and not far behind them will be the should have been the night the 74 bike of uh, Braddon, but I didn't see him come through uh, at this point. Solomon leading the 300 class, seven tenths between himself and Boss on the last time around they crossed the line now. How close is it as they come to the line now? And it looks like a little bit ball now. It looks like he's responded as Solomon to one second. So he's been quicker by three tenths as he starts this last lap of the race then alexander still hanging there in 16th in third in class robinson up into the fourth position in 19th court service note munton and hall all rounding everything off in the 300 class right the leader should be making his way towards a turn five out of fast run corner a couple of bikes making their way around to start their final lap and the checkered flag is out for this man ryan kutsia that comes home first he will finish his race and it's going to be pretty close but Nicholas Hutchins gets to the flag just ahead there of Jamie Hall. And now we're going to wait for the next uh, rider Frankie, to come through. Yes, Rider down in turn two at the exit of turn two. Tiny's got the binoculars out. It looks like the rider is up. The marshals have helped him. And uh, it's close to the line and Paul Medell will get to the line just, just ahead there of Matthew van Nikar. Just a uh, handful of uh, bikes still to come through here. Smith and Goss of the 650s. And then we have the 300 class uh, top two coming through. Solomon and Bosson were one second uh, between each other the last time around. And it had been closer than that during the uh, battle for the, uh, the race. But uh, let's see them come through now. Yeah, they are coming. It's going to be Solomon that takes the victory in the 300 class. And it's going to be by uh, more than a second, I'll tell you that much. And uh, that's now going to be, oh, okay, seven tenths. Actually, it's less than a second. Vassafal comes through. Then uh, Bosson, I think. Wait a minute. 
That's Abigail. That's Abigail. Abigail that went down. My apologies. Yes. Uh, no, no. You couldn't apologize for that. <laughs> we just saw what drop down the leaderboard. So it is definitely Abigail that uh, chucked the bike at the scenery at the exit of Turn 2 Castro. Man, she was pushing quite hard, I would think. And also this wind didn't help her at all. And uh, it looks like she's up. The marshals have done some good quick work. Always commend the Kilani marshals for doing an outstanding job. And uh, they'll rest that bike on the advertising boarding in Castro Corner. Right, so in the 650 class, it is Ryan Kutsia P1 from Nicholas Hutching second, Jamie All third, four and five is Paul Medell, followed there by Matthew van Niekerk. And uh, Byron in the Power Sport 300. Yeah, that is Adrian Solomon that will take the uh, win there. And uh, ninth overall, Alexander will be gifted the uh, third position. That's but Raymond. Raymond, yes. Uh, Raymond Alexander, bike number 11. And uh, Raymond Alexander, of course, that's the Kawasaki Ninja. Uh, Boson, at the moment, might still get third position in this race. I think she has. Yeah, she has. There's nobody fact. else out on track. Yeah, I think everybody is a lap down uh, after that. So, uh, Robinson... Uh, the number 71 bike, Mitch Robinson, on the 399 uh, Quacker, is fourth. And then uh, the likes of Kotze, Reina Kotze, also finishing fifth. Here she goes. Okay, good. She's back up and running again. She still gets a third place, but uh, she'll be kicking herself to uh, not getting that second. And she was pushing very hard. Uh, Solomon had his work cut out for him. Well, just taking us uh, through our program uh, for the day uh, again, we just had the Bridgestone Super Twin Cup 650s and Super Sport 300 motorcycles, and uh, we move on to the Superbikes, Superbike Challenge Masters and the 600s, and then the last of the bike races for the first half of the program, which would be the South Motorcycles, Clubman's Classic Superbikes Breakfast Run Motorcycles, and then uh, the Pirelli V8 Masters will uh, round off the uh, pre-lunch events and uh, then the lunch of course is the fan walk for the uh, alert engine parts gti challenge they'll be on the porsche straight or the main straight on the grid and then the clubman's the uh, of course uh, will be on uh, the uh, thermo fires clubman's will be on the tigerberg straight which is between uh, turns uh, three and four if you are new to kilani and if you are here at kilani remember we have a uh, worldwide audience on the line through IMUSAT, thanks to IMUSAT, and we looked like we got our issues sorted. The wind has been playing havoc with the cameras, and uh, we can now follow uh, intri intricately uh, what is going on today. And then, of course, after that lunch break, we'll start again with the Alert Engine GTI Challenge, because they will be on the grid, and then that second part of the program will be well and truly underway. 
Well, I want to say a big thanks to all our sponsors here. The biggest thanks to uh, Johnny van Kerk, Mr. Johnny Wingfield himself of Wingfield Motors, the 10th year that uh, they are sponsoring here. Uh, and the best price for my car. A massive, massive thanks to Johnny van Kerk. A uh, big, big thanks to uh, Pert Amina Fostron for a turn five to uh, the Porsche Club for the main straight to Castrol for turn two for the bridge and uh, for the tower to uh, Interceptor Shoe for turn three to King Tony Tools for the bridge a massive massive thanks and then a big big thanks as well to the city of Cape Town they are massively involved at Kalanya. Big thanks to all of them. And then a big thanks to Smile 90.4 FN, the official media partner of the Western Province Motor Club. And they say playing more 80s than anyone else in Cape Town. And then Byron, all our class sponsors for all the different classes that are out there today. And uh, we start off with uh, the... Um, i just find them in the program. The V8 Masters is sponsored by Pirelli and uh, Alert Engine Parts does the GTI Challenge but they've also got a couple of product sponsors on board as well. Hydrocore Hydraulics, Authentic Autos, previously known as CheaperCars.co.za, Spice Mecca and then Mr. Zaki Hendricks of Wheel Works Mags Repairs. Yes, we have the Louder uh, sponsoring the Classic Cars and Thermo Fires sponsoring Clubman Saloon Car Racing, Wild Rose Gin uh, sponsoring the Sports and GT Cars and then Bridgestone with the uh, Super Twin Cup uh, 650 and uh, Super Sport 300 motorcycles, the uh, South uh, of course the uh, proud sponsors of the uh, Clubman's Classic Superbikes and Breakfast Run motorcycles coming out and uh, we do now have the Superbikes, Superbike Challenge Masters and 600s coming out and uh, not a, a very big field. Kewan Sneeman will be the man on uh, what will be pole position, having uh, recorded a 112.764 in qualifying. He will then uh, be on uh, the uh, the superbike, uh, the Honda Fireblade, uh, and he'll share the front row with Malcolm Rapson on his Jixa, the Suzuki. Alan Fenter uh, will also be in the Alan Jan Fenter on the Kawasaki ZX10. Alan John, sorry, it says Jan uh, over here. Sorry, my apologies, everybody. And uh, yes, that will be row one. Tristan Pinar, Rob Craig uh, on uh, row two with Brad Bodsworth. That will be the first of the Superbike Challenge. Tristan Pinar is the first of the 600s uh, out there, the uh, Yamaha R60 Stocker Racing uh, machine. And then uh, Rob Craig, like Malcolm Rapson and like Bradley Bodsworth with him, they are part of the Masters section in this race now. But Brad Bodsworth will be the man in the Superbike Challenge uh, on pole position. And that's on the uh, Fireblade, the Bad B Racing uh, machine. I see about in the 600, you've got Tristan Pina, Evert Kurtz, um, Jason Lineker and Slade van Nikak. But if he's here, there is a young man called Kiana Strode mm. and he comes all the way from uh, PE, well Mossel Bay actually to be exact. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Gary will know when we went to uh, uh, Scribanti with the GTI challenge, there was this couple that sat uh, with us by the table having a couple of good refreshments and uh, this lady and gentleman and uh, it is his son Kiana Strode that is out on the circuit and they yield from the Mossel Bay area and they race at Aldo Scribanti. Well, it's uh, just recently that they've started touring all over the country and uh, well, as they said, quote unquote, Kalani is still our favourite circuit. Right, here we go. And it is Mr. Q and Snayman that puts that number 19 bike in P1 and then uh, Malcolm Rapson will be there in second position. On his outside, you've got Alan John Fenter. Lovely to see uh, AJ Fenter out there. That's Alan John, one of our national riders. He's Alan John Fenter. And then 
Tristan Pina is right in there, followed by Rob Craig, and then uh, we've got the rest of them. Byron, the lights are off, and away they go. All right, so Q and Stamon will lead them off there towards turn one, and should get the whole shot into turn one. Will they all get through there nice and cleanly? Yes, they do on this very first lap of the race, but Q and Stamon in a class of his own at the start there. Watch them as they go down the straight now. Will there be any moves up into second position? Not at the present moment. They'll then filter into Castrol Corner for the first time in this race. Remember, a nine-lap race, just under 20 of them out there in all as they rocketed through now into the right-hander at Turn 3 into Scepter Shoes Corner. Well, I'll tell you what, that Slayman's going to have to watch out there for Alan John Fenter because this a man has come to Cape Town to show them exactly what he can do. And at this point in time, out of turn four, out of saddle sweep, but he's Q and Snowman. Down the back main, where's Fenter? Fenter's in second. Fenter's there in that second position as they run down the back main. And Q and Snowman is hightailing out of here because he knows he has to try and stay ahead there of Alan John Fenter and the rest of them. Well, they'll come out of uh, turn five per Tamina Fostron. Then they get their heads down, open the throttle. Underneath the bridge, they'll then run and then towards the line to complete lap one. And then it is going to be Fenter ahead of Rob Craig. Rob Craig ahead of Malcolm Rapson. A great start there from Rob Craig. Brad Bodsworth leading the uh, Superbike Challenge class in fifth position on bike number 41. The 600 leader at the moment is Slade for Nickak. A bad start for Tristan Pinar that finds himself down in eighth position yeah and he was right in that uh, front uh, group as they worked their way around but now there's a group of bikes are making their way out of turn number two out of castle corner and they're all nose to tail as the leader is working his way out of interceptor towards saddle sweep it is the 19 bike the missile motorcycles man q and snowman that sits out there in p1 making his way through turn number four down the back main comes Slayman. He knows Alan John Fenter is right there in that second position. Then we've got a Dice here for uh, third. As they go down, it is Rob Craig and Malcolm Rapson. The two of them are nose to tail as they head into turn five fast run. I think Rob Craig actually dropped a position, uh, Frankie, and is actually carving his way back through again because he's Correct. now in fourth at the moment. Rob Craig will hold third. Coming across the line is Q and Stamon, a 113.816. He's our fastest lap of the race now. Alan Fenter comes right through. Rob Craig, Malcolm Rapson, nose to tail. A tenth of a second between them. Brad Bosworth ahead of Mark van den Berg. And uh, Slade van Nickek having to make do with 8th position now ahead of Q and, uh, Tristan Pinoff and Kiana Strode in 3rd in Class 600. I'll tell you what, it's good to see Mark van der Berg back again. He was out with an injury for quite some time. He had an operation and uh, he works here in Tableview, owns his own business, does Mark van der Berg. And great to see him back out on track again. Currently, he finds himself there in that three four five is about p6 at this point in time yeah it's a very tight battle that uh, frankie if you watch them come through the uh, turn three section now onto the tigerberg straight and uh, down the back straight they'll then run of course seven laps left to go including the one they're on just across the line of course q and stayman is down the back straight now look at the advantage he has over alan fenter it was 3.7 seconds the last time i can only bet that has grown considerably when that honda fireblade the, the red white and blue one comes to the line right now as he does a 113.816 the last time around he fires it across the line to a 113.631 and increases his fastest lap advantage right as they go down into turn number one we see them race their wraps and has got Rob Craig right there on his case and Rob is the lead, second in the Masters to uh, Crab, uh, Craig and then uh, We've got Mark van der Berg and then the 41 bike of Brad Bodsworth is right in that fight as well. And they all making their way out of turn one, that group of riders. You see them there on the screen right at the back as the other leading group works its way out of turn two, Castrol. I think Brad Bodsworth might have made a move, Frankie, back up into position past Mark van der Berg. That's the fifth and sixth place battle. Remember, two masters.
Masters runners as well. So they'll be fourth and uh, third and fourth in the Masters section. Dion Ebel in seventh still at the moment. He's about three tenths of a second off of Brad Bodsworth as they go now through uh, the uh, Interceptor Shoes corner onto the Tigerberg straight. And uh, then Q and Spam are still increasing his advantage. 5.2 seconds ahead of him, uh, ahead of Alan Fenter as Kawasaki at the moment. Malcolm Rapson will be pushing very hard to close up the gap to Fenter ahead of him, the leader of the Masters section and the reigning champion. The leader coming down across the start finish line into turn number one and that is Kieran Snyman as you watch this group of bikes coming out of turn five faster on Alan John Fenter crosses the line then we have got Malcolm Rapson, Rob Craig coming through and uh, then we've got uh, Van der Berg also coming through as well there he's just behind uh, Craig and then uh, we've got Slate for Nikak in P6 and he's leading the 600. He just got past Brad Bodsworth, uh, Frankie, on the line as well. Brad Bodsworth not having a very happy time out there at the moment. Finds himself in seventh place overall and uh, one of the few uh, bikes out there that's the Superbike Challenge. The other one is Daniel Frost at the moment. Wayne Arensa also finds himself a little bit further back just ahead of Wayne Frost and uh, that will be the third place in the Superbike, no, fourth place third place all right on the back straight is our leader now Kewan Sneeman who will be coming to complete his next lap and then uh, it will be uh, four laps left to go including the one who will be starting watch out for that fire blade he rides it out now a 113.631 his fastest lap of the race so far he's improved it every single time not this time though and uh, the gap will still ever ever grow between himself and the man in gold over here it's 7.6 seconds Alan Fenter as Malcolm Rapson comes across the line having closed the gap himself five and a half seconds off of the man ahead of him yeah, Mark van der Berg going down into turn number one and right on his case is a triple one machine there and uh, that is a slate for Nick that sits out there so we'll keep an eye on for Nick he's uh, leading the uh, 600 and he is right on the case there of Mark van der Berg as they work their way into turn two like I say, four laps left to go, including the one we are currently on at the moment. And uh, we do watch the leader come through. And it will be on the uh, back straight now as uh, he runs it towards a turn of five. 7.6 seconds between himself and Alan Fenter at the moment. The turn three is the majority of the field coming through. There comes, of course... Uh, uh, the uh, Q and Snay on a bike, the Fireblade, into turn five per Tamina Fastron. And it will be three laps left to go when he crosses the line. And I'm sure he would have increased that advantage by uh, even more over Alan Fenter as he comes along. Right, down the back moment they go. And I'm looking at uh, Slate van Nikkerk as he's closing up onto the back wheel there of Mark van der Berg. They are in the middle of turn five, Fostron, at this point. So we'll have a look and see, because the man that leads the 600, the young man, Slate Van Ikak, is getting closer and closer as uh, we watch them. There comes Van der Berg, there's Van Ikak, and then right on the case of, uh, of uh, Slade Van Ikak, we have got Tristan Pina, and he sits second in class, and he's closing up there onto the back wheel of Van Ikak out of turn one, heading towards turn to Castro. Yeah, Dion Ebel uh, seven tenths of a second ahead of uh, Brad Bodsworth when they cross the line. That's eight and ninth position. Jason Lineker in tenth position now, head of Quinton Weening 1.6 seconds back. Daniel Frost has just come through fourth place in the Superbike Challenge car, uh, class. Ever Kurtz is uh, still out there as well. He currently is one of the 600s uh, still out there. The fourth place 600 as Lineker is the man third place in class at the present moment. And if you look a little bit further up, it is eight tenths of a second between Slade for Nikak and Tristan Pinar. It is all out battling for that 600 class honor. Here we go down the back main and uh, we might have a change of position there. Rob Craig is under attack as they go down into turn number five. Rob Craig is under attack there from Mark van der Berg. Uh, and, uh, as we watch them come towards us, here they come, here they come, and as you've got him, it's still Rob Craig, 
It is still Rob Craig is more for the back as in there. And Tristan Pina. Pina sits up on the inside of Slate for Nikkei, but for Nikkei goes that position going into turn one. Just, just Frankie, because between them it was one hundredth of a second between Van Nikak and Pinar. This battle is far from over now. Is there going to be another stab at it perhaps? No, not at the present moment. They'll make their way through Castro now, all in the same order, but there is a bit of a challenge right behind there. So watch them as they come out then through the kink. Through the kink they go and it's a rumble in the jungle. We've got a lap and a half to go as they make their way out of turn number three out of interceptor corner. It is a fight for that. I think it's B4. Yes, it is. Four, five, six and seven that you will see now. But the leader is making his way way down into turn five. He's crossing the line now as a matter of fact. Alan John Fenter will be in second. Malcolm Rapson will be in third. And here we go because Rob Craig has been gobbled up by these guys, Byron, as they work their way into Fastron corner turn five. Yeah, I think Mark van der Berg coming through, Slade van Nikak coming through. They're all coming through turn five now and they'll run it down to the line to start what will be their final lap of this race on the main straight now. The 58 crosses the line. Uh, sorry, the, the 96 crosses the line. Mark van der Berg, Rob Craig still holds it in there. Tristan Pinar just ahead of Slade for Nikak as they cross the line, Frankie. Just, just with the one more lap to go. This is the last lap. Yes, we know that Q and Slamer will, will win this one. Alan John Fenter will come second. Third should go to uh, Malcolm Rapson, but that fight that's making its way through Castle Corner now. That is the one to watch. Pinar's in there. Fanny Kark is in there. What a rumble it is out there. Rob Craig is still in that fight. So is Mark van der Berg. The whole lot of them that's making their way with a half a lap to go, Byron, as that group is making its way now towards turn four. All right, let's see them as they come around then. Remember, the leader himself will be coming down, down to win the race. Kewen Snayman will take a dominant victory in this race as he crosses the line and then now we leave it as uh, first and foremost it's going to be Alan Fenter that will cross the line in second position Malcolm Rapson in third position as we watch them come around now Frankie here they come through turn five now there are passes being made over here yeah we've got to first wait for Malcolm Rapson to get to the line and here comes Malcolm Rapson he will finish his race here we go it's going to be Craig from the back across the line and right behind the the two of them will be uh, slight for Nika and he will be just just ahead there of Tristan Pina. What a race for that. Uh I think it's four, five, six, and seventh positions out on circuit. Uh, Dion Ebel also comes across the line in uh, eighth position, but he wins the Superbike Challenge class ahead of Brad Bodsworth by seven tenths of a second. Third place in the 600 class will be Jason Lineker. That will be tenth position. Eleventh will be Quinton Weening. That will be third in the Superbike Challenge class. And then Kiana Strode in uh, what is 12th position will be uh, the number 70 bike uh, the fourth in the 600 class Wayne Orenser coming through in uh, that uh, third last position in uh, on the number 33 bike that will be fourth in the Superbike Challenge class ahead of Daniel Frost fifth in class and then Eva Quirtz will be the fifth place in class for 600s but Kieran Snowman dominated this 9.3 seconds between himself and Alan Fenter at the end of this race Malcolm Rapson was just well he was about 1.8 seconds ahead of Rob Craig wins the Masters section of uh, this uh, event and uh, Rob Craig will be second in the Masters Mark van den Berg putting in a magnificent performance uh, for third position in the Masters Yo, what a race we had out there with the 600s, the uh, SPK Challenge and the 600s. Brilliant, brilliant stuff out there. One more race to go. That will be the South Motorcycles Clubman's Classic and Breakfast. And then we will go to the lunch interval after that. It's only 10 past one at a windy, windy Kalan International Raceway here in the Mother City.
So the South uh, Motorcycles Clubman's Classics Breakfast Run Bikes Race 1. And uh, it's going to be Gerard Frey that will be the man on uh, pole position. That's the Clubman's Bikes, uh, Piers Knut, who will be joining him, Leighton Thomas, alongside him. And oh, there we go, that BMW uh, Boxer is pulling off. That will be uh, the Ferreira bike, Mario Ferreira. And away we go for the start of this... Uh, Combined class race and it looks like it's going to be Gerard Frey will get the whole shot into turn one. There he will uh, take it through uh, the uh, first turn. Holes hook by its traditional name it is. The uh, only proper left-hander uh, on uh, this uh, circuit and onto the uh, Joubert straight now. They will then run a good clean start from uh, everyone. It's going to be a, a nine lap race and into a Castro corner for the first time uh, for the Clubman's and uh, Classic uh, Superbike as well. Sharif Reynolds uh, on the uh, Classic uh, bike there and that's the Ducati 996 but uh, they'll make their way into uh, the third turn on the track which is the Interceptor Shoes corner and then uh, onto the uh, Tigerberg straight before opening up uh, through uh, the Saddle uh, sweep and then onto the uh, back straight to complete lap one surely uh, shortly i should rather say in the near future let's watch them as they go down into uh, turn five per turn mina fastron gerard frey is the man who led them around he was the man who started on pole position he shared that with leighton thomas and willem lowe shandon thompson and uh, jason uh, bulterman but will also be up there as well but look at the advantage that frey already has here crossing the line now the number 21 gerard frey from the Pierce Canute and uh, Leighton Thomas very close together, two tenths of a second between the two of them. Willem Lowe coming through, Jason Bolton and coming through, Sharif Reynolds uh, coming through. Uh, a few of them not registering uh, on the uh, timing screens uh, at the moment in certain sections. But it looks like Willem Lowe will be in fourth and uh, Jason Bolton and then Sharif Reynolds will be the uh, classic uh, bike leader uh, on the Ducati and uh, that will be uh, ahead of uh, Liwani as they go through uh, turn two once again yeah Castro corner a little bit of movement happening uh, down there at the moment if you look at the likes of Liwani and Reynolds and Shandon Thompson also one of the clubman's runners Conrad Mayer uh, the leader in the breakfast run class now Conrad Mayer uh, has on the Suzuki uh, Jixa the 1000cc uh, 
And uh, then Conrad Mayer with Philip Rimmer on the R1. Mario Ferreira unfortunately pulling out of the race uh, on the 1100 BMW and uh, will no longer be in any. He's actually got going again, looks like it. So that mustard colored bike is uh, back out there. But we look at the leader now, Gerrit Frey. He's uh, a, uh, from a standing start. He does his first flyer of the race. And uh, we'll cross the line. We'll take a look at the lap time of 119.487. And the gap between himself and Piers Knut. And uh, it's going to be 4.8 seconds. But it's a very nice little battle over here into turn one between uh, Knut and Leighton Thomas. And I have to see who he got through there, Leighton Thomas. I don't know. I think he might have. There was only five hundredths of a second between the two of them when they crossed the line. On the Joubert straight though, following them, Willem Lowe holding up the uh, fourth position at the moment. Not only overall, but the clubman's class as well. Jason Bolterman and some Keller Luwani. The uh, top six are all, top seven are all clubman's class bikes. And then Sharif Reynolds uh, comes through on the number seven Ducati. Here through the uh, turn, uh, right-hand turn at Interceptor. Turn three it is. And uh, it is still Gerard Frey. He was 4.8 seconds when they crossed the line between himself and Piers Knut slash uh, Leighton Thomas. Leighton Thomas while hanging in there as well and uh, getting past Piers Knut on that uh, lap. Down the back straight we then run to the uh, latter stage of the, uh, the lap. And uh, then, of course, come around to turn five. Pertamina Fastron. Nice views on the cameras over here of uh, the... Uh, the bunch and uh, now to the line here comes Gareth Frey crossing the line now a 120.058 compared to the 119.4 that he had for the fastest lap more modest this time around Leighton Thomas yes got past uh, Piers Knut and nine tenths of a second it is between the two of them Willem Lowe did he try and close up the gap he was two tenths of a second faster uh, on that last lap in the uh, fourth position Liwani gets past Shandon Thompson and uh, here comes Wayne Gress now Wayne Gress is fending off from John Costerman. John Costerman on the uh, on the uh, Suzuki. Uh, John Costerman, the 1100 Suzuki, and Wayne Gress on the R1 Yamaha. He's just been passed now. As they cross the line, did he keep it onto the Jubei straight? I think he did. Coming through turn two, they will now. And uh, yeah, he's right there uh, with him is uh, Matthew Reynard as well in the uh, clubman's class going through that section. Turn uh, four will move in now. The leader going down the back straight already towards turn five, Pertamina Fastron. And uh, Gareth Frey gone from 4.8 seconds to uh, the 6.6 uh, .6 seconds gap that he has between himself and Leighton Thomas at the moment. On the main straight now, it is going to be the leader as uh, we have through turn five. It's going to be Leighton Thomas and Piers Knut as well as Willem Lowe. And uh, they run it down to the line on the main straight then to uh, complete yet another lap here of this race. Yes, five, uh, fifth place goes by some Kelo Liwani will come across the line still in fifth position ahead of Shandon Thompson. Shannon Thompson comes to look at the battle going down here. Conrad Mayer just came ahead there on the line ahead of Shannon Thompson. Jason Bulterman having a bit of a tough time over there being passed by two bikes on the uh, finish line there ahead of Sharif Reynolds. Sharif trying to keep it going there in uh, what is ninth position ahead of Matthew Reynard. 11.2 seconds between them. John Costerman though has left Philip Rimmer behind and he's left Wayne Gress behind as uh, we have William Morris comes across the line. Uh, that's of course on the BMW, but out of turn two into turn three, we uh, look at our leading bunch as well. Gerard Frey, as I've been saying, a 119.948. Uh, the last time around, half a second off of his fastest lap of the race. And uh, well, Leighton Thomas is uh, still hanging on there, 1.1 seconds ahead of uh, the uh, Pierce Canute uh, machine. But down the back straight, we then run. The number 21, that's the on the main straight, uh, is the leader comes through, Gerard Frey. But down the back straight now, into turn uh, five, will be the fifth place battle. We're talking about Liwani as uh, Piers Knut comes across the line. Willem Lowe comes across the line. Then we have some Kelo Liwani that comes across on the main straight, going into turn one now. And uh, then Shandon Thompson will also uh, join them 
in the clubman's class. The breakfast run class uh, leader, Conrad Mayer, finds himself in sixth position at the moment in this uh, race, which is a fine effort uh, from the man. Sharif Reynolds just came across the line. Here comes uh, Matthew Reynard will come across the line and will go on to uh, the Jude straight. But meanwhile, in turn three at the moment, the uh, fifth and sixth positions and uh, seventh positions all coming through that uh, section very close together Liwani, Mayer and Shandon Thompson back straight we look at now and I see Mario Ferreira is just being uh, lapped there as well he's been having a torrid time uh, on the 1100 BMW he pulled off initially but got going again as uh, the leader now comes to the line on the main straight and uh, Gerard Frey will come across with a 119.801, four tenths of a second off of his best time uh, for the day. And then on the main straight, here comes Leighton Thomas now. Leighton Thomas crosses the line just ahead of Piers Canute. He's keeping it to 1.1 uh, second advantage. So uh, Piers Canute is just uh, watching brief now at the moment. Willem Lowe across the line. They all go into turn one for yet another occasion. Three laps left to go as now on that... Uh, Joubert straight, Leighton Thomas will lean in uh, to Castro Corner, right behind him, Piers Canute, as I've been saying, 1.1 seconds between the two of them, that is second and third in the race, Gerard Frey still 11 and a half seconds up the road from the two of them as they head into that uh, turn three interceptor corner section, then uh, behind them the Willem Lowe, uh, Liwani section over there, that's uh, four seconds odd between the two of them, then Conrad Mayer uh, another 3.2 seconds back, on the back straight we then run there, look at how close it is for that Leighton thomas Pierce canute battle I think it looks closer on the screens than it actually does, but uh, it's going to be Gerard Freya that will be coming on the main straight now to uh, complete his, uh, la well, his uh, next lap and then of course start his penultimate lap uh, of the race and uh, Thomas and Canute you see them come there through past the kink and then underneath the city of Cape Town Castro and Wingfield Motors Bridge and uh, between the two of them I think that the gap has uh, grown just ever so slightly as uh, Leighton Thomas and Piers Canute have about 1.3 seconds uh, between each other. Willem Lowe, Simkela Wiliwani, they come through that section there as well on this uh, second last lap for the last lap but one if you want to put it that way, Conrad May is still holding in there on the breakfast run uh, motorcycle. And uh, that, of course, is the uh, GSXR uh, 1000, the Suzuki. Sharif Reynolds comes across the line on his Ducati. We wait now on the main straight for Philip Rimmer and Matthew Reynard to come through. Out of turn two, though, Castro Corner. The likes of Liwani and Conrad Mayer and Bulterman, and they go into that uh, turn three section now as it is uh, right now. But uh, 12 seconds between Gerard Frey and uh, Leighton Thomas. That's the top two, but uh, they are spaced out quite a bit. And there's 1.3 seconds between Thomas and Knut at the moment. Now on the back straight, they'll all run as uh, we wait uh, for them uh, to uh, head to the line to start that last lap yet. Yeah, he started that last lap already, Gerard Frey. Gerard Frey started the last lap of this race and uh, we wait uh, for Leighton Thomas and Piers Knut. They come across the line now then. It's going to be the likes of uh, Willem Lowe and Liwani crosses the line right behind. And then uh, Conrad Mayer and Jason Bolterman as uh, they do come around and uh, start to what will be their final lap. Shandon Thompson does likewise. All of them, the top eight, except for Conrad Mayer, are all Clubman's class runners. Sharif Reynolds, the number seven, the red Ducati, comes across the line now on the main straight, goes into turn one. That heavy crosswind still very, uh, very heavy there. I can tell you that much, and it only gets worse as the afternoon goes on. As uh, Now into turn two. Out to turn two, just want to just look at uh, where our leader is. I think the leader is coming now down the uh, back straight and uh, we'll run it to the line. It will be Gerard Frey, the man who started on pole position and led every single inch of every single lap of this race. And uh, we'll watch him as he comes down to the line now. The number 21 bike on the last lap, a 119.380, takes the victory and... Uh, 
I don't see a, a flag at the moment. I see it's on the screen. There's a checkered flag, but uh, we wait now. Uh, Leighton Thomas and uh, Piers Knut. They should be coming across the line now. Yes, Leighton Thomas third. Piers Knut in, uh, in third. Sorry, Leighton Thomas in second. Willem Lowe on the straight now comes through the line. You can see the checkered flag waving. And uh, it will be some Keller Luani, all clubman's class runners, remember. Then Conrad Mayer comes through in sixth. He's the breakfast club winner, the breakfast class winner. And then uh, Shandon Thompson just comes through on uh, Jason Bulterman. And that is sixth and seventh in the class, uh, seventh and eighth overall. And uh, here comes Sharif Reynolds on the straight now. The Ducati takes the uh, classic class win. And then that's quite a substantial gap, I think, that he has between himself and Philip Rimmer at the moment. Tyler Weber, William Morris and Mario Ferreira, the two uh, BMW bikes have uh, finished this race already. Uh, a lap down, Matthew Reynard uh, comes through in the uh, Clubman's uh, class section. And that's on the Honda CBR 600. John Kosterman on the uh, 1100 Suzuki comes through on bike number 81. And uh, we'll get uh, what is 12th position. And then Wayne Griss comes to uh, round off uh, the uh, finishers on the lead lap on that uh, number 95 Yamaha R1 sponsored by Tony's Motor Spares. Well, Byron, uh, Keanu Strode, as a matter of fact, um, I early on said that he comes from Mossel Bay. He doesn't come from Mossel Bay, he actually comes from Neisner. All right, so they are pretty close to each other, but uh, not that close. Though, because you first got to get through George and then you get to Neisner. But yeah, they actually do yield from the Neisner area um, up there in the Southern Cape and does all his racing in um, at Aldous Grabanti. So good to see the young man racing here at Kalani International this weekend. Yeah, Frankie, they come from far and wide here to Cape Town, uh, not only from uh, Nysa, they come from Johannesburg, they come from Durban, they come from the UK, they come from the Netherlands. And uh, that's where a lot of our viewers all over the world are watching from various points uh, on the I'm You Sat stream uh, around the world. And uh, that's always magnificent. Thanks always as well to those who come to Kilani, but thanks for those who log in. Thanks to those who log in, I should rather say. And uh, yes, this is what we do every other Saturday here at Kilani. This is what we are passionate about. This is our temple and there's plenty of racing still to come. We have the uh, Pirelli V8 Masters coming up uh, next as both their races are before lunch. And uh, then, yes, Pirelli V8 Masters will round off this first part of the program and we will be then going to lunch after that. Where I remind you, it will be the uh, fan walks for the GTI Challenge on the Porsche Strait. Uh, and then the one for the Clubmans will be on the Tigerberg Strait between uh, three and four. Corners three and four, turns three and four, if you are brand new to Kilani. Right, so we get ready for the Pirelli V8 Masters. Uh, they will be doing both their races before lunch. They were the opening race of the event, and uh, they will now do their final race before the luncheon interval. And then all the other classes will follow after the lunch break. So Sean Moore had issues out there in the opening race. Marcel Angel, lap one, turn one, had trouble and had to fight back uh, from the tail end of the field. Um, it was some great racing out there. Fabio Tafani was at the business end of it and so was uh, Jason Ibertson. Uh, Mark Vogert in the early stages in the 29 car had smoke coming out the back. That seemed to sort itself out. And then there was a good fight between Brandon Dean and Ken Finneman. And Brandon Dean eventually ended up on the outside of turn one. The seven car got beached there. So let's uh, look, see what happens out there in the second race for the Pirelli V8 Masters.
Well, Gary Thompson having trouble coming out the pit lane with the 17 car. Well, that is cold tires. And uh, the wind is howling outside. So uh, the track temperature can't be all that hot. It'll be warmer than the outside temp, that's for sure. But uh, just uh, stomped on the loud pedal and just spun it around. And uh, you should be able to get that number 17 car going again. The uh, safety car is there by him. So uh, let's hope he can get that car fired up and continue. But that just happened all unexpectedly. Yeah, I think he wanted to get an early start on uh, warming the tyres up. That didn't work for him. Well, they did well in race number one, so looking forward to this. Fabio Giovanni from uh, Jason Ivertson. Barry Ingle. Barry Ingle had a very nice run. Uh, he did get lucky towards the end with Alistair Brown that uh, fell out of it. And then uh, also Sean Moore. So that did take Barry up from that uh, race long fifth position. Up till third, he was closed down by the recovering Marcel Angel that had a spin in turn one, lap number one, race number one. And uh, he did very well to claw his way back, but also was a little bit lucky with two of the big hitters falling out in the last two laps of the race. Well, folks, uh, around the track, you'll see Marco Retta's car is out on circuit. That car classifies for sports and GT. He's just doing one lap, and then he will pull that car back into the pit area. He's not going to take part with the V8 Masters, that's for sure. He's uh, just having an out lap to check uh, how the car goes, and then he will pull that car back into pit lane. Just in case the folks around the track thought, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> he's, uh, he's just doing a test lap. Well, the folks at home, as you can see, the Cape Southeast are howling here at Kalani International Raceway. Helps you down the front main, as you can see, comes from behind. But, yeah, when you go down the back main into the teeth of the Southeaster, it's preferable to have something in front of you that you can pick up a bit of a slipstream. And that's actually makes for pretty interesting racing frankie because that is actually then a multiplying factor on uh, a bit of slip streaming down the back main it just multiplies it out the opportunity to be able to close up from a distance right the cars line up fibro tofani and jason iberton on the front row of the grid followed there by barry ingold and then marcel angel that had to fight back from uh, the tail end of the field then we got uh, Gary Thompson and then the 29 car of Mark Vogert there on his outside. And uh, Menno Parsons joins us. This man flies aircraft, he flies uh, fixed wing, he flies helicopters, he flies just about anything. He's got a P-51 Mustang named Mustang Sally and he takes part in air shows as well does uh, Menno Parsons. He loves aeroplanes, he loves his flying, he comes from Gauteng and he comes and races V8 Masters down here with us. He's got a UV helicopter as well and uh, this guy is a uh, motor racing and aviation fundi. He's a Menno Parsons. He loves motorsport, be it on the ground or in the air. Yeah, Frankie, I think a uh, day like today, it's more fun to be four wheels on the deck. Hell yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. But he certainly enjoys it, whether it's uh, got wings or four wheels, Menno Parsons will drive it or fly it, that's for sure. So the safety car leading them around. Safety car is making its way out of uh, turn three, out of interceptor corner. I wonder how many of you folks at home watched the uh, MotoGP this morning. Wow, that was something different. But that was quarter past six uh, SA time this morning. 
We're down here at uh, Kalani International for the final race before the lunch break. It was actually fantastic, Frankie, the last four laps. Brad Binder lying in second position, closing down on the leader with a deteriorating soft rear, as opposed to second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth that were all on mediums. Closing down on the leader, lap for lap, 2.4 seconds in the last four laps, but then, uh, unfortunately, from that second position, he ended up uh, with a rider behind him coming up on his inside, and that was uh, him that got pushed wide. Brad Binder dropped from second down to fifth and, uh, well, eventually just fought it back on the last lap. In fact, on the last two corners, back to a fourth position for Brad Binder. Well, I'm on the uh, live chat here and uh, I noticed that uh, Kiana Bald, somebody said he comes from Neisner and uh, then Kiana jumped on and said, how's it guys, it's Kiana here. It's a pity I haven't got a cable to keep my phone charged, otherwise it would stay on the live stream. But uh, lovely to see that uh, Kiana Strode has also jumped on the YouTube channel as well. Right, the lights go off and away they go as they make their way down into turn number one. Through turn number one they go now and it's Fabio Tafani that will lead them out. He got the whole shot out of turn number one, Di Tafani. And is that Ivertson that's going a touch wide? Yes, it is, because he has got teammate Marcel Angel right there with him. And Barry Ingle is there in that second place. Oh, the teammates are going wide. And this will open the door for Gary Thompson and maybe even for Mark Vogert as they race through the King Gaza and towards turn three interceptor. Well, that's a leading car, C car that you're talking about. And, uh, yeah, they are rubbing his racing as they work their way through the interceptor corner and uh, well I think somebody's actually gone off on the exit of the corner yes. I think there's one car that has gone we'll yes, try and pick up right. who that is for you that is Thompson that is Gary Thompson yes and he's rejoining just ahead there of the chase vehicle well, look at this pack as they come down the back main. Oh, they just spread out two abreast, three abreast as they work an old gaggle of cars works its way down into the uh, Cape Town corner Potamina Fastron Look at that as they work their way out. Nothing much in it. Silver and gold class cars all together. Leaders on their way down to turn number one. It's all about Fabio Tafani, Barry Ingle. That was in fifth for most of the race. And now coming up on his inside, that is uh, Marcel Angel that says, hey, last race, I ended up behind you. This stuff ain't going to happen again. Well, they were virtually side by side heading into turn number two. And it is uh, going to be Angel. Yeah, he holds on to that second place, working his way out of Castro Corner. But look behind them coming out of turn two. Here is a right roll dogfight. And it is a Mark Vogert that holds that position with Ibertson right in there behind him. Then we've got Sean Moore. And Alistair Brown is also part of that fight as they work their way out of turn three interceptor going up the hill towards Sardle Sweep. So far better find he's up dusted and disappeared. Then uh, it's Ingle that's got Marcel Angel right in there behind him as they work their way down the back main. Look how far Tafani is ahead of them. That second and third place battle that's uh, got itself now completely devoid from the battle behind that and that massive battle that's going on behind that. I think we need to take the cameras and the commentary through to that. That is going to be a great fight that's coming out of turn five out of put him in a fast run. Never mind first, second and third. They're heading into turn one already. But here we go. Sean Moore, Mark, Mark Vogel and uh, it is uh, right there with them. Ibertson and right on his case and Ibertson locks up. He's uh, Alistair Brown. Ibertson goes high. Ibertson goes wide. That will release Brown. And then Mark Vogel is in that fight as well. And man, it's a battle royal. Ken Funneman is also part of that fight heading into turn two, Castrol. Well, somebody forgot to tell Vogel that he's actually a silver class car because he's right in there amongst the uh, gold class guys. Don't ever forget about the man up front. 
Tafani, he's just up, dusted and disappeared. He's making it look so easy. Marcel Angel, that ended up fourth in race number one, all over the back of Ingle and has now gotten past Ingle as well as he works his way down the back main. Let's pick up that uh, dice down the back main. There goes Tafani and Marcel Angel's actually broken away from Barry Ingle. We look at that battle that's going uh, royal behind that. Alistair Brown leads that back out. Alistair Brown leads that group going into Perdomina Fastron into turn five. Alistair Brown, Jason Ibbotson once up on the inside of Brown and he wrestles Brown towards the outside but Brown will hold. Brown will hold there from Ibbotson. Then Mark Vogert is in there and behind Vogert this is Ken Finneman. Finneman coming through as well and then catching up to the back end of Finneman is the seven car of Brandon Dean and the 55 into turn one of Stuart Spooner and they were side by side coming out of one. Well there's a bit of movement all over in the race right now and uh, Fabio Tafani making it look easy. He's just pulling away slowly but surely at the front end of the back out of interceptor. Turn three he goes. Look at that on that camera shot for the folks that's watching around the world and uh, well they're barely in the same camera shot at this stage of the fight Marcel Angel from uh, Barry Ingle then it's Alistair Brown coming up towards us now Ibotson in the Autohouse Angel sister car then that battle that's going on behind that that's Vogert and Finneman and that's the first and second in class for uh, the silver class then this battle Dean and Spooner that is for third and fourth in the silver class can you watch the 14 car if you can pick it up with the camera there's a lot of uh, damage on the bodywork of the Marcel Angel car as he comes down towards us a lot of bodywork damage in the front end of that motor car he sits there ahead of Barry Ingle as he goes into turn number one so somehow some way there is some serious damage and that will affect the aerodynamics of that uh, V8 Master Mustang Fabio Tafani into turn two, the damaged Marcel Angel now enters turn two, then it's uh, Ingle, he's got a decent gap between himself, the man that did not finish race number one, Alistair Brown, and then the sister car of uh, Autohouse Angel, that is Ibotson. As Ibotson works his way through the apex of the corner, not that far behind him. Mark Vogert having a brilliant ride. He's actually got away from Ken Finneman. There comes Dean and then Spooner coming through behind that. First, second, third and fourth in silver class. Right, so as they're busy making it, I am need to make a rectification here. I said that um, the 69 car was who I said it was earlier on. It's wrong. That is actually Jordan that's behind the wheel of that 69 motor car i gave the <laughs> i gave our friend some serious air time then which he deserved but it, it's actually uh your dam that's driving that motor car that uh, 69 car that's lynch or that is uh, driving that 69 car I just picked it up there on the monitor right now i think that that damage on the front end of marcel angel's car is starting to count against him he doesn't normally have lockups anywhere. He locked up going into five. There you see Tafani going out of shot. The next one coming through. Look at that. That bonnet's lifted up even further. And I do believe that Ingo's actually closing on the back of that motor car of uh, Marcel Angel. And if that damage has been uh, a little bit more extensive than what it looks visually, it could be affecting the cooling on the right hand front brake, Frankie. And that could have caused that right front lockup just a thought yeah it's quite possible and uh, he is coming under attack now going into turn number four into saddle sweep is marcel angel as he goes down that back straight and he is being caught hand over fist here by barry ingle as they go down the back straight he's catching him he's catching him big time marcel angel is being reeled in here by barry ingle as they work their way into turn five into fast run corner uh, you can visually see the gap is a whole lot closer so ingle that they ended up third in race number one with marcel angel all over the recovering marcel angel all over his back bumper now it's turned around the opposite way it's ingle that's closing down on angel and that for second and third in the gold class Right, there are two more laps to go and Fabio Tafani is the quickest man out there, 116.990 and he makes his way all on his own out of turn number two, out of Castrol corner, but let's go back into turn two again because 
It is Barry Ingle that's crowding uh, that uh, rear wing there of the Marcel Angel, Autobus Angel outfit. Through the kink they go. That car is not handling properly. It's not aerodynamically correct anymore. As uh, he must be battling to keep that car in a straight line as they race up the hill towards turn four. Level it up there, the double right hand, a saddle sweep, and down the back main. And surely Barry Ingle will nail him going down the back straight towards turn five, fast run. But Angel will not give it up without a fight. Don't forget about Alistair Brown, not that far behind him. And uh, well, if oh, locking up again with that right hand front, so that's an indication that there is definitely breaking problems starting to creep in there for Marcel Angel in the Auto House Angel car. Right, yeah, they come down towards us now, and surely, surely now into turn one, you'll have a lunch up on the inside. Barry Ingle up on the inside, Angel trying to defend the line, they make slight contact, oh they do touch, they do touch and a good bye Marcel Angel as uh, he spins the car off on the outside of turn one and rejoins there behind Alistair Brown. Yep, the Iwatson, the next man that's coming through behind that, here comes the leader of uh, the silver class, it's Mark Vogut. And then uh, Dean enters the corner and pretty much that gap between first and second in the silver class has remained equidistant. Well, 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 this is the final lap. This is the last lap and we're waiting for Fabio Tafani. Down the back main goes Tafani. He's going to put a lap on Sean Moore. Can you believe it? Sean Moore's woes continue. He's the last man on the track. He keeps right out the way into turn five through Pertamina Fostron goes your leader the checkered flag is out and it will meet and greet Fabio Tafani as he comes around to win the second V8 Master Race and the final one in this class for the day doing what he does best domination at the front as you said Frankie Sean Moore wow it just didn't work for him on the day uh, unfortunately not here comes uh, Barry Ingle to the line and behind him is Alistair Brown, behind Alistair Brown, both these cars are battle scarred. Here comes Marcel Angel and here comes Jason Iverson. Well, the teammates, both those cars have got some serious damage to them. Silver class winner, Mark Vogt comes across the line just ahead of Dean. And then the next one through looks like it's going to be Spooner as he comes across the line and takes the checkered flag. Yes, it's Stuart Spooner from uh, Gary Thompson. Wow, it didn't work out so fine for Gary Thompson. And unfortunately, in that last lap and a half, we lost out on Ken Finneman. Yeah, Lynch or Don finished his race. And uh, well done to the new driver out there in the 69 car. Well, we gave some men a pass and some good air time there. Uh, which he deserved because he's a great uh, pilot and that is the car that he would normally campaign in but uh, not in the hands of uh, of Menno today it's in the hands of uh, Lynch Jordan but we gave him some good air time because he deserves it he's a great race driver and he's a great uh, pilot as well and uh, not in that car today though it is Lynch Jordan that's driving that 69 car
and it's the lunchtime show, which means half the day's racing is done. We've still got a full rest of the day, shall we say, to go. But before we get to the action, we've got the fan war going on at the moment as well. We've got Gaza in the studio, second gear talk show, of course, uh, Kiladi commentator, etc., etc., etc. Gaza, a uh, motorsport in Cape Town has been bubbling. So before we get to what's happened uh, for the first half of today, what's been happening in motorsport world? Because I've been watching your talk show. You've got all sorts of people, Ishmael Peck, from all over the country jumping in. So there's a lot happening. No, there's a lot happening. We've actually been very, very lucky. We are very lucky in Cape Town with all the different forms of motorsport. World Rally Cross, uh, year at Kalan International Raceway. They were year 2017, 2018, 2019. COVID came. The first time they moved out of the European area was, in fact, to come this year to us. Wow. So, um, yeah, the first time they've really traveled. Lots and lots of people here. was brilliant. And I must say, the local Rallycross guys put up a show. Uh, the local Rallycross guys put up a show <laughs> of note. Dex and Ernest and the guys, the E36 boys, oh, yes. class A class, B class oh, C. Yes. It was absolutely brilliant. And I personally believe that that is the biggest advert that there has been for local Rallycross ever since it really started. Mm. Talking about National Auto Tour, Ishmael Peck down in Cape Town having uh, conversations with the guys here, Chris and be It's going to be, be a big one. Remember the last time we had National Auto Tour down in I, Cape Town? I don't Town? remember. When was it? Yeah. It's very long ago. Um, I remember the but Frankie that's mm -hmm. got memory loss um, and a bit of amnesia. He <laughs> won't remember it. So it'll be a first for Frankie. You won't remember that you said I, that either. No, already. hopefully not. But, he, <laughs> but he's going to join me for the rugby this evening. Um, it was amazing last time it was here. In fact, the checks that have gone down is to put extra grandstands up around turn two Castle Corner. Tell me why. I I'm, I'm, haven't seen that event yet, but I'm going to this one. Okay, it's in December. It's it's such a big deal. Everybody's talking about why it's such a big deal. T sell it to me as someone that doesn't, uh, that's never been. You get oval racing, it's mm -hmm. divided between gravel and tar. Mm -hmm. You get different classes. You get the pinnacle class where that's, you, that's you, what I'm you, you put the numbers down. The rubber gets wider, the power goes up, the drivers end up being only the best of the best. You've got... Chris uh, is of course, 50, in the mix there. Well, you'll be one of them. He's yeah. the reigning South African Hot Rod Tar <laughs> Oval Champion. He doesn't but even know how many championships he's won. No, he does. <laughs> he actually caught me out. Every time I do an interview with him, then I, I just add one or two SA champs because uh, 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 I added one this time and it was actually two since I last chatted <laughs> with him. So I think he's now sitting on 20 <laughs> South African titles in all different forms of motorsport that he has done so yeah yeah frankie giving us some of the hot rod names that is going to be mm. down the side never lose small that was on the show last week he actually mm. leads out from his son jason mm. you know those yeah, two jason names Lismore, yeah. um c Ferry jr andre johnson he'll be on the show on tuesday mm. night edwin van nicka kyogen martins and lonica martins his brother Lonic, okay he did miss out one round hence a little bit further down a lot of these the names points. are names you hear floating around in the national series yes donovan Vorster, Vorster. Uh, Motorsport building, motorcars, uh, F. Weidemann, um, it just carries on. Chris Landsberg uh, coming mm. from way back. So, yeah, you name it, it's and all there. Rudy Myberg, who now lives down in Cape Town as well, and uh, he'll be out there. And then also obviously the people like uh, Quincy Vayas, that is, for business purposes, not raced recently now, the last couple of rounds. But seeing it's the last round, it's down here in Cape Town, he's part of the promotion of it. He's actually going to be taking part as well. And you must know, he's not going to come second or third <laughs> or fourth. He's going to have the Western Province flag above the South African flag. And he's going to be pushing. And oh. that's going to be a crap puller of note. I love motorsport events uh, uh, that don't necessarily pull the regular crowds. That get people like me talking like, what is this thing? Tell me more about it. And, and I'll be chatting to the organizers. I'll be doing a deep dive into this event to try and figure out what's it about until eventually we get to the point we all get to see it but back to the action today Gaz what happened this morning how was the morning for you new champions of crown Zaki Hendrix is officially uh, as far as we know the current uh, class B champion uh, Dylan van Eeren is officially as far as we know the current class C champion a lot happened this morning it was amazing what I can tell you is we're not going to run out of wind we've got more than enough yeah, of that we, we ordered extra we're not going to run out of We've got a massive amount of cars in all the different classes. Normally this time of year it slows down a bit and you get less cars. I don't know, people have 
gotten to the point where like it's FOMO, fear yeah. of missing out. <laughs> and it's just lots of Clubman's brilliant. Libra's fantastic. Libra's the strongest season they've ever had, best, I must say. GTI years. Challenge, awesome. Mm. And uh, if we look at uh, the likes of Franco Donadio with 41 cars behind him as he works his way around on the warm up with yeah. your fines and classics. It just doesn't get any better. It, it does seem to me like motorsport has had a massive resurgence. I was chatting to someone the other day. You know, we always talk about the Group N days as the heyday, sat car touring cars as the heyday of motorsport. It and was. It definitely was, when it, I think, when it comes to professional motorsport in South Africa, for sure. But an interesting perspective that was pointed out to me by Claudio Piazza Musa the other day from RDSA is that now, if you're looking to get into motorsport, you can do drag racing, gym corner, stock cars, rally cross, uh, clubmans, GTI, Libre, etc., etc. Drifting, doing, drifting, karting. And you can do it now. You can go get a car right now, go compete in a week or two or three's time. So 2023, yes, we don't have the top flight professional uh, cream of the crop like we did in the 80s and 90s where there were eight factory drivers on the start. The, the landscape has changed, of course. But if you want to get into motorsport, 2023 is not a bad time to be alive. It's never a bad time to be alive if you're anywhere near Kalani. <laughs> Keep in mind for the folks that are outside of Cape Town, not only do we have the Kalani complex, we've got the Zone 7 complex, uh, we've also got the National Motocross down this side, we've got Viscous Oval, we've got Plain Plassey Mega, we've got Main Circuit Karting, we've got the Gravel Karting, we've got three gravel circuits, we've actually got three radio control tracks as well, and in fact there's actually four sky electric tracks in Cape Town <laughs> if you want to go smaller and smaller. And then of course let's not forget the sim racing that you guys have been commentating on I've been I watching that I, I'm supporting Tristan de Nobrega that's my guy the train driver Tristan he's done fantastically <laughs> Frankie uh, dubbed him the train driver there was one race that he had a whole rack packed on stack of cars behind him it was a race that he didn't have time to go and practice before the time and change setups so with his driving ability he kept them behind him and we dubbed him the train driver <laughs> but unfortunately we had to take that name away from him because from there on out he had put a bit more time into the mm -hmm. iRacing and he became one of the leaders up front. But the iRacing, yes, the likes of Johan Ferry, Tristan Can, Nobrega. I, I think I messaged one of you guys and said, is that actually for Johan Ferry? That is the Johan Ferry multiple V8 main circuit champion. Stays legend. up in Palatakluv, legend. He's from the heyday of South African motorsport. Well, I mean, with that production cars, he was here. It's, it would be lovely to have him back on track because, I mean, he mm -hmm. is still heyday as far as I'm concerned. He's not a man of the past. But coming back to Kalani, mm. yes, undoubtedly um, brilliant stuff today. Sorry, folks, for the cameras. Lots of upgrading that's been going down, mm. and with upgrading comes glitches. Yes. But a, a massive, massive input from I'm you set getting it all sorted out. It's just going from strength to strength. I agree. And uh, once we've got all the final glitches sorted out, I believe that Kalani's. Uh, main circuit live stream will go to already on average now eight thousand eight and a half thousand views per race it's an incredible system to and that's to why they got good looking on as well i don't know about that day eh? i don't know <laughs> but the thing is that when it comes to kilani and this event it's a, it's a local race day have you ever seen a local race day that's got this kind of i'm so proud to be part of it to be sitting here doing a lunchtime show with guys like yourself when you chat with somebody like the voice of choice greg maloney that mm. gets to Red Star and Swart Corps and all the or whatever. Everywhere. When you say to him, like, how does it pan out? He finds it very difficult not to just out and out say Kalani is one of the best. Yeah. There's no doubt yeah. about it. He had a lekker time here with the Oryx, by the way. He always has a lekker time yeah. when he comes down here. There's no doubt about it. So we're actually very blessed down here in Cape Town yeah. with what we've got. And the karting circuit is busy right now. Frankie pointed out, Johan Furi, also one of the ex carters here. And look at that. The karting circuit's running right now. Being resurfaced, a bit of problems with the resurfacing got that sorted out national events coming down here with the karting as well drifting with the money that's been spent to, to hold, do the whole drifting pitch. Pitch. and frank and i have in fact been invited to um, have a little session oh. with the spinning and drifting <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> nice. i've had uh, third degree burns on my hands so oh, no. i couldn't do it oh. but in the not too distant future we will be doing a little session down this side why and not that will be going out on the second year show as awesome. well so that's so, a big thanks to faisal and the guy oh faisal from uh, traction
same size. Okay, Lekka. So we're gonna get Frankie in here. Any closing thoughts from you, Gaz, on what we saw today, what we can look forward to? Let's talk about what's happening going forward for the rest of the afternoon. I don't like to look at the past. I like to look at the future. And uh, it's gonna be windy. It's gonna be awesome. Whatever you've got planned for the rest of the afternoon, stop, sit, relax. Let the people that know how to do gardening do gardening. Let the people that know how to wash dishes, wash dishes. Sit down, sit tight, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. There's nothing better than a main circuit day at Kalani 2023. And looking into 2024, we've just got so much to look forward yes, to. Yes, we do. Awesome Indeed. stuff. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Gaza over there, the voice in the tower that we hear so often. Speaking of voices, we've got another one pulling in to the frame right now. Frankie Yunus. I've been told to hang this to you because oh, you need thank it. thank you. I'm so <laughs> thirsty. Thanks for that. Cheers. Frankie, whilst I take my first sip, your thoughts on what happened today? How did the morning go for you? Look, uh, besides for the wind that blew everybody away, um, I think the racing was excellent so far. We still got the second half of the program to go. Uh, the cars on my left hand side, GTI Challenge, they're lining up for the Good Walk. Clubman's guys are, and Sports and GT are on the oh, Tiger Book Straight. Uh, brilliant stuff. Sport and GT, Davi Uber brought yeah, the hill climb he car, car here today. He's testing and it today. just blew everybody away with that. I asked him, how is this thing going to go around the circuit? He said, this car started as a main circuit car. It yes. just evolved to a hill climb car. Hill so climb to bring car. it back here, it's not that big of a deal for him. No, and he was uncatchable out there today, wow. that's for sure. And then, of course, Martin Prince and Martin Pugh fighting. The two Martins uh, having a go in Class B. Uh, all those 350Z Nissans mm. that were out there on J track, Jonathan, uh, uh, of which Kevin well. Lasmore was one of the Connor Kilbride, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Emil Buerta, just yeah, the name, yeah, yeah. three of them. But yeah, it was some great stuff out there, and uh, we're not done yet. No, we're not. Not at all. We're not done so yet. Race one after lunch will be um, Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge. Now, let's talk about that, Frankie. I know that GTI Challenge is one of your favorites. I'm here literally supporting GTI Challenge today, VW today, because I know the two champions could have been crowned, and now it looks like we've got it. Bar any sort of technicalities, you've got uh, Zaki Hendricks, Class B champion at the moment, uh, and then, of course, uh, Dylan Van Eeren, Class C champion at the moment. Sorry to mm. interrupt you, I got some news early on from Emil Brandt mm. that Clinton was having oil and water mixed. Oh no. So I hope we're going to see him out there for the second race, I don't know. Clinton was and saying then, that of course. Yeah, then there was gearbox issues for Marco Busi, yes. which they're sorting out. They're busy trying to replace and, that box as we speak. And for Nathan Victor as well. Jeez. So let's hope we can get those cars out, some otherwise it'll be a watered down Class A. And then also a lot of the Class A guys are starting from the pits at the moment. Correct. So there's been some issues uh, with power and things like that. We don't know the details, but some of the guys are starting from the pits. Um, but that means that the Class B drivers are going to start first, then the Class C mm. guys, and then the Class A guys are going to come through Class C. And, and they've already got the reverse... C and B before they can catch the A guys And they've in front already got them. reverse grids within those classes. So mm. this is going to be an action-packed race. If GTI Challenge is action-packed on the worst of times, this yeah. is going to be mega. Well, folks, talking about Radio Cross early, you should see this guy that's sitting on my right here. I mean... Uh, I, I'm going to go back to the rally because what an event, what Ernest, a you and Dexter and, and, and Kursi Swanepoel all in Class A. Can you believe um, I got to drive against Kursi Swanepoel? And Rina, Rina Adriansa, all those guys, mm. man, if you were... When is my next event? I think it's the... it's next weekend. No, no, no it's not no, next it's weekend. The 11th it's the 11th of yes, November. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's only a half day because there's short circuit in the morning and then there's mm. karting as well. But uh, I want to give the WR, uh, the um, a local rally cross a pint because I want not only do I want people to come and build cars and come and race, mm. I would like to get those stands filled with spectators. Mm. Um, the class A it's guys to watch, is, eh? is incredible. Brian Dark, all the guys mm. that were out there in, in, in class A, and then you've got class B and C as well. Mm. Junaid with the uh, <laughs> Scooby. Which is a very second-hand Scooby now. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go anyway. He made one teeny tiny mistake. Just oh, 
car. And you know when I went through that. Did, call, did you hear the in-car footage? Yeah. After the car roll, you said two words, which I might not repeat no, no, on national repeat television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it, it was one of those teeny tiny mistakes, and I went through there afterwards. And I've always been weary of that corner. It's a new corner for us since for this event. Well, but just you just that kink in. touch that tires, yeah. and it sends the car over. Ah, it's one of those things. And Faisal had issues with uh, with these cars. Well, uh, what gearbox issues? Yeah, clutch yeah. issues, which they're now clutch. sorting out. He's coming back stronger with a stronger drivetrain. I just spoke to him now. So the guys are constantly evolving their cars, and that's what we've had to do over the last year. But it's a fun sport to take part in, but I also just enjoy watching it. And I've been told that people enjoy watching it because in Rallycross, a little bit of rubbing is kind of normal. Look, look, motorsport in general is not contact. Yes. But that doesn't go for rally cars. <laughs> <laughs> it took me six months to get used to the fact that it's okay to just kind of nudge the guy next to you if you have to. Weird. I don't know about Dixies, but Dix and this guy, they're known as the bumper boys out there when it comes to rally cars. It's always a front or a back bumper that's <laughs> off. Always. Even at the altar, I, I, the, on the second stage, I destroyed my front bumper. Yeah. And then I knew, and then Emil just coined the term, and that was it. The name stuck. Bumper boys for life. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're in for a good second half of the day and uh, it's still not too late for the folks at home that uh, if you worked until one o'clock, you mm -hmm. still got a good second half of the day to come and watch it live. I'm watching um, the, the screen. The wind's going to blow you around a bit, oh, yes. but uh, bite fast, you'll, you should be okay. I'm watching the screen over here for those that are at home. You can see that's the fan walk happening now. The racing starts again at 2.30. And there you can see the cars parked along the side. You can chat to the drivers. If you want to go have a look at the cars and go see exactly what it takes to build the car, the fan walk's what it's about. If you're on the fence and you want to know, oh, wow, how do these things look up close and personal, that's what the fan walk's about. Just to deviate off today, um, I want to congratulate Charles Fisser mm, for winning let's the, talk about the, all the champions. The comp, the, let's talk about the champions. The Comcare Polar Cup. He is only the third Cape Townian. Bruce was the other one. Clinton won it, but he won it when he lived in PE. So oh, even though he's a Cape Townian now, no, but he, he moved down. He, he won it for he the, so, yeah, he won it for the Eastern Cape. Yeah. The very <laughs> first Cape Townian to Bruce ever he. win it now was Quissy Vayas. Oh yes, of course. In, 20, 20, in 2013, 13, was it 13? And then 2020 was won by Dario Buzzi. Yes. And then Clinton, yeah, okay, we'll claim him for us. Uh, yeah, he's out and, now. He moved and, down. And he seems now, very at home here now. Yeah, well, this is his home now. <laughs> he's the Western Province now. He's only Eastern Cape. And then of and course, then of course, check. and then of course. Uh, um, uh, Shaw winning that say yeah, he's the fourth then Cape Townian. And, and then Formula Ford, we're talking about Tro Formula Troy Dollar Check. 1600s, yes, first and second. Tro yeah, yeah, yeah. Troy Dollar Check, the champion, and Jason Kutsia. Jason, won, right his, Jason won his first race the other day as well for the season. He said his aim for this year, before the year's up, is he wants to win the one race this yeah. year. He's getting there, he's been at the front all the time. He just hasn't been able to seal it. And then congratulations to, to Jason Kutsia for winning when, that race. When Kutsia won it, he was racing for the engine team for Terry Moss. Terry Moss, yes, yes, yes. So Kursi was the first guy, then it was Dario, Clinton, and now Charles. But so the four Catonians who have won the Polar Cup. But so the Catonians yeah. have always been quick, and, and the main reason for that, I think, is GTR Challenge. Yes, well, and, and, and the karting. Of course, but... And the karting the, system. Of course. You know that Kursi Vaya started racing in Formula M? I want to give Percy oh, a bit of a yes, fight as well. Yes, yes, yes. They bought a 250cc Formula M from, I oh, can't remember the guy's name now, and uh, Hochart, from Andre Hochart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also an ex Oval Track racer driver. And they bought that car from his wife from Lilla Hochart. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then um, Martin put him in that Formula M car, and they were racing on the kart circuit. And I was doing the commentary with the late, great uh, Mr. Brian Peake still. Mm. And the very first time this kid was about 11 or 12 years old, somewhere around there, he goes out on the track with this uh, Formula M car. Never raced anything in his life before. And of course he goes out on the circuit with this M car and picks up problems. Not realizing, pull the car off as far as you can to the fence. So of course he just pulls the car off to the verge of the circuit. And on basically on this side of the track here, there was a van and mom was sitting in the van and obviously had cool Luke and sandwiches. <laughs> and Percy walks towards the fence, jumps over the fence, and they can't get to break the seat and pull down some and say mom. The and the marshal is waving the flag and after the race he went and said, but we're going to try and get further yes, off the track. Yes, he yes. said to me, 
Jou moet oom, ek het nie geweet nie. And that was the beginning of what we know now as the great then, then Pussy Vyas multiple, debut. multiple champion. He made it, I was here for his debut in Clubbins where uh, uh, Saro Fadameva actually pointed out how awesome his driving was because yeah. he was a talent even at a young age. But be, we, we've got to uh, cut uh, the interview short at this yeah. stage. Unfortunately, we've got, well not, we fortunately, we've got uh, our man over here from the bike uh, department. Brad. Brad. <laughs> Brad, Brad is here. But Frankie, thanks for the update. We always no, appreciate no, your time. Always good stuff to chat, yes. any form of motorsport. But, but if anybody wants to hear your voice, they just got to stick around to help us too, because the commentators will be back yeah. then with the racing folks. Frankie Ennis, right, I'm going to hand over to Brad Bosworth. They had a good race uh, just before lunch. Brad? Thank you, appreciate be that. Be red, bro. How long has it been, bro? It's been way too, way too <laughs> long, way too long. I'm glad you said uh, that uh, fortunately you have me here. Otherwise, <laughs> guys, you would be showing him doing push-ups right now with my foot on his head. I'm trying to look as in shape as you. I've been working on it, then I've been trying. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. We're getting there. We're getting there. Brad, are you are you riding today? Yeah, so are we not? Uh, I had race one. Uh, yeah. We obviously did qualifiers yesterday. Hmm. Um, I had a decent race one. I finished P2 in class, um, okay. but I can do better. Yeah. I know I can do better. So I'm a little bit disappointed with myself, but there's another race for the day. So I need to beat the rider that beat me by 0.8 seconds or more. 0.8 seconds or more. So the gap between you and first was 0.8 seconds. All you got to do is either leapfrog him by that much or get some space in between you, put some other riders in between you and him. Yeah. But with the bikes though, the overtaking on the bikes, it's a different animal, isn't it? Because you can't block like you would with a car. You, you actually can. You, you do a very, very nice block pass up the inside and on a motorbike. If you're not the type of rider who's 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 had it happen to you a couple of times, you kind of like you freak out when you're turning in and there's a guy there, you, and you, yeah, you yeah, sit yeah. the bike up and you end up running so far off the yeah, circuit. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of got to like see the guy and go, okay, cool, sit up a little bit and carry on with your with your line. So um, so yeah, that's actually the right guy. The guy that beat yeah. me was in P1, and uh, with three laps to go, he overtook me. And uh, yeah, I just said, <laughs> I just said, you know what, just sit here and mm. I'm just going to surprise yeah. turn five. And I, he went for a defensive line at the inside of five. So I was like, oh, sure, but now I've got to go around, around the outside of yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. But and surely I, you got the run down the straight there. Well, the thing is, is that as I got on the gas on the outside, I ended up on the exit chicane of five. Mm. And then my back tire just went. Whoosh. Yeah, that's it. That's and then it. lost all drive, all momentum, and he beat me to the line. But point eight, not a big gap. Certainly something I'm sure you can work with. But Brad, you know the only reason I get you here is I need the inside scoop, bro. I need the inside scoop. Well, it's funny. We were talking about the wind now, now. Uh, and let me tell you, on a motorbike, the wind. That's like, what I'm hearing. You're going down the track, and the wind's behind you. You're trying to turn into turn three, and you've got this wind blistering you from behind. As you're trying to turn the bike, the bike's not turning, it's just going straight. Yeah. And then you get through it, so now the wind's 90 degrees at you, there's a wall there, and as you get past the wall, the wind yeah. hits you at full force, and it takes you off the track of the left hand. So we're having fun out there. We're slipping yeah. and sliding and, and just trying to keep the bike upright. It's a, it's an, it's added a different element, isn't it? It's a whole other sort of spice to what you normally get used yeah. to. Yeah, and I mean, like when you exit turn one, now you've got this headwind coming straight at you. And notoriously, any bike coming out of turn one, the moment we get on the gas, the bike starts to lift a little bit. We've got to manage wheelies out of mm. turn one. But now when the wind hits you, it actually lifts your bike right up. So now we're managing 90 degree vertical wheelies instead of 30 degrees <laughs> off the ground <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of story. So with regard to the other riders today, with the who are the riders to be watching out for going into the second half of the day? And you can hear the wind pumping outside yeah. at the moment, eh? Listen, in, in, in the SPK and SPK Challenge class, we've actually got some imported guys. We've got AJ Fenter here. He rode the Isle of Man for South Africa this year so he did the TT and mm. he's on the racetrack with us today mm. obviously we've got Q and Snayman out there yeah 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 legend of note um, but yeah we've got Mark van den Berg back mm -hmm. uh, he's out on there as well uh, we've obviously got Malcolm Rapson, but Malcolm Rapson doesn't have his bike because it blew up in the last race. So he's borrowed a ZX-10 yes. and he's out on a different uh, bike yeah. trying to make amends for the championship. Ooh. So it's very interesting that the formalities that are happening mm. out there. It's not your usual standard grid that we have. And this is what I like and this is why we like to have you here in the studio with us because the storylines that you see on the screen aren't necessarily what's happening in the pit lane yeah. because there's a lot of storylines to tell. Everybody's got their own story, whether it's championship, whether it's race day, whether it's my bike didn't make it to the last yeah. race or whatever there's all these sort of stories happening for each individual yeah, yeah. it's fascinating so i mean even my bike i have a ducati 1098 which i race and i have a honda cvr 1000 and i race both bikes i chop and change between them so three weekends ago i was up in pe and i was racing a double header with mrssa and uh, i took both bikes to race in two classes race one on the honda turn one dump the honda 
fine. Race two on the Ducati oh, no. into the hairpin on lap one. Dump the Ducati. So no. I've spent the last three weeks fixing two bikes to try and make one ready for today's race. And, uh, and, and the guys actually finished up my fairing at three o'clock on Friday morning for me. And we made it to the start line. Made it into second place, yep. possibly aiming for the win I'll get at the, the win. end of the. I'll oh, get the win. I will get it, the win. You heard it there, folks, <laughs> from the man himself, Brad. Any closing words from you going into the rest of the day? And, and again, thanks for joining us here in the studio. We love having you. We need to make this a regular thing. Yeah, we've missed out know? on the last couple of ones, but it was yeah. wet weather and you know, mundane reporting. <laughs> but um, big, big, big shout out to my mom, who actually flew in from Durban to come okay. and see the race uh, okay. live and in person, because she normally sits and watches the live stream. Okay. And then when the commentators say, we've got a rider that's gone down, and then she sits there stressing, is it my yeah. son? Is, and I'm not sitting with my cell phone on me to say, hey, mom, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And, yeah. And, and, and that's a very real concern, I think, for the people that are watching yeah. you guys, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's a worry. You know, you never yeah. know. And then you're only going to get feedback 10, 15, 20 minutes later. Mm. Uh, so my mom says, just let me know how many pieces he's in. <laughs> Jeez, the, well, we want you in one piece, Brad. Thanks so much for joining us awesome. again, as always. And we look Thank forward you. to seeing you. Very Always soon. good seeing you, my brother. Like Keep man. up the push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I've got our man Brad over there. Brad Bodsworth, of course, from the bike side of things. And it's such an interesting department here at the circuit. The bike riders, an eclectic bunch. A bunch of guys that clearly like to go fast, but uh, hopefully all of the riders can keep it on two wheels. It's now just before half past two. We're waiting for the all clear as to when we're going to be going back to the commentators when the racing will start i see the uh, r drivers are still you can just get our camera to go to the start line i see the drivers are about to move their cars now off the grid over there and uh, that was of course your fan walk that just took place the gti challenge guys every single race set day that we have here we uh, basically focus on a different group of drivers and today the focus has been on gti challenge of course the alert gti challenge championship classes uh, b and c have been put in the bag yuri swart not here today i saw him on the live stream earlier on shout out to yuri umpi swart who is racing uh, up country at the moment in the four hour endurance race and he unfortunately wasn't able to make it today to campaign his championship he's won the championship before and i'm sure he wants to win it again but unfortunately he is away racing at the moment which has opened the door up for some of the other drivers and that's exactly what they're trying to do is kick that door down but lots of controversy in gti challenge already and uh, a little bit of argy bargy might may or may not have taken place in the first race and now some of the drivers Drivers have been shifted around, some warnings have been handed out, and some drivers actually starting from the pit lane. So I think when we get back to GTI Challenge, it's going to be very, very interesting indeed to see how the grids lay out. Of course, these drivers now have to start in a reverse grid because uh, the top six drivers get shuffled around. Before, they would be given penalty weights, but that's not the case anymore. They would be given 20 kilograms penalty weight, uh, 40 kilograms penalty weight. Now, no more weight applies, and all they do is shuffle the drivers around. So if you won the race previously, you will then start in sixth position. If you came second in the previous race, you will then start in fifth and so it goes on and so the top six guys have been shuffled around which means that you've got faster drivers carving their way through the field to try and make sure that they get to the front this all in the name of more exciting driving so now folks as we head into the final stages of the day what do we have to look forward to well uh v8s are done for the day but we've got sports and gt coming up we've got the rest of the day coming up and the second race in every class so if you're a fan of a specific class each of those classes will run again the only one that won't run again is the v8 masters we already saw an action pack V8 Masters day to day over and over as the guys bumped and barged their way through the field. It's supposed to be the gentleman racers club, but I do think these guys are, are a bit more racer than gentlemen sometimes, but that's what makes it exciting to watch. As I said, it took me a while to get used to the bumping in rally cross, but it does make it a little exciting, although yeah, penalties do get handed out to the bumping, gets a little bit too robust, shall we say. 
Well, folks, I'm going to wind things up. As you can see, the guests have left me alone, and so is my co-host, Dexter Bruce. He's long gone home. Enjoy the racing from home. You can hear the engine starting up outside, which means we're going to hand it back to the commentary team momentarily. My name is Ernest Page, and this has been the afternoon show. Join us again for the final round of the Power Series, which happens later in the year. But for now, let's go back to the action on the track. Enjoy the rest of the day's racing. This page that uh, did uh, the uh, lunchtime show and uh, myself, Frankie Yennis and uh, Gary Fleming was on the lunchtime show with him and Brad, Bod Brad Bodsworth from the motorcycle section was also on it. So here we go. This is GTI Challenge. Uh, the alert uh, power for the Alert engine parts uh, GTI challenge and then of course their product sponsors as well namely um, Hydroco Hydraulics, Authentic Autos, Spice Maker and uh, Wheelworks Mag Repairs. A big thanks to the product sponsors as well as Alert Engine Parts their main sponsor. Well what I'm seeing here is class A, B and C cars all mixed up. To my knowledge, they're going to have to split A, B and C and put them one behind each other because at this point, as we see them on the track, everybody is, uh, we've got Dylan van Eerden, that's a Class C car, that's in between three Class A cars. So, um, they're going to obviously, when they go off the line, I would presume that everybody's going to slot into class A, B and C, so they're going to do an outlap and then they will sort themselves out in classes A, B and C. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they do the invert. I see on our screen going out internationally, we still got the results of the previous race, the V8 Masters. So uh, we can get that off and get the alert engine parts GTI challenge info up. There we go. Wakabusi, Ian Kapp, Dylan Jubei, Klinde Bezaidenhout, Whoa, the very quick Nathan Victor and Kai van Sail and Geldenhuis. It's the back three out of the seven Class A cars that's out there. Well, yeah, they are busy <coughs> sorting themselves out into the Class A cars up front, Class B in the middle and uh, Class C that will uh, join in there behind them at the back of Class B and then they will get them all together and we will get this one underway so yes they are doing the invert because i see dylan uh, jubert is uh, the lead car and the lead class a car that's busy working his way up the tiger book straight towards a saddle sweep as we watch all these cars roll through interceptor climb up that slight hill towards a turn four the double right-hander saddle sweep named after the living legend Mr. Sardel van der Merwe himself as the challenge cars work their way down the back straight towards uh, turn 5, towards Pertamina Fastron corner and then we will get this one going soon. Marco Busi, he's already making his way towards the Wingfield Motors, Castrol and City of Cape Town Bridge and he will have to wait for his other competitors to uh, get there. Marco Boos, of course, the vice chairman for GTI Challenge for 2023, the chairman being uh, Gert Duplessis for this year. I think Marco was vice chairman last year as well, if I'm not mistaken. So. The beginning of car wars? So, yes, the beginning of car wars. Marco Boos, he puts that 41 car in pole man what a long way this young man has come from uh, karting back day back in the day when uh, he was still out there in what was known then as a 60 cc gp junior karts and i was doing the commentating on marco busi he's gone very very far when it comes to motorsport even his younger brother dario that's uh, hopefully will be back in the not too distant future studies comes first <coughs> 
and then uh, as uh, Clinton Mercedes rolls up Dylan Hubert up on his inside Mr. Nathan Victor GT wraps in summit racing there's gonna be I think they're supposed to be pit lane starters yes because four in the ten Ernest said to me there would be two class A pit lane starters, Kai van Sale and Skull Kjaldenes, and they are standing at the exit of pit lane. So I was told by Ernest Page in the interview that two class A starters would start at the pit lane, and there they are, the 34 of Kai van Sale and the 10 of Skull Kjaldenes. See Daniel Muna, the uh, class C entry. I think he was fourth overall uh, across the line in race number one. He finds himself coming out of the pit lane. And, so and Mark Thompson, also standing here in oh. pit lane. Class B car. Heavy stuff. So a couple of spots being held open. But it's going to be great stuff with Boosie and Cup down towards turn number one. Dylan Jabe and Bezade Note alongside one another. In the absence of Umpi Swart, uh, Note has not really been able to... Uh, do anything super major to pick up lots and lots of points today. Well, when this one gets underway, it's going to be interesting to see all the class A, B and C cars must get out of turn one and only then we will release these four cars, two class A, one class B and one class C car out of pit lane. The marshals will only release them then the moment all the A, B and C cars have made their way through turn one holes. Well the five second board goes and off the class A cars go off the line. A little bit less class A cars than what we had earlier on with the other guys that's uh, coming out of the pit lane. And look at that going down into turn number one. There's just four of them that's there together. The Zayn note is in that second. The other two class A cars coming out of the pits. Here comes the class B's. Yeah, and then that other class B car of Mark Thompson gets released behind all the other class A cars in trouble already there for uh, Van Sale. Yes, uh, he also started pit lane. Let's wait for the class C cars to come through. Yeah, they all go and they will now release Daniel Munna to go and join at the back end of Class C. Yeah, Class C down into turn number one and uh, oh, they're all pretty close to one another as they work their way there. You can see a nice big gap between the Class Bs and the Class Cs and uh, the Class A cars are just up dusted and disappeared. We'll pick them up as they come down the back mate. But that uh, Class C battle, Will Fontini being able to get to the front end again. Well, we'll have a look at that now, but we go to Class A. Well, Ernest Page and myself thought A, B and C would go through and then release the others, but they have done completely different to what we have thought as we watch the Class A cars work their way into Fostron Corner. There's only four of them up front at this stage of the game. The others are going to have to play catch up. Coming out of turn uh, number five, there's only one that has to play catch up. That's Skulky because already Van Sale has picked up problems. And here we go. That is Marco Busi. It's a Clinton beside Nope, Nathan Victor. And on his uh, inside is uh, Dylan Jaber. They are followed there by Geldenais as those five class A cars work their way out of turn one. Going back to class B, they're going to come across the start finish line now. Here's the leading class B cars as they work their way through. And Zaki Hendricks has made his way to the front. Oh, he gets nibbled from behind. He got a little bit of a nibble there from uh, Tate Bishop and he managed to recover from that one as they come out of uh, turn number one. Here comes the Class C cars down towards the number one to complete their first lap. Well, that's going to be some good stuff there because it is Mark Fontini, then it's Nur Bus as they come through. Then we've got the 14 car in there and uh, that is, is it the 14 car that's in there? Uh, it's the 16 car that's in there, sorry, and that is Ross Schroeder. And he is in that top 3-4 of Class C. Class C battle working its way through turn two. But the Class A, we go back to that. On their way down the back lane is that Bezade note that's gone to the front. It looks like it. Eventually, with a uh, loose rear bumper at that, nothing much between that group of four. As Frankie said, there's those four and then only one that needs to catch up, which is Galdenes. Galdenes that came out of the pit lane underneath the Castrol city of Cape Town. 
and Wingfield Motors Bridge they go now closing off that inside line to make sure that he holds on to that position is Bezaidno as they go down into turn number one yeah. it's lap number two in the bag and he has got the Nathan Victor right on his case there as they make their way out of turn number one out of turn one they go he is right on his case then we've got Marco Busi and right behind Marco Busi Dylan Jaber followed there by the 10 of Skulk Calvinais he's got a lot of work to do Skulk if you want to catch those four cars coming out of turn two they are absolutely nose to tail and he's under attack Boosie is going for him Boosie is going for him there's always oh, a Nathan Victor that's Victor and they are side by side coming out of a turn three out of interceptor corner man these four are having a hell of a fight as they race towards uh, turn four Sarl sweep Nathan Victor wants to get a clean sweep out of this one through Sarl sweep excuse the pun into the back main they go it's Poseidon that went from first down to third position. It's Victor that's gone to the front. It's Boosie that's in behind him as they work their way past the uh, trees that have been uh, pruned very, very heavily. That's why the wind's coming through so strongly. And down into Cape Town corner they go. The front four, nothing in it. Battle Royal. Let's have a look at Class B going down that back main. It's been led there by Tate Bishop. Zaki Hendricks is in that second place. Then we've got Carl Walsh and right on his case is Mario Rue. That's at first four. Class B cars that's working their way into turn five. Through Pertim and Fostrom they come now. The five of them are absolutely nose to tail. Then it is a Kalfi that is in there. He is in the 14 car, Tahir Kalfi. And he is trying to catch up to the four of them that's racing down towards turn one holes. Wiltshire on that inside line trying to hold out at this stage of the fight on a Zaki Hendricks. Zaki Hendricks now on the outside line. They almost ended up going three abreast coming in there. And Rue dives up on the inside of Hendricks and takes up that position. Let's go back to Class C as they work their way up the front main under the city of Cape Town Bridge down towards turn number one. Yeah, Class C is led there by uh, a bus. He's got Dylan Van Eden right on his case there. Then it's Reed is a Levy. Levy sitting there in that third position. Then it's Ross Schroeder. And then only do we see Faisal Jacobs. But they are nose to tail as the Class A cars are working their way down into turn number one. And it's a hell of a fight up front there between Nathan Victor and between Marco Busi for first and second position as they exit turn uh, five. Fast on corner and riveted to them is Clinton beside a note. Now, Columbus Aiden Oat will not let him get away whatsoever. Up the front main they go. Are they going to go two abreast down towards turn number one? I think so. I would not be surprised if he goes for the passing. Now, Columbus Aiden has got to decide, does he follow the inside line or the outside? Neither of the two just uh, follow through behind them. Let them fight it out. Something's got to give. Well, as they race now towards Castle Corner, watch out there for a Skalke Geldenace. He is closing up there on Dylan Jaber. So we keep an eye on that one as the Class B cars are working their way into turn number one. Then it's a five-way fight there, but it's a four-way fight for second, third, fourth and fifth because Tate Bishop sitting out there in P1 has broken away from them. Walsh sits there in that uh, second position. Then we've got Mario Rue and right on his case there is Zaki Hendricks and Taya Kalfi has joined that fight as well going into Castle Corner. Okay, Gather down. the Class A cars heading into Turn 1. Yep, Sorry, yep. Class C. Here comes Class C down into Turn number 1. It's Ryan van Eerden from uh, Noor Abbas. Then it's uh, Schroeder is the next one. And, uh, well, he's going to have a hard time because Levy is all over the back of him while our Class A cars is going down into Cape Town Corner. We follow through on this Class C battle. The front two very close to one another. It's uh, only... Bishop that's managed to get away from the front of the pack. Everybody else very, very close to one another. Right, here come the Class A cars racing down towards turn number one. That's going to be close. That's going to be... Oh, they're ducking and diving around. Woo! They are doing some suicidal moves there as they go through. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Marco Busi is doing anything and everything to get his nose ahead of Nathan Victor. Victor in P1, Busi second, beside note, is there in that third position, followed there by Jaber and Galdenace, as the five of them make their way out of Castle Corner. But it's a right royal war going on there between Victor, Busi and beside note. Class B going into turn one.
Yeah, Class B going down into turn number one and uh, while the midfield battle is a biggie with Bishop that's up dusted and disappeared away from the rest. Wilcher the best of the rest as they work their way up the Jabez Strait. Yeah, it's Wilcher, it's Aru, it's Zaki Hendricks and Taya Kalfi as they work their way out of turn number two out of Castro. Class C, it's a lovely fight there for first and second in Class C. And it is Darren van Yeren and Rabas that sit there in P1 and 2 as they exit at turn number 1. And they are now ahead there of, uh, of Schroeder and uh, Reza Levy and uh, Faisal Jacobs. That's not too far behind Levy neither. Well, that third and fourth place battle is a pretty good one in uh, Class C as well as they work their way through turn number 2. Castrol Corner running just a little bit wide is Schroeder. Going to have to be careful to make mistakes like that. But the uh, front two, nothing much in it as they work their way through turn number three. Van Eeren and Nur Abbas, the two of them are pretty much locked together. The battle for third and fourth, Schroeder and Levy pretty much locked together. Oh, going off the track was Jacobs. Jacobs ran it wide but got it all back together again. Well, Class A is making its way now out of a Castrol Corner. We've got a change for P. Four. It's now in the hands there of Skull Kaldanais. He's got his nose ahead of Dylan Jaber. Through the kink they go towards turn three. Interceptor corner. Out of Interceptor they go. It's still Victor from Busi from the side note. And then it is Kaldanais ahead of Jaber. That's the five of them working their way out of four saddle sweep. Class B is now making its way into turn two, into Castle Corner. And never mind, Tate Bishop, it sits out there in P1. It is a massive rot going on here for that second position. And it's now in the hands of Zaki Hendrix. Oh boy, here we go. Because Walcher is being hassled heavily here by Mario Rue and by Tahir Kalfi. Kalfi's right in there. I don't think Kalfi fancies ending up where he is right now. He's accustomed to being a little bit further towards the front end of the field. As we said, the only man that's managed to get away there is in fact Tate Bishop. And he's got a bit of a gap between himself and Hendricks. Rue, Walter, Kalfi, they work their way down the back main. Anybody going to go for the dive? Well, if you want to go for a dive, you're going to have to try and go somewhere else because Walsh is closing off that inside line. Yeah, the Class C leaders are now working their way towards Turn 4 as well. And it's nose to tail it's still been led there by Dylan van Eeren and he's got Nur bus right on his case we need to look at them coming out of turn four down the back main they go and they are nose to tail it is uh, a bus that sits there behind van Eeren as they work their way towards turn number five then there's three more going down the back main it is a uh, Reza Levy he's got Ross Schroeder right there on his case and then Daniel Munna is having a go as well there at Faisal Jacobs well the two front Eden and a bus pretty much side by side nothing between the two of them nose to tail they work their way through the bus stop look at the gap as uh, they come now out of turn number five that is Levy and Schroeder then the battle behind that is uh, Muna that's now ahead of Jacobs then it's Ace and Falskank behind that the uh, leaders of the class now down back into turn number one well this is the checkered flag lap we've had so much fun this is the flag lap the checkered flag is out the flag is out and here they come towards us, racing down towards us and the winner is going to be nobody else than Nathan Victor from Marco Busi, Clinton beside not followed there by Skull Kaldanason right on his case across the line is Dylan Jaber. Wow, that was awesome stuff. Let's pick up what's happening down the back main. Here comes the Class B battle. It's all about Tate Bishop. No, it's not. It's all about what's happening behind Tate Bishop. Tate cleanly ahead of everybody else. But here comes the battle into five well Bishop is going to win this one there's nobody's going to challenge the angry racing Jetta 2 of a Tate Bishop he brings it home in P1 but here we go Zaki Hendricks he's being attacked here by Carl Walsh it is Hendricks it is Walsh and then it's Kofi uh, Tahir Kofi that gets to the line ahead there of Mario Rue Utterly brilliant stuff in that class as well. Let's go back to the back main and here comes the class C battle. Oh, let's hope they all make it uh, through that last corner and make it to the line. Class C cars, they are side by side and it is Dylan van Eerd and Anur bus. They are next to each other. Van Eerd on the outside, a bus on the inside. It's going to be Van Eerd and half a car head of a bus across the line for first and second. 
as the rest of them come down towards us. And it is going to be, as they cross the line, uh, Riza Levy, Ross Schroeder, Daniel Muna, who got his nose ahead there eventually, are Faisal Jacobs. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. That was amazing stuff. Alert engine parts, GTI challenge, and uh, well, let's not forget the other people involved there as well. Hydrocar Hydraulics, Authentic Autos, Spice Mecca, and Wheelworks Mag Repairs that are all part and parcel of making the Alert Engine Parts GTI Challenge what it is. What an amazing series. What a great size field. Class A, magic. Class B, awesome. Class C, even better. Well, we are going now to the second race of the uh, Formula Libre single seaters. And uh, yes, it is the winner from race one, DJ Boyson in the Reynard Formula VW that sits on pole position with his fastest lap of 118.276. Darren Liebenberg, who had that very early battle with uh, Boyson in that first race, uh, will uh, have, of course, a best time from that race of 121.730. 
and that would put him second on the grid. And of course, two different classes, of course, two different kinds of cars, uh, Formula M versus a Reynard Formula VW. You can't even classify them in the same class as each other. What a lovely dice we had there between um, Donovan Ramsey and Ricky Anderson. That was a great dice there between the 95 and the 96 cars earlier on as well. So let's hope that continues. Kelly Fletcher never had a good outing. No. She really, according to her standards, it just didn't work out for Kelly. Um, then, of course, we had a Munson that ended ahead of all of them. And ahead of a Munson was uh, Rayno Pence in that uh, opening race for the Formula Libra single-seaters. And it's a pity we haven't got the likes of Andrew Rackstraw and uh, Byron Mitchell here today to uh, spice it up with uh, DJ Boyson and even Storm Lanfear, who also didn't do too bad at uh, the Nationals at SWAT Corps uh, last weekend. Oh, like I was saying, Frankie, I uh, hope for 2024 we can have maybe a boost in entries and uh, possibly a sponsor for the class. One of the few classes here today that doesn't have a sponsor. And while we're talking about, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, while we're talking about single-seaters, um, I mentioned it in the interview that we had earlier on with uh, Ernest. Congratulations, George Olicek, Formula 1600 champion for 2023. Well, he crowned that year in Cape Town already. And then officially second, Jason Kutsia. So the Cape Townians are uh, doing a 1-2 in 2023 for that. Congratulations to them. And then also from a Cape Town point of view, well done, Charles Fisser, the Comke uh, Polar Cup champion, which will make it the fourth champion from Cape Town because we will claim Clinton as our own now. Yeah, it, well, all of them, all stars on the karting circuit have come through the ranks quite nicely, eh? Well, except Kursi, he came through the Formula M ranks. But yeah, either Formula M or karts, that's where your champions are born. Yeah, it uh, just shows you that uh, there's a lot of talent not only in South Africa as a whole, but Cape Town specifically. And uh, well, I uh, love the fact that they all come back here uh, and race as well whenever they can, uh, because they love their home, they're passionate about Kilani, and it's great uh, to have our champions uh, being crowned uh, around the country. I'm noticing that uh, DJ Boyson has probably opted to start from pit lane, because he's in the pits as the lights go off, and they all work their way into turn number one, they are holding DJ, they're holding him, and they're going to tell him he can go. Well, they're telling him he can go. He wants to go when he feels he's ready. He wants to give them a decent start. And off he goes. So he's the only class S car, and he pulls out of pit lane now. So as we see them going into turn two, it is a Darren Liebenberg that leads him out of turn two with uh, Zayna Munson in that uh, second position. And it looks like it may be Donovan Ramsey that is there in that third place. It is Donovan Ramsey uh, in that third position. And then Ricky, is that Ricky Anderson? It is Ricky Anderson that sits there and uh, they work their way towards a turn four. Yeah, they'll come through turn four, uh, Frankie, as now coming out of turn two through the kink and into turn three is, uh, uh, of course, DJ Boyson. Down the straight, though, uh, is the man who led uh, for a short while in race one, the uh, Formula M or Formula Monoposto, uh, as, of course, for the M stands for is uh, that. Uh, he is going into that uh, turn five per Tamina Fastron and uh, will come to complete uh, the lap uh, in the lead of this race and already uh, quite an advantage from a standing start that he has over the rest. Zayna Munson uh, being closed up there behind him and I think what happens is is that uh, Donovan Ramsey also coming through quite nicely over here. I'm just going to see it's Reino Pence from the 95 uh, coming through and uh, that is Donovan Ramsey coming up quite nicely over there but behind them uh, as uh, you said there Frankie I think that is Ricky Anderson and then Luan van Yedden. That is Ricky Anderson and uh, Ramsey just was overtaken on the main straight by Rainer Pence who now are going into turn two attempted to make the move there on Zayna Munson but he pulls in there behind a Munson again so out of turn two it is a Munson it's Pence it's Ramsey and then it is Ricky Anderson that is that the group of cars then Kelly Fletcher followed by Luan van Heerden and then into turn three on the case of them is a DJ Boyson he's now caught up to the back of the field now you'll come out of turn three and uh, onto the Tigerberg straight now you'll see the uh, rest ahead there Zayna Munson leading 
leading them into Sardal Sweep, the double apex right-hander, and onto the back straight there, bright orange Repsol Lantis is uh, currently uh, in uh, the... Uh, let me see actually uh, now second in the uh, ultimate running Liebenberg still leads the way though by 7.1 seconds Pence is a class C runner and he's going to be going past the outside of the Zayna Munson now out of turn five they will then run Rainer Pence is up into second position and they will now go on to the uh, main straight underneath the Castrol City of Cape Town and Wingfield Motors Bridge and uh, let's see if Donovan Ramsey can actually try and make any sort of a move as well as DJ Boyston starts carving through the field very quickly indeed he's actually tried to go for Zayna Munson in turn one right let's have a look see coming out of turn two all on his own is that uh, Formula M car running through the kink towards a turn three and that is that motorcycle powered machine of Darren Liebenberg but the fight's all about what's happening in turn two Castle Corner there are about five of them that's having their own little fight there which includes DJ Boyce and he'll get through that lot and then disappear uh, down the road as he's already cutting and carving his way through the field going up towards a turn four towards Sardal Sweep there he goes and he's already made the move and he's made the move stick there as they worked him out at turn four down the back by Nigos he made the move there on Reino Pence then uh, behind Pence, we've got a Munson, uh, then we've got Ramsey and uh, Anderson. For the second time, Frankie, in as many races, it is Ben Jack Phillips back in the sand again. He had a massive lockup going into turn one. Uh, sorry, uh, Gary, I'm just uh, show you, saying turn one. Of course, that was Ben Jack Phillips in that black uh, Formula V. Meanwhile, uh, it is going to be to the line now, the likes of Reno Pence. Uh, DJ Boysen crosses the line in second now. Now he sets his sights on Darren Liebenberg. Reno Pence will be now in third position. Zayna Munson will be the fourth place man and uh, he will be the leader in class still ahead of Ramsey by seven tenths of a second. Anderson, 1.8 seconds further back. They're all going now into that uh, turn one section. All right, so here we go into turn two with Reno Pence and uh, ahead of Zayna Munson. Zayna Munson fending off there uh, from Donovan Ramsey who looked around the outside of the Repsol Lantis but the Omega was not going to make it through there as uh, now uh, going in Reno Pence into that turn three section and then all over the back on the gearbox almost there of Zayna Munson is that Donovan Ramsey machine. They've left Ricky Anderson a little bit behind here. 1.8 seconds between the two of them. Luan van Yeden 8.1 seconds further the back but still ahead of Kelly Fletcher at the moment they actually crossed the line four thousands of a second between each other meanwhile the leader Darren Liebenberg will come across the line now and then Ben Jack Phillips who uh, is uh, going to be uh, he was one lap down already and uh, I think he'll be now a uh, full uh, not maybe not quite two laps but DJ Boyson is now within 7.7 .7 seconds of uh, the Darren Liebenberg leading Formula M who will still lead Class C if he is passed by DJ Boyson. Well down the main straight there's a little bit of action going into turn one we have got uh, Ramsey going through Anderson also busy making his way through towards a turn number one but it is a uh, Reino Pence that works his way out of turn number one towards turn two that is a uh, Reino Pence in the 65 car and then uh, behind him heading towards Castle Corner is uh, Zayna Munson and he's got Donovan Ramsey right on his heels as they exit the Castle Corner and then you've got Ricky Anderson going through Castle and then two more cars heading in that direction Luan van Yerden and Kelly Fletcher yeah, they're going through turn three now. Zayna Munson still holding that uh, lead of the Formula V section ahead of Ramsey. They were at seven tenths of a second between them when they crossed the line. They've started to leave Anderson behind. Three and a half seconds uh, for him. 8.7 for Van Hedden further back. And Kelly Fletcher still keeping in close proximity to Van Hedden in eighth position. Meanwhile, Ben Jack Phillips is still making it through. I see nine of them have come through. Is the Vaynant de Ritter car still out there? I'm looking around to see if I can see that uh, green machine of Vaynant de Ritter. Of course, the Formula V Lantis, and I do not see that uh, green uh, machine. So, unfortunately, the uh, man who was 10th uh, is now out of the race. 
Ja, well, he was, didn't come out the red, and neither did Somerville, and neither did uh, Van der and, uh, but he didn't do a lap, because he got no time there by him, uh, the redder. So, uh, as you can see, he hasn't completed a lap. See, if he did come out, he never finished a lap. That's why I'm saying he isn't out there. So, let's have a look and see what's happening coming out of turn number one. Heading towards Castro Corner. He is there, Frankie. Uh, he's playing tricks with us here. Uh, I think he just went off the circuit just slightly, hit behind a tree. I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, that, of course, is uh, that is the vein on Derrida car. That's the one he does usually drive. So uh, my apologies to anybody out there. But uh, Boyson leads by 22 and a half seconds over Pence. And uh, five laps left to go, Frankie, in this race. That green car is actually Kelly Fletcher. That's uh, heading into... Uh, that's a 22 car that's heading into Castrol Corner. There we go. That makes sense. All right. Uh, so, yes, Kelly Fletcher who finds herself 1.4 seconds off of Luan van Yeden at the moment. You know, they're basically all on their own now. And uh, I see that Darren Liebenberg has dropped down the field. I uh, have not uh, seen where he's gone. He was second. And I don't see the Formula M anywhere on the circuit at the moment. Here comes on the main straight now uh, the uh, Ben Jack Phillips car now coming onto the main straight behind Ben Jack Phillips who has been lapped mind you by his two laps down is Zayna Munson and uh, the uh, car behind him is Donovan Ramsey because he got past Donovan Ra Ramsey past him and I think Ramsey just keeps it ahead by a hundredth of a second uh, between them. Remember that's the overall battle into turn one uh, for Formula V class in Formula Libra. So out of turn number one, we've got a little bit of a fight uh, that's heading towards a turn two. And uh, that is now up on the inside of Gavin Ramsey. That is uh, Zayna Munson. So he's making a bit of a move there up on the inside of Gavin Ramsey. Ahead of them heading into turn three is Reino Pence. So it's Pence, Munson and Ramsey that is working their way out of Interceptor Corner. Here they come, there is Pence, and then behind them you've got the Amundsen and um, the 95 car in there of uh, um, Ramsey as they make their way down the back straight towards uh, Turn 5. And a fastest lap, Frankie, a 117.549 from DJ Boyson. He finds himself... Uh, uh, your mighty, mighty, mighty lead here ahead of Reino Pence. Uh, we have uh, now coming onto the main straight, we have Ben Jack Phillips going to be completing another lap here. Then we have right behind him Reino Pence coming down now, the leader of Class C and uh, the uh, number 65 machine. Best uh, last lap was a 28 0, and now it's a 27 3 uh, for him which should be his best lap of the day, about uh, just under 10 seconds off of DJ Boyson. Amundsen came across the line. They go through turn one now. Amundsen still has his hands full here at the moment, though. Donovan Ramsey trying to find any way he can to get past, and there's three laps left to go, including the one we are currently on. Yeah, through turn number two, they go, and that's about the only real fight out there on track is the one between uh, Zayn Amundsen and uh, right behind him, Donovan Ramsey. A bit further down the road is uh, Reino Pence as they work their way out of Interceptor Corner. You watch them uh, climb the hill towards a Turn 4. Saddle, find them out of a sweep. That's a double right-hander. There they go through, the three of them, as they make their way down onto the uh, back straight. Down the back straight they go and uh, race down towards a turn uh, number five. We see them go there into Fastron Corner, past the uh, Wingfield Motors uh, signboard, the main sponsor for the last 10 years. Out of uh, Fastron Corner they come and make their way towards the city of Cape Town Bridge as uh, we watch them there on screen. Yeah, they'll come out there, uh, Frankie uh, Zayna Munson, the man who leads the class at the moment. Three tenths of a second it was the last time out between himself and Donovan Ramsey. They cross the line. Now it is half a second, basically, between the two of them. So he's basically responded to Gavin, uh, Donovan Ramsey, excuse me, his, uh, his uh, challenge on him. Ricky Anderson will be the next man to come through. They'll go through uh, turn uh, one onto the Jubair straight. Now you'll still see Reino Pence just a bit ahead of uh, Zayn Munson and Donovan Ramsey. They'll come into uh, Castro Corner. 
but still holding the advantage for now. This is one more lap left to go as uh, it looks like DJ Boyson, who recorded the fastest lap of a 117-118, has just started his final lap. Yeah, he's uh, just put the move there on, uh, that is on Anderson as he goes into turn two, the leader working his way out of turn two on the final lap, out of Castro Corner goes your leader through the kink, goes DJ Boyson towards turn three, interceptor corner way 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 down the road, he's got a massive massive lead here on everybody out there all on his own, let's take him home from where he is, climbing up the hill towards uh, the double right hander, Sardal van der Maad of a sweep out of Sardal sweep he comes, racing it down the back straight that's the Tyco Auto Electrical machine there. The Reynard, the VW Reynard of class and overall leader DJ Boyson into turn five. Out of Fast John Byron. He's got the kink and a run to the checkered flag. Bring him home. Yes, here he comes then. It's uh, DJ Boyson, two out of two for the Tyco Racing Man. He crosses the line and takes a well deserved victory. And uh, then we have to wait just a while, of course, uh, for uh, our next uh, bunch. Although we do have uh, Ricky Anderson coming through, the number 96 uh, machine. That will finish in fifth position. And that will actually be third in class, uh, I think, there, Frankie. I think it is, if I uh, see correctly. Luan van Yeden, fourth in class, comes across the line. A lap down, of course. Him and Ricky Anderson both a lap down. Here comes Kelly Fletcher, though, Frankie. Yeah, Fletcher will finish her race, also a lap of drift, not having a good one, but down the back main, we will see them come into view, you just picked them up for the folks at home on your screen, here we go, down the back main, that's a back marker that's uh, been overtaken there, that's Ben Jack Phillips, he's a back marker that's been overtaken there uh, by Zayna Munson, as they race towards uh, Fastron for the final corner, so we've got all of them on the lead lap except for one. The 17 car is not on the lead lap anymore. And uh, Zayna Munson will uh, be the next man to see the checkered flag. And he's ahead of Reino Pence, uh, Frankie. I think Reino Pence has had a terrible lap. And uh, Zayna Munson will get the winning class V. And he will also get second place overall. Reino Pence will be third class C winner. And uh, then it will be uh, Donovan Ramsey that will come through second in class then on the lead lap in that 95 car. But uh, yes, uh, we also had Darren Liebenberg earlier on who pulled into the pits. And I think he was already uh, standing at the scrutineering section over there, unfortunately having issues with that Formula M of his. No, it's a pity because uh, that's a very quick uh, uh, race car of Darren Liebenberg. And... Um they come from, a, well, he comes from a long uh, list of uh, racers, all in Formula M. Uh, his dad, can't think of his dad's name now, also raced Formula M. But uh, his granddad, the late Clive Liebenberg, was the Formula M chairman. Clive and his wife, uh, Julie Liebenberg, Judy Liebenberg, sorry. She was a secretary. But now I'm going back to the mid-1990s. 94, 95, somewhere around there. When they moved from Paul, they used to race on the Gavin Cook Raceway in Paul at the old Boiland Showgrounds. As you came in by the gate, going down to the oval track, on the right hand side was the Formula M track. And that is where they all raced. And back in the day, they had the 250 and the 550cc cars. And together, there must have been about over 20 cars. And then when the showgrounds uh, got sold to the Boiland Cricket Union, they moved to Cape Town where they were then already uh, already had joined up with them was the short circuit bikes had joined up with them in 90, 96 I think it was yes and uh, there was quite a bit of representation. Yeah, I lie, I lie. Beginning 95, I apologize. There was quite a representation in that uh, Formula Libra race of a number of uh, ex-Formula M DJ boys and himself, Reino Pence, uh, you name it. A number of them came from the Formula M side of things, which used to run at Killarney on the half main with the short circuits, uh, bikes, and of course we still had the uh, carts that uh, joined them there as well, uh, the uh, gearbox carts. So, uh, of course, that's a bygone era at the moment. We uh, only run motorcycles uh, nowadays at the uh, short circuit section. Yeah, but when you joined with the 125 carts, they were then racing on the karting circuit.
and only way way afterwards many years afterwards when they became sort of semi-obsolete did they move over to what was then known as the half main and still is known as the half main but yeah that's only motorcycles now a little bit of cleanup to be done uh, on the circuit i can see as well a few of the marshals just looking at turns three and turns four and uh, the whole circuit is just going to be uh, all right, so they're just doing a, a quick uh, sweep of the circuit just to make sure everything is in order before we have our whole group of classic cars coming out for their second race of the day. So I uh, always want to commend uh, our Kilani marshals and cleanup crews doing always their best work and uh, surviving the elements as well. Wind, rain, sunshine, you name it, uh, they're out there for the passion. Well, while we're on the microphones, uh, we can bring Gary in here as well. There's a lot happening um, between now and, uh, let's say, December. Uh, next weekend, there's a lot of racing happening here at Kalan International. First of all, there's drag racing on the main strip. Then there is karting that's uh, going to be going on the whole day. The karters have been practicing for that. Then in the morning, there is uh, short circuit racing. And then... Uh, we have no, no, is it short circuit? No, it's not short circuit. It's oval track racing. Sorry, short circuit is on the 11th of November. There's so much happening, you get your dates confused. Um, but yeah, CHD will be, um, will be running um, next Saturday. And for those people at home that are used to them starting at 4 for 4.30, they will be starting at half past 2 because we're going to win the semi-final against uh, England and we will be playing the All Blacks. Would it be correct to say that you're starting earlier so that you can watch the start of the rugby? Yeah, well, I want to get everything done before, or well, that's the idea, to get everything done before uh, 9 o'clock, before the kickoff of the World Cup rugby final, which uh, we believe is going to be a return match of 1995. I'm not going to believe anything until I actually see it. Let's first see how we're we go first going to get through England. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we need to get through England first of all, and uh, well, they're the only team that is unbeaten so far in the series. That's right. Right. So uh, Byron, we were doing a bit of calendar. We didn't get very far with the calendar. <laughs> not much of the year left. Actually, no, we got through it. the part of it, and then we got distracted by the rugby side of it. And now it's the louder classic cars that uh, come out onto the track for their second race of the day. And those Mustangs, man, Hitchcock and Arnie Neerfulung, did they make, make life difficult additionally in the beginning for uh, Franco Donadio? But uh, yeah, he managed to fight them all off. And a bit further down was uh, Fadi Maton and then um, Mark Aiton Bogard had issues out there with the Ford Fairmont GT and you've got a DNF and pulled into the pit area. I'm glad to say that Arnie Neerfeling is there, the 777 Mustang is there and I see that Louis Powell is being pushed out of the pits in the Meisner Escort. Uh, so uh, he's got going thank you, thankfully. Um, he uh, was running consistently in uh, the first race but uh, that uh, was quite a finish we were looking to and then of course unfortunately uh, we were robbed of that uh, when uh, the Mustang of Arnie Neffeling developed issues but uh, yes they're on their sighting lap now and uh, Donna Dio will guide them around well, I want to just say a big hello to Mr. FC Nivo. I haven't chatted much to FC. He was chatting more to Gary when he was over in the US. FC is back in Cape Town. I believe he came home yesterday. And he is at Mega Oval in Worcester with Derek Peake and all the other guys. FC, welcome home. How's it, bud? How's it, Frankie? How's it, Gaz? How's it, everybody in uh, Kilani? Lovely to be back in South Africa. Touchdown last night, quarter past five, and decided to keep it a bit of a hush hush. Came down to Mega Oval for the cancer race today, won the Poiki course competition. So, pretty soaked about that. But yeah, uh, looking forward to a lovely day of racing here yeah, and just uh, unwinding a bit after the long flight that I had since Wednesday. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, FC Nibo back in South Africa. So if you haven't had enough racing by the time you leave here this afternoon, you can go through to Worcester, claim Palasi Mega. The rain has stopped. The boy competition's over. 
the action is going to happen. Sorry, Frankie, I just saw that the Mark 8 and Bogart uh, Fairmont is out on the circuit. Remember, we were speaking about uh, the fact that that uh, Fairmont did not complete la race one. And now everybody comes to their grid spots. Donadio in his familiar white, red and green. We have Michael Hitchcock in his Mustang, Arnie Neffelin. The Ford Granada Piranha there of Glen Aiton Bogart. Also a fixture. Right, so Franco Donadio stops you on the line and he's got uh, Arnie Neffel not far behind him. Then we got uh, Michael Hitchcock that's uh, coming through, we're waiting for the pace car, i.e., safety car that uh, will take up its position and here is Glen Aiton Bogart. Man, look at these two Mustangs, three Mustangs actually. And then the Granada of Glen Aiton Bogart. So, wow, we've got uh, a whole heap of heavy metals that's going to try and chase down this Mark 1 Ford Escort of the Donadio plant hire man himself and Arcus Automotive. That is a Franco Donadio, a man that's a multiple, multiple South African, Western Province, regional, and club oval track champion back in the day. Um, one of our top midget racers from the early to mid 1990s at uh, Cape Hall Drivers at uh, the then Goodwood Showgrounds. So then we've got uh, Andrew Honeywell and uh, a man that's always nice to be seen out there on track. We love to see him, that is a Trevor Momberg and then a Charlie Arton and then Vainant Nell in that uh, Ford Anglia. Yeah, we also got Brian Evans in the Mark 1 Escort, uh, starting around about 12 on the grid. Lane Hutchings and uh, his dad, Trevor Hutchings, that is in the Mark 2 Golf and the Sirocco. Then we have Dave Rowley in the Beetle, Vance Kearney in uh, the uh, Jetta, the uh, one with the uh, camel logo on it there, nice uh, yellow, bright yellow, a man all the way from the United Kingdom. And uh, then, like I say as well, Dion Conradi. I uh, didn't see him earlier on in his conquest, as a matter of fact. But uh, Hermann de Kock also in his escort, James Mattia in the Honda CRX. And I uh, remember now as well, Kuni Mattia, I think it is in the 928 there. Or am I uh, wrong over here? I think I might be. The number 33 uh, is Mattia. Yeah, it is. Uh, Mattia there, James, uh, James Mattia, then you have Cooney Mattia, yeah, that is in the uh, V8 928 Porsche. And I see that the uh, Fairmont is stuck on the grid at the moment, that is Mark Aiton Bogart. And also Arnold Lambert in the Jetta 1, he's just left the pit lane now, so they have released him. And the troubles out there again, I noticed there from uh, Mark Aiton Bogart. Oh, that Ford Fairmont GT just does not want to play ball today, it, that's for sure. Well, that block of flats uh, does not want to leave its piece of real estate at the moment. And I think uh, the Fairmont's going, going, going. Okay. There we go. There we go. And it did run on the one lap, but hopefully that uh, car can run. Is he revving the motor? I think, could we have ourselves... Slowly but surely going into turn one now. And well, down the Tigerberg straight now go the uh, whole field of uh, about 40 cars. And I was looking at the championship standings uh, for the, um, the, the Lauda Classic cars. I think we've had about, in total, throughout the year, about 58 driver car combinations to uh, take part in a regional race meeting. Well, as the classic cars work their way down the back straight, uh, Glenn, uh, sorry, Mark Aiton Bogard is uh, making his way towards Interceptor. So he is uh, almost uh, half a lap uh, behind this uh, entire group of classic cars, incorporating a couple of fine cars that is uh, heading down the back straight towards uh, Fostron Corner, Turn 5. Well, they'll run at the moment behind the safety car driven by uh, Phil Herald, a Renault safety car. And uh, now uh, you'll see he'll come into Turn 5 per Termina Fastron. It is a uh, eight-lap race 
uh, that lies ahead here. The second one for the classic cars today, sponsored by Lauda. And here yeah, they gingerly make their way through the banked turn five. The Triber, I think it is the Renault Triber, yeah, that will uh, break off uh, on, into the uh, Joubert pit section and just leave Donna Dio and uh, Aiton Bogart to lead them up to the line. The lights are on and we will be going racing in the next few yards it's going to be now as donadio leads them off towards turn one aiton bogart will be on the outside here look for nearfilling he's now going on the right outside line and uh, it will be donadio that will be squeezing himself through back up into the lead again it looks like it's going to be michael hitchcock then arnie nearfilling and uh, look at this now from uh, arnie nearfilling's actually uh, in fourth position and the Meisner Escort comes into turn two into Castro Corner and uh, pops right back up again but gets a little bit strange off the, uh, the in on the exit. Well, I'll tell you what, Louis Powell is going like the Merry Clappers as his whole group of cars make its way towards turn three. Three interceptor corner they go and it's all about... Uh, Donadio that sits there, Franco Donadio that sits there in P1, making his way through the double right hander. That is turn four, solo sweep. You watch him as he goes down the back straight. It's old trainer cars that's working its way through Saddle Sweep. Down the back main he goes and here comes the gr Granada of Glenn Hayton Bogard. Glenn sitting there in that second position as they race down into uh, turn number five into Fostron Corner. Then the Mustangs are right in there. That's the Hitchcock and Nephilim combination. Running it down underneath the Wingfield Motors Castro and City of Cape Town Bridge now. You're going to see a ready going defensive over here on the straight is Donna Dio. And then on the outside into turn one will be the Granada Piranha of uh, Clayton Bogart. Nose to tail stuff though between the two Mustangs. Michael Hitchcock still holds it in third position ahead of Arnie Nierfeling. They started to leave behind on the Joubert straight. Now we'll watch. You'll see Louis Powell who's slowing down on the Joubert straight. Now, yeah, Louis Powell is now in there behind the angler of Vayna Nell. Uh, so it's not. He is slowing down. That is Brian Evans. That's in there. The cars are very much uh, alike. I thought he slowed down and dropped in there behind Nell. But he's actually pulled off there on the outside of turn two as uh, Louis Powell. So that's the end of the show for Louis Powell. Oh, after a demon of a start, uh, it's very heartbreaking uh, to see that. That means that uh, Ferdi Mouton in the Mustang, that's a class B Mustang finds himself up a position. He's ahead of Trevor Momberg at the moment. Eight tenths of a second between the two of them. Looking down the back straight though, uh, we have Donna Dio that's broken the gap now, Frankie, between himself and the gaggle of cars behind him. Let's watch them as they go through. Is that Arnie Nierfeling uh, being uh, managing to get his way through? We'll watch them as they come onto the uh, straight past the bus stop chicane. And uh, it is going to be the two Mustangs. Where is Glenn Aiton Bogart? Uh, he's uh, slowed right down, going into uh, turn number five, into uh, Fostron Corner. So that is the end of that as well for the Granada of uh, Aiton Bogart. And it's the end of Nierfeling as well, Frankie, because he pulls off just before turn one onto the grass. And uh, that is two forwards out in the space of a few hundred meters. Yeah, the uh, Granada uh, in turn number five in Fostron and then uh, the Mustang in uh, turn number one. But where are the leaders? The leaders going into turn number three, interceptor corner. Franco Donadio and uh, Michael Hitchcock, they are all on their own as they work their way towards uh, turn number four. But there are four cars working their way out of turn three. There they all come into view now. Those four cars working their way up the uh, Tigerberg straight towards a turn four, towards a saddle van a matter of a sweep, or just known as saddle sweep. And down the back main they go. And it is uh, Fadi Maton. Right behind him is uh, uh, Trevor Momberg, Andrew Honeywell, and Charlie Arton as that group work their way towards Fostron 5. 
They come down the straight now, uh, Frankie. Uh, but out of position there uh, is uh, Charlie Arton in the Mazda Capella RX2 Rotary. And uh, they'll then rocket it now on the main straight uh, towards the line. So uh, Ferdy Maton, his work is cut out for him. It could be side by side in the straight. Almost here, Trevor Mombu. That's V8 versus V6 here. As they go to, uh, down towards the uh, turn one section. And uh, Mouton will just hold on to it by the skin of his teeth. But look behind him as Charlie Arton comes up a position in turn one. And uh, Charlie Arton will make his way past the uh, Andrew Honeywell uh, Porsche and uh, that will be up into fifth position. Yeah, Honeywell was just off track there. It was a puff of dust that came off the uh, Honeywell Porsche. These four working their way out of Castle Corner. Through the kink they go towards a turn three. And it is still Muton that sits there ahead of Momberg, who sits there ahead of Arten, who is ahead there of the Porsche of Honeywell, as they make their way towards the double right-hander turn four into Saddle Sweep. Through Saros Sweep, they'll then run onto that back straight. One of the closest battles on the circuit at the moment. Fadi Maton, he holds the racing line for now. In the slipstream, though, it's going to be Trevor Momberg. Right behind Trevor Momberg, it is a very determined Charlie Arton who will look towards the inside. I don't know if he's close enough to make any sort of a move, but on the outside of Muton, you can see there that blue Capri trying to make it past the Mustang, but he'll slot back into position, get back in the slipstream, again and maybe try something down towards turn one well if we can just pick up that fight that's coming out of turn five that is when uh, you have a family fight out there on track and this time it's the other way around it is Trevor Hutchings that sits there uh, ahead of uh, Lane Hutchings as they make their way into turn number one and Lane has right on his case right on his case he says come on dad get going uh, otherwise i want to get <laughs> make the move on you because ahead of them is brian evans and ahead of evans is vader now so that is the father-son combination that's having a lovely lovely fight out there as they make their way into Castro Corner. Into Castro Corner. The one who wins uh, does not have to do the brine tonight. So there we go between the two of them. That's a Sirocco versus the Mark II Golf. But uh, coming across the line, Anton Rolino just ahead of Wursthaze. And meanwhile, our leading uh, pack at the moment, uh, Frankie, or leading two, I should rather say, coming out of uh, turn five at the moment now. And it is going to be Michael Hitchcock that leads across the line now. The Franco Donadio is now lost ground on this lap as well. 1.1 seconds to be exact as they cross the line three laps to go and then this gaggle of cars this uh dog fight this war that's coming out of turn five here we go that's game on it is a trevor momberg he sits up on the inside of fatty maton right there with him is charlie arton and the porsche of andrew annual as they race down into turn number one and the four of them are crawling over each other as they exit turn one working out of holes yep he gets it as well frankie momberg is in the lead of the class at the moment but fatty maton is going to fight it back. Charlie Arton's going to come back. And the Porsche of Andrew Honeywell will try going back in turn two. Cash recorder, but goes wide. And they'll then rocket it out there as well. On the gas it is. And see if now the uh, power of the Mustang can really sprint away into turn three. They're going to pick up the Fiat 128 there of a returning Ernest Leet. And uh, he is, uh, well, he's been away for a hell of a long time as Ernest. So uh, this group of cars right there on his case as they work their way out of a turn four and down onto the back straight. Just seeing where we are now, I think we are coming onto the uh, back straight now with that battle for Class B. Here comes Mouton, he's side by side, left hand side of him will be Trevor Momberg. They'll go side by side into turn five, Pertamina fast run, but Momberg will still have the advantage. Charlie Arton is keeping a watching brief at the moment. They've crossed the line now, our two leaders, and that means there's only two more laps left to go. There is Anton Rolino as well on the main straight, being lapped in the Morris Mar and another go, another bite of the cherry for Mouton as they go up towards turn one now. Is he close enough to make a move and try and get on the inside? No, he's not. Right out of one they come. This little fight and uh, 
There are two laps to go, including the one that we're on, as uh, they work their way towards Castro Corner. Here they come. That's Momberg, and Kurt is going to be Charles Harton that tries around the outside of. Uh, uh, Fadi Maton but does not succeed and at the back of them is that uh, Porsche of Andrew Honeywell as they work their way out of uh, turn three out of interceptor and up towards Saddle Sweep. Into turn five now is uh, our two, our pair that is going uh, around and going to be starting the final lap of the race. A number of cars ahead of them that are to be lapped. They might not even catch them. Let's see how it goes. It's going to be Donadio that's back up in the lead again. But look at that V8 Mustang using the power on the straights over here to try and catch him. But now uh, as he's lighter is Donadio and much more nimble. He can be later on the brakes and that keeps him ahead of that big powerful Mustang. All right, now this is the final lap. We're going to stick with them. Look what's waiting for them in turn two in Castle Corner. There's three, four, five, six. There's about eight back markers that is uh, waiting the two leaders as they make their way out of Castle Corner through the kink and into Interceptor. Now, will Donadio be able to use this to play into his advantage because he knows the power of the Mustang down the back main will be a lot more than his. He has to use the back markers to win this one. And he's already through on James Mateer uh, there as well, Frankie Donadio. We'll watch them as they come down the back straight now. And I think this might help him a bit because here comes the uh, powerful Michael Hitchcock down the straight as he goes. This is the now or never straight for him him this is his last chance to snatch victory over here and I think what happens is the Ford Escort Mark 1 of Donadio has escaped between the traffic I think what happens is his goose is cooked well I'll tell you what there's a lot more but he's going to do it the checkered flag is out and Franco Donadio has done it but here comes the Mustang on the line and Franco Donadio somehow just holds out that uh, Mustang there of Michael Hitchcock, 0 0.183 between Donadio and Hitch Hitchcock. That's uh, nearly two tenths of a second. Yeah, and they just started catching the back markers. I was uh, maybe being a bit optimistic on their part that they wouldn't catch them, but uh, they were really catching them at a rate of knots. Let's go on to the straight now. Anton Rilino will uh, finish a lap down. Uh, so will Wursthaisen as well. Here come the battle for Class B, and it's going to be Trevor Momberg ahead of Charlie oh, first Fatty Baton. Charlie Arton and Andrew Honeywell. Yeah, there was uh, some uh, great stuff out there. We wait for the other guys to come through. This is Mel Carstens. He should be a lap or so down with a Cortina. Also an ex oval track racer, MJ Carstens. Here comes uh, Vayner Nell to the line, and uh, Trevor Hutchings will get there just ahead of. Brian Evans and Lane Hutchings sits there on the outside of Brian Evans. Then uh, Derek Wilson finishes his race. So does Ernest Leet and so does Arnold Lambert as well. But Va they're not on the lead lap. Vance Kearney will come through as well now, Frankie. Uh, that will be in, uh, e in 11 spot. No, first, sorry, 12 spot. Uh, in Class C as well. Then uh, De Kock will come through in 13th. The uh, 63 of Malcolm Aiton Bogart, who we haven't spoken much about in this race, through in 14th. Then uh, it is going to be oh Dave Rowley comes through ahead of uh, Martin Bench. That's the Beetle comes across the line, the flat four racing Beetle. And uh, then uh, I think it was just a row in there as well, the number 84 of um, Robert Rowe. Uh, coming through there, Matia. So looking at how things work over here, the Class D winner is actually Dave Rowley in the Beetle. And uh, then uh, the only Class X car classified up at the top there is going to be the uh, Jakub Wersthaisen Conquest. That was a fine car. I don't know if you noticed, uh, everybody took the checkered flag and slowed down, but not Franco Donadio. He went to go do another lap just to make sure that he won it. <laughs> oh, some fantastic racing here today uh, at uh, Kilani, and uh, it's been a, a bit of a wait over the last few months for regionals, but uh, it's been worth it. I can tell you that much. And uh, we still got a few races to go uh, today. We got the Thermo Fires uh, Clubman Saloons coming up uh, next. And we have some motorcycle races coming up as well as the Wild Rose Gin uh, 
the Sports and GT cars for their second race of the day. There it is right in front of us now. If you're watching online, uh, Firma Fires Club and Saloons, Wild Rose Gin Sports and GT cars, then the Bridgestone Super Twin Cup 650s and Super Sport 300 motorcycles, the Super Bikes, Super Bike Challenge Masters and 600s, all in their one race. That's the uh, penultimate race of the day. And then the South Motorcycles Clubman's uh, classic Superbikes Breakfast Run Motorcycles will round off the day and that will be around about the 25 past uh, 5 in the afternoon uh, as it is as we'll then uh, come into the uh, last bit of this race day on the 21st of October, the penultimate round of the Power Series. Wow, what a day we've had so far. Some awesome, awesome racing since July. Uh, we have had, um, was the last event that we had here, and then we had nothing in August, we had the Extreme Festival in September, and now we're back in October again for the second last round of the Wingfield Motors Power Series, proudly brought to you by Wingfield Motors and a small 90.4 FM, the official media partner of the Western Province Motor Club, Smile FM playing more 80s than anyone else in Cape Town. A big thanks to Smile FM, that's Smile 90.4 FM. Then we want to say a big thanks as well to Pertamina Fostron for Turn 5, to uh, Castrol for Turn 2 and the Bridge and the Spinning Pitch. I forgot to mention earlier on, they do the Spinning Pitch as well. They sponsor that and of course the Castle Tower and the Castle Commentary Box have come to you on top of the tower. So a big, big thanks to them. Then a big thanks to Interceptor Shue for a Turn 3 and then King Tony Tools as well. They sponsor the Bridge IE Subway area of uh, Kalani International Raceway and then all our class sponsors. We say a big, big thanks to the people at home. You can see all the sponsors there on your screen. Pirelli for the V8s, Alert Engine Parts for the GTI Challenge, Lada for the Classic Cars, Thermo Fires for Clubmans, Wild Rose Gins for Sports and GT, Bridgestone for the 650s and 300s, uh, and uh, South Motorcycles for Clubmans Classic and Breakfast Run Bikes. And uh, it's only just the Formula Libras that uh, need a class sponsor so we say big thanks to them coming back to gti challenge not only just alert engine parts but a big thanks as well to uh, hydrocore hydraulics authentic autos previously known as cheapercars.co.za that's mr herman lazarus to uh, spice mecca and then to zaki hendrix of Willworks mag repairs also, uh, the uh, product sponsors here of Alert GTI, Alert Engine uh, GTI Challenge. A big thanks to all our sponsors. And of course, all the private sponsors of the drivers on their cars and on the riders on their motorcycles as well. So we say big thanks to everybody because without you people, we cannot go motor racing. But a special thanks to uh, Johnny Van Eker, also known as Mr. Johnny Wingfield of Wingfield Motors. His 10th year that he sponsors here at Kalani International for the Power Series.
tonight We're passing up to the stars tonight We wanna go, go Well, it's time for Thermal Fires Clubman's uh, Regional Saloon Cars for their second and their final race for the day. Woo! -hoo. Look at those cars lighting up the track. That's one of the Modak cars coming out. I think it might be the BMW. And if that's the case, it would be Imad Modak that lit the world up as he came out of pit lane. Now Daniel could see us also out there just ahead of him. And then uh, Nias Modak in the Audi. But the man that moved his way through the field very quickly in race one is that number four golf that's heading into Castle now. And that is uh, Rosie Harris. And he's racing in Class X. That's a cool touch racing Mark 1 Golf of Razi Harris. He'll bust out of X probably to B, maybe even Class A. Who knows? Just needs a bit of luck, man. One of our top racers here at Kalani, but oh, just doesn't, doesn't work out for him at times. And let's hope that uh, it can go his way for the second race of the day. <laughs> Another guy that had, uh, we initially saw out there, and while we saw him towards the end and uh, lost a bit of ground, was the DNA reinforcing uh, machine there of uh, Kwesi Swanepoel. Another guy that did a WRX uh, in the support class a couple of weeks ago. But Cody Albert sits there in P2. Remember that it is a grid invert for um, Thermo Fires Clubmans for race number two. There is uh, Graham van Royen and uh, then JP Shea is there. Andre Didrix in that orange colored boxy BMW. As we wait for the rest of the field to come through, that's the first five cars that's standing still. Gary Smith, a little bit further down. 
Algon Gaspar busy coming through here comes the Wingfield Motors and best price for my car Golf of Chiara van Niekerk just ahead there of Gaspar rolling into position a little bit further back that might just be Imad Modak Yusuf Hendrick's got a DNF in race one. He's busy making his way through. He'll start in P6. Yavad Weiland in the Alpha GTV. He'll be in P8. Paul Minnick will be in P9. And then the 52 coming through there. That is Barsi Berger. He'll be in P5. And then... Michael Asier will bring the new engineering golf into P1 and then P4 will be Daniel Kutsia. Yeah, on the, the outside of Didricks we will have the Audi of uh, Nias Modak and behind Didricks will have the BMW of Imad Modak and behind him will be that number four golf of Razi Harris. Kiara van Niekerk on her inside is uh, Imad Modak. No, not Imad Modak. That would be... Got a couple of BMWs a bit further down. Let's have look, see as a roll off the line. Here comes Imad Modak, that's the 47. Nias is just ahead of him. The 14 car, oh, that's the one. That's the Excelsior Air brakes. That is a Gary Manwaring. And Gary Smith is stuck on the grid. The 68 of Gary Smith, there he goes now. Yeah, that's uh, the 68 car of Gary Smith getting rolling bit of a nervous time there for Gary Smith but he got that car going the three chase vehicles just making their way into turn one behind the uh, Gary Smith car now yeah, making their way now through Castro corner as uh, the uh, safety car pace car whichever way you want to put it the Renault going through turn three now Eight laps lie ahead for the second Thermo Fires Clubman's saloon car race of the day. Wind howling quite a bit here now as well as it has been through the day. Southeaster, as Gary put it as well, the uh, trimmed trees letting the wind come through quite nicely over there. Well, unfortunately, we didn't want to, but I think the club had no choice with this wind that's pumping and these trees that are so big uh, that it could cause damage if uh, they break. And they did cause damage earlier on a couple of weeks ago. So they had no choice but to trim them. And, uh, yeah, the view just doesn't seem the same without those trees there. So, uh, obviously, now what that what blocked the wind, it's... Uh, it's a freebie now for the southeaster just to gush across the track. Not that it needed the trees to do so. At the World Rallycross, it gushed us uh, completely off the spotter's tower. <laughs> well, there was quite an experience up uh, on a uh, bit of scaffolding. <laughs> so, uh, yes, Frankie, they go down the, uh, the back straight now. A whole big group of motor cars ready to go racing in this uh, afternoon period this afternoon session at the uh, power series at Kelani, the penultimate round of the season right into fast run corner we go that's the calm before the storm all these uh, thermofires regional saloon cars clubmans working towards us the safety car peels off towards the, its left hand side into the jabir pits the lights and pit lane is on. Eight racing laps await us as we wait for the lights to go off. They'll go off any time now. 
and away they go and push this one a pull. Want to try and get through the middle. And now four abreast. They are four abreast at one stage going down into turn number one. They're going to have to hold on to that. And it is going to be Daniel Kutsia that gets a run out of turn number one. Swanapool is there in that second position. Cody Alberts, where is Cody Alberts? He is in there and he's not third anymore because that's Michael Lassier that's moved up there into third place, Byron, as they work their way out of Castro Corner. Yeah, Nias Modak also trying to poke the uh, nose through there as well and uh, gets on the gas now, but just gets behind Lassier, which blocks his way, but he'll force his way through into turn three now and uh, up into uh, fourth position here, setting his sights on Cody Alberts, who's uh, just trying to keep hold of Quirsi Swanapul as they go into the double apex rider at uh, uh, right-hander at uh, Saro Sweep. But Daniel Kutsia has made the run for it down the back main. He goes and here comes a Nias Modak. Nias Modak sitting around and driving around the outside there of Cody Alberts as they work their way into turn number one. So Nias Modak in that Audi, he now moves up to P3 at the exit of turn five Fostron. All right, let's see them as they come through now, Frankie. So the first lap, yeah, the first lap now as it is, uh, is going to be completed. Daniel Kutsia comes across the line, but look, slipstreaming now. Nias Modak is going to go onto the inside of Kursi Swanapool and will make his way onto the inside for second position. He will poke the nose ahead, and that's what will happen. Imad Modak will start closing up the gap to him as well as they all start coming through here. Zaki Hendricks leads his class at the moment from Van Roy and Veyland in third. Then Paul Minnick, that is the class B section. Man Waring is in Clubman's class C in 12 position ahead of Smith so as they go through the kink into uh, <laughs> into interceptor corner through interceptor they go right now it's actually US of Hendrix, folks but never mind as uh, they work their way towards a turn number four and it is nose to tail out of sidle sweep out of side while they come down that back straight of keeping an eye out the window and watching the uh, telly as well. Look at this group of cars working its way up to turn four, but down the back lane they go. Down the back lane they go now, racing towards a turn number five into Fostron Corner. And uh, it is about five, six of them that's working their way out of Fostron. Yeah, they'll be coming there uh, to complete uh, another lap, and there'll be six laps left to go. Yeah, it's Yusuf uh, Hendricks, excuse me, that's uh, leading class uh, B at the moment. Just, just from Van Roy, eight tenths of a second over the last uh, lap uh, as it was. Coming across the line, Mias Modak, a 119.690 from the car number 37 uh, that now leads the way at the present moment. Look at the battle here going through turn one side by side and uh, Frankie you can see a few coming around here down towards turn one well it's a huge fight heading down towards turn one we've got yellow flags waving we have got yellow flags waving in turn one when I have a look see somebody has somebody has gone off there in turn one 24 and uh, we'll see on the screen uh, on the exit of uh, turn one holes hook uh, will then pick up for you shortly 24 Adam uh, uh, Adam Omar the, uh, the city golf uh, that is out there and on the exit of that turn right so where are the leaders down the back main they go down the back straight they go as they head towards five into Fostron corner and it is a whole heap of them it is a Nias Modak it sits out there in P1 Daniel Kutsia is still in that second place. No one is not. I think he might have dropped into third by now as they work their way out of uh, Fostron Corner. Here they come towards us. It is the Modax that's at first and second. Then it is Swanapool that has a dive around the outside of uh, Daniel Kutsia that gets dumped down into P4, followed there by Cody Alberts across the line, and then Michael Lassier as they head out of turn one. So there's going to be five laps left to go, including the one we are currently on at the moment. It's a nose to tail battle for the lead in this race. As uh, I can see Paul Minnick also in a uh, heady battle over there between the likes of JP Share and uh, Andre Diedrichs as well in that uh, boxy shape 3 Series BMW coming out there right ahead of Paul Minnick out of that uh, into uh, the uh, Joubert straight at the present moment. I need to turn number two. Look at this. There's a whole lot of cars. That's a lot of motor cars that are going into turn two. Joseph Hendricks 
is in that fight as they come out of turn two. But look at this lot coming out of two now. And uh, Evel Weiland is leading that lot. And right behind him is J.P. Shea. Andre Diedrich is in that fight. Then it looks like Paul Minnick. It is indeed Paul Minnick as they work their way up the Tiger Book Strait. It is a whole lot of them that's racing down towards four. And right behind them, Frankie, is the Class C battle of Gary Manwaring, uh, Algen Gaspel, and then Van Nikak will also find himself in that particular battle. So you have Kiara Van Nikak. That's uh, all in there. They go through now onto the back straight now and rocket it down to a turn of five and uh, get under brakes there and uh, then slide in he will. Is that going to be the Andre Diedrichs uh, BMW? that just gets ahead if I see them coming out now I think Eva Valance down to third and then it's JP Shea in second in class a lot of them that's going down there into Tim Gary man wearing as part of this and Paul Minnick sits there on the outside of Algon Gasper as they go down into Tuna then the two lady racers Kiara for Nikak and Mia Bench they going one-on-one -on -one. it is the golf versus the BMW Working their way out of a turn number one. Here they come, Mia Bench, the two lady racers, Mia Bench, and I think MDT Racing is also part of that. Into turn two they go, and the BMW just behind the golf there. So the two ladies are in the house as they work their way through the kink behind that four-way fight ahead of them heading into turn three interceptor corner. Well, uh, I can see there Gary Man wearing right behind Eval Valant at the moment. Remember, two different classes, but doing his best, Eval Valant, to try and get away uh, from uh, the uh, two behind him. Of course, uh, Gary Man wearing Algen Gaspel, and uh, now onto the main straight. Now, here comes uh, our leaders over here. It is going to be the... Uh, Number 21 of uh, Swanepoel back ahead there. That's amazing. Coming through like that, a tenth of a second ahead of the number 47 Modak, of course, in the BMW. Right, so the leaders with uh, three laps to go, including the one they're on, is uh, now into turn number two. Uh, that is, um, and that is a Swanepoel that is leading that as uh, they come through now and go into uh, interceptor corner but the Byron as that group goes into interceptor the next group is going into Castle corner and that group of about what five cars has been led there by Yusuf Hendricks. Yeah, Yusuf Hendricks taking them around quite nicely. Andre Diedrichs uh, following uh, that as well. Then uh, Barsi Berger, uh, who's a different class, of course. Class A, out of position, you could say. And uh, far off of Le Sieur in sixth position. He's ahead still of the 149 of Van Royen. And then it is going to be the 68 of Smith uh, in there as well. Right, so look at this bunch of cars working their way into turn uh, number four. As they work their way down the back main, it's uh, Josef Hendricks. Here comes uh, Diedrichs up on the inside there of uh, Hendricks. Barsi Burgers in that fight. Remember, Barsi didn't do the opening race as they head into turn number five. And Gary Smith is there. Oh, and he's gone. He's gone. He's lost it completely there in turn five. It's a whole lot of dust and sand as he gets back on the track again. And he gets on the circuit behind J.P. Shea. They are on the uh, last but one lap now. So the uh, last lap comes up next after this one. And uh, we wait now for our leaders to come through. Yeah, okay. In the pits then will be... Uh, who's coming... The Audi is coming to the pits. Is that going to be Modek? Uh, so Niaz Modek into the pits, I think, there. We'll find out shortly, but it's going to be one more lap left to go when they do cross the line now. So we look out for our leaders coming towards the line down the uh, straight as they do. Well, that uh, Chrysler makes its way past us as uh, we wait for the leading uh, cars to come down towards us and uh, is this them coming towards us to start their last lap yep there is a mod modak there is chrissy swanapool yes daniel could see her 
coming past us. That's the first three that's heading into turn number one. Cody Albert comes through as well. Then it is Michael Asia. He's uh, got two back markers that he's just gone past there, going into turn number one. And uh, that is that group of cars heading into turn one right now. And then uh, we'll have, uh, well, Andre Diedrichs uh, coming here now to uh, take the uh, lead of the class. Did they come through? Because I didn't see uh, or Yusuf gone through. No, Hendrix has not gone through. He's gone through now, yes. Uh, in uh, the second place in class, eighth place overall, ahead of Van Roy by eight tenths of a second. All right, so this is the last lap of the uh, race. And where is our leader now? That will be the BMW going down the back straight of uh, the uh, Kalani circuit and into the last turn now for uh, Imad Modak. Right, the checkered flag is uh, being readied here at the uh, start finish line as we wait for them to come towards us and here he comes it is Imad Modak that comes home in P1 and Daniel Kutsia just just gets to the line ahead there of Kwesi Swanepoel Cody Albert is the next man that's coming to the line and behind him is Michael Lucia in that very quick uh, golf of his then it's a bit of a gap before we see the rest of the guys come through Two back markers coming through, and then we've got uh, Andre Didrex in that orange boxes shape uh, BMW, and then the rest of the guys coming through as well. This is Barcy Berger. Behind him is Graham van Royen. Behind van Royen is uh, JP Shea. And then another fight that's working its way towards the checkered flag. Uh, it's Algon Gaspar, and right up against the wall is Yvonne Valent. And there was contact with the wall as well, with Paul Minnick right in there behind him. Then Kiara van Niekerk comes to the line. She wins the fight between the ladies. Where is Mia Bench? I don't see Mia Bench out there. But, uh, yo, that was hectic stuff. There was wall and car and wall and car and wall and all as they <laughs> went down into turn number one. You have the toy coming through there with the Ford Falcon and uh, then coming through as well. Oh, slow. So he had a problem out there. That's Razi Harris. And then the block of flats coming through there. And that is the Chrysler of Andre van Amerwe. Wow. Some great stuff out there. But gee whiz. That was car and wall and car and wall for Ewald Weiland and uh, lucky lucky not to have a big one there and that turned out for the best uh, frankie still uh because like i was also saying to, uh, to gary now that could have been a really nasty one that but uh, remember some very experienced heads out there uh the likes of uh, evil valant and co so uh, yeah some very action-packed racing in uh, this uh Thermo Fires Clubman Saloon class and uh, just on the way back to the pits there's somebody stuck at uh, castro corner and uh, we had a few uh, have a, had a few uh, casualties a uh, mere bench okay mere bench uh, that's why she did not come across the line so this is a uh, gary smith doing a bit of agricultural work there Ready on uh, the uh, exit of uh, turn five and he joined in there behind the jp share you think he misses the rally cross <laughs> so uh that was just a replay of that and we were talking early on about the fight between Kiara van Niekerk and Mia Bench and Kiara crossing the line we couldn't find Mia well she is stuck on the outside exit of Castle Corner is the BMW here's the contact oh car and wall and oh, that was hectic stuff and even Paul Minnick just backed off out of it and he was just behind those two well, Frankie, in fact, uh, Eugene Gasper didn't uh, change his line. It was um, Evolt that was just a little bit too close. I think he was trying to maybe pick up a bit of a uh, toe from him and just dived out a little bit too late. But yeah, that could have been hectic. That was pretty scary for Evolt Weiland. I wonder how much damage there is to that GTV. He has had a fantastic return to uh, Clubman's after being away for a couple of years. The first two races in returning had issues in turn one lap, one, um, two races in a row. 
and then it went semi okay and now this but yeah lucky for him no harm done he uh, will get classified as a finisher and he took the checkered flag yeah like you were saying frankie probably one of the oldest cars at the moment around here at kilani and that's been through quite a bit uh, over the last uh, few years or all the years i should rather say but if there's anybody who can bounce back that definitely is evolved valent while Rose Gin, sports and GT cars are up next, four more races to go. One more car race, and then we'll end the day off with the three motorcycle races.
Right, here we go with the Sports and GTs sponsored by Wild Rose Gin and already trouble coming out the pit lane and that looks like uh, Stevie Humble. Yeah, that's Steve Humble. Uh, And that's Steve Humble that's uh, pulled off there. And, uh, well, either get him going or they're going to pull the car out the way or push the car out the way. And that's not the way, that's uh, not the way that uh, Steve Humble want to do, uh, do his second race. Well, I can see uh, Paul Beachy Head uh, is back out uh, on the circuit. He uh, stopped the car in qualifying. He pulled out of the race uh, in uh, race one. He was smoking. He was reported to be uh, smoking. So uh, he's back again. But another car you'll see that uh, is uh, in this race is a Z4 BMW. And uh, I uh, have been informed that uh, that is being driven by um, Dr. Mike Verrier and that it has a Corvette V8 under the bonnet of that BMW. So uh, a combo, that's quite a combination, BMW with uh, Chevy Corvette V8. No, that's a German-American combination, that's for sure. Right, so out of uh, turn five they come towards us out of fast strong corner working their way towards us with 10 laps i think it should be 10 laps it is 10 laps of racing action and davi Hubert and francis carruthers is on the front row then martin prince and martin Pugh on the second row divan lasmo eric salomon marco rector is in the house as well as uh, they drop the hammers and race down into turn number one. Out of turn one they go and it is Davi Uber from uh, Francis Carruthers. That's the first two cars out of turn number one. Then it's Martin Pugh from Martin Prince. That is in P3 and 4. Then uh, we've got Lasmo, Divan Lasmo, and right in there with him is the BMW of Marco Retton. Right on his case is the elf of uh, Eric Salomon as that group of cars work their way towards Interceptor Corner. And uh, Doc Mike Verrier just gets started a little bit further back. He comes across the line and starts the race uh, in that uh, Corvette-powered BMW Z4. Anyway, going through turn three onto the uh, Tigerberg straight now. Good clean start from everybody in this 10-lap uh, race. And then onto the uh, back straight we then run. So the Lotus Exige of Hubert goes down towards turn five, having broken the gap already from Francis Carruthers' pull beam. Then, uh, of course, Steve Humble no longer in this race, parked behind the Armco barrier. That means it's going to be Pew and Prince that will probably uh, be battling it out with each other in Class B. But meanwhile, on the main straight now, here comes Hubert to complete uh, the first lap of the race and uh, followed then by Carruthers. And then uh, we'll have uh, Prince. Prince first ahead of Pugh, so Martin Prince ahead of Martin Pugh, 
and then uh, Divan Luzmo, Lasmo, I should rather say, ahead of Marco Retta. Retta is uh, currently in uh, the uh, sixth position and leading the class D class at the present moment. Right, so the leaders are working their way out of Castel Corner and that is Davi Hubert heading towards Interceptor with uh, Francis Carruthers in that second position. Then it is Martin Prince, head of Martin Puke, and right behind him is uh, Divan Lasmo and hassling Lasmo in Interceptor Corner is uh, Marco Retta as they exit uh, Interceptor and work their way up the hill towards a Turn 4 Saddle Sweep. Uh, another two notable absentees, uh, Frankie Emil Butzer's 350Z and Gary Faree also, the 350Z that he uh, runs usually not in this race. Uh, Joubert comes out of turn five now and it was 2.7 seconds uh, between himself and Carruthers the last time out. This is the first flyer of the uh, race and across the line he will then run and that will be a uh, 112, uh, 718, uh, followed then by Carruthers over here, 5.5 seconds back. Martin Prince will have a gap between himself and Martin Q. Remember the battle for Class B as far as things are concerned. But look now there at uh, Retta and Lasmo into Turn 1. That's going to be the tight battle over here as they make their way through Turn 1. The BMW versus the Nissan. Well, you made the move on Lasmo before going into Turn Number 1 as uh, they head now towards uh, Castle Corner. The leaders are, while well, the leaders all on his own heading towards a turn four. As you have a look at this group of cars that's making its way out of a turn number one out of holes. And uh, it is pretty, pretty uh, touch and go by this lot of cars going down into cash. That's the guys at the back of the field. The leader is heading into a turn five. He's making his way into fast on corner and it's all about the Davi Hubert that's all on his lonesome ownsome Carruthers is busy coming out of turn five as well out of fast on corner as uh, Hubert crosses the line to start another lap then we've got Carruthers coming down towards us and uh, behind Carruthers we have got the rest of the cars coming through the two Martins should be coming towards us yes Martin uh, Prince and uh, Martin Pugh as the guys come out of turn one yeah, yeah, they come into turn one now, and uh, Martin Prince in that uh, bright orange uh, Porsche makes his way into the uh, turn over there, and then Martin Pugh uh, will be following shortly in the uh, Can-Am. But uh, just looking a little bit further down, Marco Retta uh, was having a nice little battle there with uh, Divan Lasmo. And uh, they are in the back. I think he's released the pressure now, relieved the pressure, Retta. And he's starting to sprint away a little bit now. 2.4 seconds between himself and Lasmo. And then uh, 13 and a half seconds back will be uh, Eric Salomon, Connor Kilbride, and Ray Farnham very close together as well. That is the 42 uh, and the uh, 9. The 9, of course, is the uh, Lotus 7 uh, that Ray Farnham, the Opal Bird. And seven, I should rather say. Down the back straight is Carruthers, though, comes across the line. Uh, not only yet, so he's going to come towards the line, but uh, then there's a nice little gap between himself and uh, Martin Prince and Martin Pugh. They run down here with six laps left to go now as the leader crosses the line. Right, here comes uh, Carruthers towards us, but the leader is making his way out of a turn a number one. That is a Davi Hubert. And uh, he, he is uh, had a laugh at that wing at the back of the car, but I tell you what, it works for your climb and it certainly works on this track as well. And then we've got Carruthers, that's there in that second place. Then coming out at turn one now, we've got uh, Martin uh, Prince and uh, Martin Pugh, followed there by Retta and uh, by Lasmo. But going through turn Two now. That's a leader. That's a group we spoke about earlier coming out of turn two as we wait for the leaders to come towards us. Well, on the main straight now, we got uh, ourselves a good battle because uh, Paul Beachy Head is uh, trying to make his way through now, which he has done so on Connor Kilbride. So uh, that means he made his way past Ray Farnham, uh, now uh, ahead of the Birkin 7. And the uh, next man that Paul Beachy Head is going to go for is Connor Kilbride in the 350Z ahead of him. He goes into turn two, Castro Corner now, and uh, just uh, struggling to hold on to the back of them over there will be uh, Simeon Penev that is in 11th position at the present moment ahead of Richard De Rus. haven't spoken much about Richard De Rus in that classic Porsche 
So, uh, yes, uh, five laps left to go, including the one they are currently on at the moment. It's 9.4 uh, seconds between Joubert and uh, Carruthers. Meanwhile, going through the uh, turn four section is still the Connor Kilbride, Paul Beachy Head, and Ray Farnham section. But well, Simeon Pena just hang hanging on to the back there of that little group. And uh, that, will, of course, will be uh, three Class D cars versus a Class C car. The Class C car is the Audi R8 that's uh, coming right up to the back of uh, Connor Kilbride there. And uh, not close enough, though. I think he went a bit wide in turn five per Tamina Fastron. And, uh, well, Eric Salomon will be on the, uh, lead, on the lead, no, well, on the uh, main straight now. Crosses the line, Kilbride will be now under pressure and going towards the line. Paul Beachy Head will surely go onto the inside. No, he won't, of uh, the uh, man ahead of him there, Kilbride. Yeah, these cars coming out of uh, turn number one and they are going as quick as they can out of turn number one as uh, they work down into turn two. We go back there to turn number one. There's a lot of cars coming out of turn one at this point. As uh, they come to Davi Hubert is coming out of turn one. He's picking up a back marker and puts a lap on the back marker as he works his way towards a castle corner. He's got a couple of back markers that he's gone past already as Davi Hubert. And uh, heading now towards turn two is uh, Carruthers as Hubert works his way out of uh, turn three. And then towards turn two as well now, we've got uh, Martin uh, Prince followed by Martin Pugh as we watch the leader make his way out of turn four and go down the back main. And that is Davi Hubert. He's on a 112.718. He is the quickest man out there as he races down towards Fostron Corner. Yeah, that was on his uh, first, uh, his second lap, I should rather say, the first flying lap uh, of the race. Uh, of course, they came from the uh, rolling start. But look at them now as the leader is coming up to lap uh, the likes of uh, Simeon Penev as he'll try and make his way past Ray Farnham in that group as well and then Paul Beachy Head who has been having issues today he's continuing in this race at the moment in Class C that will be the uh, third position in Class C as he's just off by two and a half seconds of, of uh, Connor Kilbride at the moment he'll make easy work of that three laps left to go uh, in this race as uh, now here comes uh, Oh, somebody going off there. That is the Porsche of De Roos that I think has gone into the sand. Yes, there he comes back onto the circuit now. And going right past him is Mike Verrier in the uh, BMW Corvette uh, V8. Right, Mike Verrier, that uh, is the man you see on your screen there at home. He's uh, debuting this car here today. He didn't do the opening race, did Mike Verrier. And uh, it's a lovely... Uh, BMW Z4 with the uh, Corvette power plant in it working its way through interceptor corner that's a doc himself the man from uh, Neisner who is the initial father of the iRacing i racing that we uh, I was gonna say iRacing SA but uh, the stuff that we are involved in he initially started with the master series and it's evolved from there as we watch the doc make his way down the back straight towards uh, turn five, towards Fastron Corner in that lovely BMW Z4. Well, going through uh, the uh, last turn now will be that BMW of uh, Mike Ferrier that Frankie has been uh, talking about and uh, then runs it down to the line. Now that will be, of course, the last position uh, in this race. Steve Humble, Emil Buerta and uh, Gary Ferri no longer in this race. They didn't even start uh, at, the, uh, at, the, you know, at the start of it, but uh, Martin Pugh uh, putting a lap there on uh, the uh, Porsche of De Roos. Of course, that's Richard De Roos. They're down the back straight now, but out of the uh, turn five section, it is going to be Divan Lasmore that crosses the line. And uh, I do not see Marco Retta. Here he is now, and he's been he's been passed by Divan Lasmore. So he comes through 4.7 seconds further back, and uh, everybody else after that has been lapped in this race. Right, the leader coming towards us under the uh, city of Cape Town Bridge to start his final lap. One more lap to go for Davi Hubert. Still the quickest man out there, 112.718 by Davi Hubert. 
as he makes his way out of a turn number one. That thing is super, super quick of Davi. You better be watch Davi as he makes his way towards Castro Corner. No competition today for that man, Davi Uber, as we go back there to... All right, so uh, across the line now, that's uh, Ray Farnham fending off there. Well, actually, sorry, Paul Beachy Head fending off from Ray Farnham. Ray Farnham goes on the inside then into turn one and will take the place right away. I uh, think now uh, there must be some issues with that Audi R8 because he's being passed uh, one by one now. And Simeon Penev will be the next man to try and get passed in turn two. Castro Corner right on the back there, Paul Beachy Head's Audi. And uh, yeah, the 350Z will make easy work of that shortly, I'm sure, as they come out through the kink. But uh, this is the final lap. We wait now for Davi Uber that's uh, going to be coming out of turn five. And uh, towards the line, he does come now. We'll take the uh, victory for the second time today. And then uh, we see now where Carruthers is coming down the back straights. So into turn five, Pertamina Fastron, he will then run. Right, Carruthers making his, <coughs> making his way out of uh, Fastron corner towards a checkered flag. Ahead of him is Eric Salomon, but Eric is a lap down. Here comes Carruthers towards the checkered flag, and uh, he will finish his race in that second position. Then it will be the battle of the two princes. It will be Martin uh, should I say the two Martins? It'll be Martin Prince head of Martin Q. Here comes Martin uh, Prince across the line and heading towards us now is uh, Martin Q with the Doc in there behind him. But of course the Doc is uh, right at the back end of the field. Here comes Devan Lasmo towards the line. And Devan Lasmo will finish there on the lead lap. Very spread out the field of uh, sports and GT sponsored by Wild Rose Gin. And then Marco Retta, the man you see on screen there, will bring uh, that uh, car to the line. That's a new driver car combination, that BMW of Marco Retta.
Right, here we go with the Bridgestone STC 650 and the Super Sport uh, 300 as they come out into the uh, sunset here at uh, Kalani. This is the third last race of the day. After them, we will have the uh, Superbikes, Masters and uh, uh, 600 and then we'll end the day off with the South Motorcycles Clubman's Classic and Breakfast. But before we get to those two classes, we're going to get through the Bridgestone STC 650 and uh, Super Sport uh, 300s. It was all about Ryan Kutsia in the Project 60 team, Trevor Westman team, uh, ER 650 Kawasaki that won that one and he was way, way, way down the road. And there was a good fight between Jamie Hall and Nicholas Hutchings for that uh, second position. And then uh, a bit further down, we had Brandon Hutchings that was involved in a huge, huge fight there as well with Matthew van Niekerk. And not too far behind them, we had Garrett Goss. So yeah, it was uh, all out there on the track for this class. And then the Super Sport 300s was won there by Adrian Solomon. And sadly, we had a DNF there for Abigail Bosson that had an issue on the exit on the outside of uh, turn two Castrol Corner. Luckily, she still got third actually in the race. She so did, yes. She was a lap down, but she got classified as third in class. And uh, so, yeah, she'll be wanting to make amends uh, to that. Uh, there she is on the grid at the moment. Thumbs up always uh, from her. Three ladies uh, on the uh, grid uh, today for the uh, 650s and 300s. Uh, Elmi Mostert. Uh, as well as Megan Hall, who's Jamie Hall's sister. So Jamie Hall, who's uh, second on the grid, uh, his sister finds herself uh, in this race uh, as well. And uh, it's good to see the families getting together and uh, getting out there racing. The uh, number 89 of Wasserfall gets into position now as well. There is the 74 of Braddon Hutchings. Uh, that's on the second row of the grid. And the uh, fifth place uh, section, Goss, I don't see Goss into position yet. I think he's coming now. The number 20 uh, should be into position. There he comes. And then uh, the seventh place uh, starter, Smith, uh, of course, will get into his position on row three. And it looks like everybody is in uh, the uh, right four positions. Now, go with the wind, uh, John uh, Green. There we go, out of the way. The man who's gonna be raising the five second board, out of the way, he does now. And away we go, oh, what a massive wheelie there. Uh, coming down quite hard, it was uh, for uh, the man on pole, but uh, he gets it going quite uh, again. So uh, yeah, they all go through turn one for the first time in this uh, second uh, of the bike uh, race uh, heats. And uh, well, now out onto the straight, uh, we will then run as uh, we go towards turn two, Castrol Corner. And we'll pick up as they come along uh, who is where. Very big battles happening on the exit. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Goss and the 20 bike, uh, uh, Garrett had a horrible start. He almost stole the bike on the line. Lucky nobody whacked into him and he got the bike going just in time. So all as well, they all continue out of uh, turn number three. They come now into Scepter Corner, racing up the hill, uh, the Tiger Book straight towards turn four. Will it be uh, the 34 uh, uh, two of Ryan Kutsia or will it be Jamie Hall? That's Jamie Hall that's got his nose up front. But here comes Ryan Kutsia down the back main. And then we've got uh, Matthew that's in that second place, for a uh, third place for Nikar. Matthew van Niekerk is having a fight there with Hutchings as they race into turn number five. But back into the lead again at the exit of turn five is Ryan Kutsia. Yeah, Ryan Kutsia opened the throttle up there. Frankie went on the wheelie and came down. So a tricky start there uh, for him, but back in the lead as he comes to the end of his very first lap here. And uh, we'll see the gaps between them. Four tenths of a second. Hutchings, that'll be br um, Nick Nicholas Hutchings, the 72 Project 60 bike. Eight tenths of a second off. Then Van Nikkei, Bratton Hutchings in fifth position. Then Smith, Solomon is the leader at the moment of the uh, 300 class. Abigail Boston holds that second in 11th position with Medell, Goss and Everts between herself and Solomon at the present moment. Now Raymond Alexander sits uh, third in that class in the uh, Super Sport 300s 
and uh, then Mitch uh, Robinson and uh, then Max Munton. But he's a far way down is Max Munton. So where's the leaders? They're making their way towards four. Working their way towards a turn four out of saddle sweep. Down the back main they go. Ryan Kutsia versus Jamie Hall. Kutsia is the man that had the lead. He's still got the lead. Going down uh, the uh, back straight. And then here comes Nicholas Hutchings. Then uh, we have got uh, Matthew van Nikak down the back main. Followed there by Brad and Hutchings. As they work their way down the back straight. Racing towards turn five. Towards Bertamina Fastron. Out of turn five, they will then run. Ryan Kutsia, the man who started on pole position, lost the lead briefly on lap one and has had it back now for the last two uh, laps, you could say, uh, is now still leading the way. Four tenths, it was the last time out. Now it's going to be six tenths, two tenths of a second faster. Oh, Hutchings has closed up to within two tenths of a second. Actually, within three tenths, he's still going to chip away still more to get a little bit closer to uh, Jamie Hall. For Nikak, dropping backwards over there. 4.8 seconds ahead of Brandon Hutchings. Paul Bedell coming up quite nicely ahead of Smith and Goss. And just behind Goss is the leader of the 300. That's Aiden Solomons, P1 in class and P9 overall. But the leaders are going through the kink and into interceptor corner. And it's close. That's very close. Nicholas Hutchings is right on the back wheel there of Jamie Hall. As they make their way up the Tiger Big Straight towards a turn number four. Will he look up on the inside? He does, but he makes no move. As they work their way out of four, out of silo sweep, down the back main, and all's in trouble. And the trouble is called Nicholas Hutchings. They side by side, down the back main, and Hutchings will surely move up into that second place. Yeah, he's on the inside for turn five, Pertamina Fastron, and he will make it up into second position now and set his sights on Ryan Kutsier as they come around onto the uh, main straight once again as they go past the uh, old bus stop chicane for the bikes and cross the line. This little group has left everybody else behind for Nikak, Hutchings, Bedell, Smith and Goss all further back at the moment ahead of course of the Solomon number nine of course uh, in the uh, standings that is the leader still as far as the 300s are concerned. Abigail Boston has made her way past uh, the 82 of Smith and is now setting her sights there on uh, Goss. The leaders are making their way out of a Castrol corner and uh, I'll tell you what, Ryan Kutsia has uh, got his hands full. He sits out there in P1, but that P1 is not safe. Hutching sits there in that second place out of Interceptor Corner. And he is getting away from Jamie Hall and he's catching up to Ryan Kutsia through turn four they go. Ryan Kutsia is in big trouble and the trouble, as I said earlier on, is called Nicholas Hutchings down the back main they go. They are side by side and will we have a new leader? Will we have a new leader? Not yet. They're still side by side down the back main. That's Hutchings and Kutsia. And who's going to give in for the other one? The inside line man will probably take the lead and he does so. And I think, Byron, that Nicholas might be in P1. Nicholas is in P1, I think, as I'll come around now. A 121.460 was his fastest lap of the race, the overall fastest lap of the race. Down towards the line now, the Project 60 bike, number 72, is the leader of this race by two tenths of a second across the line. But coming right back at him will be Kutsia. Jamie Hall will be in that third position. And as we speak, a 121.441, the fastest lap of the race for Nicholas Hutchings. Now well, that's HSC bike, it sits out there in P1 but into turn two here we go they are still going at each other as they work their way out of a castle corner Hutching service center versus project 60 i.e. Trevor Westman Right route now, they go have another stab at it over here from Ryan Kutsia. Two tenths of a second and they cross the line much closer now. Front wheel to back wheel. They go on the Tiger Boot straight now. Go into the uh, double apex right hander at Super Saddle Sweep and onto the back straight. It is now going to be five laps left to go, including the one they're on. So four and a bit. He's in the slipstream, is uh, Ryan Kutsia. Will he make a move? They go side by side now and I think he'll go onto the inside for Pertamina Fastron, which means this battle is very far from over. Well, 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 we're going to stick with this one because Jamie Hall sits there in that third place. He's got the best seat in the house while he's uh, watching these guys and uh, they are literally uh, dissecting each other as they race down into turn number one. Well, Hutching Service Centre might be on board, 
but I think Byron, both those bikes is sponsored by Project 60 Racing. It is. Ryan Kutsier puts in the fastest lap of a 121.168 over the last lap, two tenths of a second faster than Hutchings, and they cross the line 32 thousandths of a second between each other. As uh, now we go on to the uh, main straight now, I think we uh, have the likes of uh, Solomon coming across the line there as well. Uh, it's going to be Garrett Goss, Braden Hutchings first, Voter Smith, then uh, Keegan Wasserfall, who's come up ahead of Adrian Solomon, who's still the leader of the uh, 300 class. He's only got Nigel Everts 5.8 seconds back, and then Abigail Boston, who's fighting her way to the front of the 300 class. Raymond Alexander in 14th is just off of the 80 two of Smith. Down the back line they go once again they side by side the two leaders. Man can you believe this? Jamie Orr is dropping slightly back. He's still in that third place. There are other fights raging out there but there's nothing nothing on the track right now that's as close as these two. Nicholas Hutchings and uh, Ryan Kutsia. What a rumble. Are they still side by side? No they're not. But that's not going to be long before they are side by side again as they go down into turn number one with Jamie Hall still in that third place. I speak under correction. I think it was Elmer Mostert. They were just getting past there lapping Frankie and it spaced them out just a little bit. It is now half a second between Hutchings and Kutsia. Kutsia leading the way across the line. 2.7 seconds further back is going to be Jamie Hall. We wait for for Nickak on that main straight across the line now and it's going to be very close indeed as they do do that but it's going to be three laps left to go including this very one that we are on through the kink towards turn three are our leaders running right now well the gap has got smaller and smaller again when they cross the line Hutchings was a five tenths of a second ahead of Kutsia but they're working their way back towards turn four once again out of solo sweep and this one's not done. They'll have two laps to go when they cross the line. Down the back main they go. They will start the third and final sector now. Down the back straight they race. There's a back mark ahead of them. But that back marker won't come into play yet. And once again, Byron, they are side by side into turn five, into fast run. Watch them as they come through. They've got two more laps left to go when they cross the line now. There's a few back markers that they might still encounter here, Frankie. They're getting past one right now. But underneath the city of Cape Town, Castro and Wingfield Motors Bridge, it is now nose to tail between these two. It was Hutchings and Kutsier. It is still going to be Hutchings and Kutsier. Seven hundredths of a second between them. Has there been a move made into turn one? Well, this is their second last lap that they're on, making their way out of turn one. Oh, my word. They're going to have to just keep it going. This just must not end in tears. There are lots of other dice going on around the field, which uh, we will talk about a bit later on, including the 300s. But this is the Project 60 teammates that are sitting out in first and second racing down into Interceptor Corner with nothing between the two of them. And a lap and a bit to go. Down the Tigerberg straight they will then run. There is a back marker ahead of them. I'll find out who that is very shortly over here. When they come around through Sardle Sweep, I think it's Michael Ryfoth that they'll be coming up to to uh, put a lap on. That could play a factor over here. Down the straight as we go. Look how close it is. Ryan could here goes into the slipstream he goes into the outside Frankie as they go towards turn five and I think that will allow at the moment Hutchings to hold on to the lead for now and now it's the now or never lap coming up well well they're gonna have one more lap to go when they cross the start finish line and here we go they are right on each other they next to each other they are side by side as they cross the line Hutchings is on the inside Hutchings is on the inside Kutsia on the outside and Kutsia has got the lead Kutsia's got the lead coming out of turn one with two back markers in front of them as they head towards uh, Castro Corner. They'll run towards Castro Corner now. This is far from over, Frankie. So now on the back foot, it's going to be Hutchings at the moment. They cross the line, 47 thousandths of a second between the two of them. Kutsia marginally ahead. Now they come out to Castro towards the kink. They'll then run. Then into the highly competitive, uh, into the uh, Interceptor Shoes Corner. Then onto the Tigerberg Straight. They've got a few more back markers. They might just catch them, Frankie. But while they catch them on the back straight, that is where it might play a factor at the moment. Well, uh, Nicholas must get a move on if you want a photo finish here. Out of turn four, they come. Kutsia has got the lead, but he's got him. He's got him there once again, side by side. I have never seen anything like this before. 
down the back lane they go. You can separate them with a piece of tissue as they race down into turn number four. This is the race of the day as they work their way out of five. Byron, you cannot choose a winner and there's only a few hundred meters left before they get to the checkered flag. Let's see. I think it's good here that might just have it here, Frankie. They run it to the line now between the two of them. It is going to be good here that wins ahead of Hutchings. And let's take a look at tenth of a second between them. It's been closer. And then we have Jamie Hall come across the line in third position. Wow, and then we have Paul Medell that's come up to fourth. What a ride from Paul Medell. We still just have Michael uh, Reifov, Peter Hill. Megan uh, Hall has come through as well to complete. Uh, they, of course, had a lap put on them. Uh, and uh, now coming towards the line, the uh, 75 of oh, Reifoff, yes, has uh, completed his lace. Then Paul Medell comes across the line. And uh, Matthew van Nikak does likewise. F number five on the uh, standings. Well, 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 heading towards us now is a Brandon Hutchings on the 74. And he brings that bike across the line in P6. Yo, what a race out there. We had brilliant stuff. And Adrian Solomon will come home first in the Power Sport 300s. And this time, Abigail Bosson will finish in second. Raymond Alexander will finish in third. Uh, Mitch Robertson will finish in fourth. And fifth will go to Max Munton. Man, I think we just need to catch our breath now. Whoa, yeah, lie down in a dark room, cold towel over our heads, because that was racing. That is motorcycle racing at its very best. When you see these young chargers go against each other. Wow, Ryan Kutzier, uh, Nicholas Hutchings, man oh man. You know, uh, apologies to everybody else in the race over there. We were focusing a lot on that, but we had some great battles uh, in there as well. I know that uh, uh, Adrian Solomon did win the 300 class. Uh, Alexander was second in the class. Boss on third again. Yeah, a lot of people might say, oh, why didn't we focus on uh, the other uh, dices downfield? But the, the, that was the ultimate one that happened up front and that's the one that we had to stay with because that was about more than half of the race these guys and the fact by them that they never took each other out they gave each other enough room to operate in and they had total respect for each other and that i salute both uh, ryan kutsia and nicholas hutchings well done uh, Andrew from HSC will be happy and of course uh, Trevor from Project 60 will say to these guys well done gentlemen that was some seriously mature riding by both Ryan and by Nicholas yeah, you know, I'm telling you, the Hutchings as well, all very well and truly involved in motorsport here at Killarney, whether it be uh, two wheels, four wheels. Andrew spoke to him briefly earlier on. Him and uh, his wife Catherine are very involved in the short circuit uh, side of things as well. And that's where a lot of these youngsters all come from uh, as well, is from that short circuit section. And uh, there is going to be a short circuit race on the 11th of November. So if you want to see some of these guys get onto a short circuit, onto a uh, 150cc bike, then uh, you can have a lot of fun watching that as well. So uh, that's where it all comes from. And uh, that's a great way to start off this last trio of bike races. We'll be going over to the Superbike, Superbike Challenge, Masters in the 600s, fairly shortly over here before rounding everything off with the South Motorcycles, Clubman's Classic Superbikes, Breakfast Run Motorcycles. Right, folks, sorry that we for those at home, but we have to make this announcement as rather urgier, urgent can miss Z Vanya please report to the admin office uh, in the Castle Tower please Miss Z Vanya you are needed in the uh, admin office in Castle Tower sorry for the folks at home we know we're going out live but that was an urgent announcement
Right, folks, here we go with the uh, Superbikes Masters Challenge 600s. Where's Alan John Fenter? There he is. He's in P3. Who's up there on his inside? I see Tristan. <laughs> Pina says to him, come on, put you in my spot. You must go to P4. Don't want you here. But, uh, you, don't want, you don't want to mess with riders. You don't want to mess with bikers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, gold member. Uh, just go and get yourself into, uh, into fourth position there. Now, uh, this Brad Bodsworth, he's out there as well. And uh, then we have on his outside got Rob Craig. Then uh, Slate van Niekerk. And uh, that's going to be some good stuff to see van Niekerk out there. I see Mark van der Berg is also in there. The man in second place, I missed him, that is uh, Rapson. So, let's have a look see. Five second board. We're about to go racing. The lights go off. And away they go. And it is a lovely, lovely start there. By is he going to get it? Yes, he does. That's Q and Snayman. Snayman got a lovely, lovely start off the line there. Dida Snayman and uh, so did Pinar, as a matter of fact. Pinar actually sits in that second position. He had a fly off the line. He got his nose ahead at one stage there of Malcolm Rapson going into turn number one as uh, they exit turn two now, Castle Corner. Through the kink they go and head towards Interceptor. The man up front, Byron. The man that won race one. Bike number 19, Kewin Snayman. Yeah, and he won it by a country mile as well. I can tell you, Kewin Snayman on that fire blade is incredibly lethal. And they're uh, going to go now through the uh, double apex right-hander at Sardle Sweep for the first time in this uh, second race. And uh, down the straight uh, as we then go towards the uh, turn five, Pertimina Fastron. It looks like as far as starts are concerned, Frankie, Malcolm Rapson not really getting the starts quite nicely and he's uh, dropped down the order but it's always a fight back uh, for the man who won the Masters class in the previous race. Yeah, I lost the game into turn number one, he lost it to Pina and now he's fighting with Pina to try and get back into that second. Remember that uh, uh, Pina is in the 600 class as they make their way back into turn number one once again. So Pina still sits second, no he's not, he's actually in third place. Alan John Fenter has gone up to second. Wow! Fenter has taken that gold machine and put it back into P2 as they work their way into Castrol Corner. Yeah, the man has started fourth up into second. And Pinar, yes, is the uh, man leading the 600 class at the moment. He finds himself 1.1 seconds ahead of Rob Craig. Rob Craig currently leads the master section. But remember, who's going to be carving through the field is the man with number one on the bike, the Jixer of Malcolm Rapson. Right, yeah, they come out of a turn four. Down the back, man, they go. Q and Snayman sits out there in P1. Here he comes. Right behind him, it's Alan John Fenter. Then behind Fenter, we have got Pina. Then uh, we have got Slate van Ikker. And he's got his nose ahead there of Malcolm Rapson. As they go to Rapson, comes back there at van Ikker. As they head down into turn five. That's how they are. Not on your screen now, but that's how they are going down into turn five. Here comes Q and Snayman now. 1.4 seconds the last time between himself and Fenter. Crosses the line up. That will be a 113.709 for him. And 2.9 seconds between himself and Fenter. Pinar crosses the line for Nickak. Will be 1.9 seconds back. But just coming up, Rapson is coming through. And I'm sure Rapson, as he comes onto the uh, Jubair straight now, will take uh, the uh, fourth place away from Van Nickak. Of course, going past the 600, he surely will shortly watch them as they come through there now this is of course lap two uh, of the uh, nine laps that they are doing in this particular race i uh, see bodsworth is uh, currently leading the superbike challenge class from dion ibel and uh, quinton weening in third position at the present moment looking at as far as the 600s are concerned jason lineker down in 11th spot is third in class with kiana strode all the way from neisner there in 12th position and fourth in class so down the back main goes snowman then we've got finta then we've got Pina, and uh, then uh, we've got Rapson that's now got his nose ahead of Slate van Ikker as they go down into turn number one. Rob Craig is in the house as well and so is Mark van der Berg. That old group of them that's busy working their way out of turn five out of Fast Run Corner. 
Well, six laps left to go, including the one that was now just started by Sneijman. Fenter comes across the line, 4.7 seconds back. Now crossing the line again, Kila Rapson up. 1.9 seconds off now, crossing the line. They all do to start the next lap. And uh, I see uh, that uh, number 96 uh, over there of Fundenberg ahead of Bodsworth at the uh, present moment. Actually, Lineker that's coming up the field past Weening. And uh, they cross the line 72 thousandths of a second between each other. Meanwhile, through turn two, Castro Corner is where they are currently moving at the moment. We go all the way down to Pinar and Rapson at the moment, changing positions. Well, it's all up uh, for grabs here. Waiting for the leader to come into view. There he goes, down the back main. Missile motorcycles. Q and Sneiman. Alan John Fenter in that second position, followed there by Tristan Pinar. Down the back main they go. Then it's Rapsom. Then it's Van Nickat. And uh, then it's Rob Craig. And behind uh, Rob Craig is Mark van der Berg. Racing down towards turn number five into Fostron Corner. And he has got Brad Bodsworth right on his case there for P7 and 8. Five laps left to go now as uh, Alan Fenter comes across the line. 6.2 seconds off the leader. Here comes uh, the uh, Malcolm Rapson Dixer into third position. No, not quite yet. He's got past for Nickak. He's closing up the gap to Pinar at the moment. Pinar still holds that third position, first in the 600 class. And then Rapson for Nickag. Rob Craig now in sixth position, six tenths of a second off of for Nickag. Funden back is uh, now two seconds back of Rob Craig. And Bradley Bosworth, as Frankie had been mentioning, still batting it out with Dion Evil. 113.451 by Q and Snowman. The man in P1 is the quickest rider out there. As we watch them make their way around, they're working their way towards turn four. Through turn four, they lean those motorcycles. Down the back main he goes. Missile motorcycles in P1. That's Q and Snowman. Then Alan John Fenter in that second place. Then leading the 600s in P3 is Tristan Pinar. Then uh, we have got a show here because it is Rapson that is working his way down into uh, five. And then he's got Slate for Nickak and Rob Craig right on his case as they exit turn five out of fast run. Four laps left to go now as Neyman crossed the line. Fenter does likewise, basically on his own now, you could say. Although you could say Christian Pinar still 3.3 seconds back and Rapson is unable to catch uh, Pinar at the present moment. He's 2.1 seconds off now, but uh, I don't know if he's maybe conserving rubber a little bit there as well. And then maybe have a go at him as the last laps uh, go. Uh, he is pretty quick. Of of course, uh, Malcolm Rapson is now seven tenths of a second ahead of Rob Craig at the moment, who's now got ahead of Van Nickak. Van Nickak in sixth position is still second in class, and uh, he's ahead of Vandenberg. 3.6 seconds to be exact. Well, the laps are busy winding down here. We have got three and a bit laps to go as they make their way down the back straight. The leader heading towards uh, five again. He's got a massive lead as Snayman on uh, Fenter. Heading into turn five, followed there by Pina, and uh, down the back straight they race now. That's a whole lot of them going into five. I think there might be a change of position that's going down into turn number five. We'll have a look and see coming out of Fostron. I think that's the other way around. That's an overall fight for third on track as they make their way towards us. We'll have a look and see. Yes, it is. It is, it is, uh, it is Craig that's the head of Van Nickak, so that has changed and I thought that there was a change for that P5 and they both still sit there behind Malcolm Rapson. Well Tristan Pinar, six tenths of a second between himself uh, uh, and uh, Malcolm Rapson on the last lap of 115.4 compared to the 116.2. So it looks like he's got the handle on things at the present moment but still leading the Masters class will be Malcolm Rapson on that number one bike. And uh, well Slate for Nickak. He still holds that uh, triple 11 bike, uh, triple one bike, I should rather say, in sixth position. And uh, he will then be second in class, still ahead of Funnenberg. Bodsworth, Ebel, both uh, are the top two in class as far as the Superbike Challenge is concerned. Lineker, Jason, is ahead of third place man in class, weaning himself, of course, the third place for Lineker in the 600s. One, two more laps to go for this man as he crosses the line. 113.451 Q and Snowman. Then our guest rider, Alan John Fenter. 
that uh, crosses the line now and uh, he is 8.9 seconds behind him then it's Pinar as they come down towards the front Pinar it's Malcolm Rapson, Rob Craig right on his case is Slate Van Nikar and uh, Van Nikar and Van Berg cross the line as well waiting for Bodsworth but Bodsworth crosses the line and then right there with him is Dion Ebel in P9. Watch them as they come through now. This is going to be two laps left to go, including the one we are currently on. Going through turn two, Castro Corner was looking there at a little bit faster this last time out from uh, Malcolm Rapson. He uh, was a tenth of a second faster than Pinot on the last lap. 2.8 seconds between them. Now he's going to have to push it very hard. It's going to be a tough ask for him from fourth position to try and challenge the 603rd position. Well, you'll have, you'll have the uh, kilowatts down the back straight as uh, we have a look and see going down the back main, going down into turn five. That's still no to tail stuff there, Byron, into Fostron Corner. Got to watch out uh, for our leaders as well. I think uh, coming across the line was Kew and Sneeman. Then uh, Alan Fenter comes across the line as well. Pinar will do likewise and now looking at the times over there it is now 2.8 I think pretty much it's going to be settling for that is the final lap of the race Slate van Nikak just crossed the line in sixth position second in the 600 class Vandenberg well he's uh, dropping down the order here as Bodsworth comes up into seventh still leading the Superbike Challenge class ahead of Dion Ebel well this is the uh, final lap the last lap of the race, there he goes, down the back main, all on his own, from Missile Motorcycles, Q and Snowman. he's got a massive, massive lead there on Alan John Fenter, that sits there in that second place, will bring the leader to the checkered flag as he makes his way out of turn five, out of Fostron Corner, the checkered flag is out, they're not going to beat Q and Snowman today, he brings it home, first across the line, He's a Q and Snyman and heading towards us now in that second position is Alan John Fenter. Yep, so Alan John Fenter crosses the line 11.1 seconds off of Q and Snyman. Then we have Tristan Pinar coming through. He's the winner of the 600 class. He's third in this race overall. Malcolm Rapson just crosses the line ahead of Rob Craig. I don't think uh, he's been having a very good time, old uh, Malcolm Rapson. He wins the master section ahead of Craig, but Craig just a tenth of a second back ahead then of Slade van Nikak, who is the second place in the uh, class of the 600s and then Brad Bodsworth takes the win in the Superbike Challenge seventh overall from Dion Ebel also a master runner Jason Lineker gets third in the 600 class crossing the line in ninth position Quinton Weening comes across in tenth position in the Superbike Challenge he's third Wayne Aron says fourth in the Superbike Challenge and uh, twelfth position 11th position rather, Kiana Strode comes through now, 4th in the 600 class, Daniel Frost comes through, he will be 5th in the Superbike Challenge, Eva Kurtz uh, on the 600, that will be the, uh, I think the 5th uh, in the 600 class, yes, and Mark Vandenberg does not make it to the chequered flag, uh, he's uh, going to be 2 laps down over there, so the uh, lap before last, he uh, unfortunately had to pull the bike out of the race. Well, folks, we now head to the final race of the day. It's uh, five past five. One more race to go in what was a fantastic, fantastic main circuit race day. A big thanks to all our sponsors. Big thanks to Pertamina Fostron. A big thanks to um, Porsche Club. A big thank you to uh, Kestrel. 
A big thanks to King Tony Tools. A big thanks to Interceptor Shoewear. But a special thanks to Wingfield Motors, Mr. Johnny van Niekerk, that has sp uh, sponsored here for the last 10 years. A big thanks to the city of Cape Town. And then a big thanks to the WPMC media partner, that Smile 90.4 FM. A big thanks to everybody, including all our class sponsors that have sponsored here today and throughout the entire 2023 season. We've mentioned all your names on numerous occasions today, but from our side, a big thanks. We cannot do it without you people as we head towards the last race of the event. So the final race of the day, and it's motorcycles for the uh, sixth motorcycle race of the day. The South Motorcycles Clubman's Classic and Breakfast Run Motorcycles, well subscribed, about 16 of them uh, out there in all. And the man who qualified on pole uh, in the previous race, won the previous race, won, uh, led every single lap, was uh, Gerard Frey. And, uh, well, his best time in the last race, a 1.19.370, uh, two seconds faster than Piers Canute, who starts in second in the, uh, in the race. He was having a uh, race-long battle with uh, Leighton Thomas, and uh, then uh, Willem Lowe, Samkela Liwani, Jason Bolterman, Shandon Thompson uh, in there as well. Sharif Reynolds on that Ducati is one of the two... Uh, bikes are the classic bikes but uh, we are almost ready to go racing here and uh, waiting for the start of the one minute board gets uh, retracted the revs are rising John Green runs to the side and we will go racing in the next few moments time off the line we go it is going to be Garrett Frey that will take them off towards the uh, first turn. Has the wheelie over there. I hope he didn't jump the start. It looked quite quick that he was coming off the line there. So uh, I didn't have a view of the lights myself, but we'll keep a lookout to see what happens. Piers Knut, Leeton Thomas, they were behind him. Willem Lowe, some Kila Liwani, Jason Bolterman. And like I said, Shandon Thompson and uh, Sharif Reynolds. Mario Ferreira, one of the classic bikes as well. He had a bit of a torrid time in race one. Uh, he's gotten off the line now properly, looks like it. One of the uh, pair of uh, mustard-coloured 1100 Boxer BMWs. 
And uh, now through the uh, turn three section we go. Uh, it's uh, the Interceptor Shoes. Very popular place to watch always uh, for most is turn three. And then uh, past the Bomers on the left-hand side, down the Tigerberg straight into uh, Saddle Sweep. And uh, on to the back straight in the first time in this last race of nine laps. Uh, that will then run down and a few moves being made. I think that could be Leighton Thomas. Leighton Thomas uh, trying his uh, moves on uh, Piers Knut. And then uh, running it to the line then to complete the first of these nine laps as they do. Look at Gerard Frey. He's already broken the gap quite a bit here. Down the straight as he goes, Frey crosses the line, and then it is going to be a Kawasaki that finds itself then in uh, second. It's low, then it's Thomas uh, from Knut. So Knut is now currently in fourth position, Balterman in the fifth position, then uh, Reynolds on the classic uh, Ducati in sixth position. He's ahead of Liwani by a tenth of a second. They'll run now into that uh, turn two section. And a little bit of movement being made. There's low on the Kawasaki, I think, right behind him. I think it could be Knut that's made his way past uh, Leighton Thomas. We'll find out now when they come around through turn three and uh, watch them as they do. Much closer behind uh, Gerard Frey over there. Two and a half seconds ahead of Lowe, who in turn is a half a second ahead of Thomas the last time they came across the line. But there has been a few changes now with the Thomas, Canute and Balterman section. Just looking a little bit further down the field as well with the breakfast run class. Mayer and Weber are in close proximity to each other. The 58 of uh, Weber is 11th uh, spot overall. The 12th place man and then uh, Philip Rimmer will find himself uh, in uh, that uh, number eight on that number eight bike in 14th position. Meanwhile, we uh, see now towards the line as uh, Gerard Frey crosses the line. Then it should be no, not Willem Lowe anymore. It's going to be the uh, 77 of Piers Knut. Meanwhile, it's a 119.997 for Frey who leads the race and has been doing so since he left the uh, grid on pole position. In pole position, Knute, Lowe, and then Leighton Thomas, Jason Balterman uh, hanging in there 1.6 seconds back and ahead of uh, Liwani by a whole second uh, it is between them. Sharif Reynolds still holding that uh, classic bike uh, lead at this time. Not many classic bikes out there. The uh, other ones as well, Matthew Reynard, and uh, I don't see John Costerman unfortunately out there. I see he did not take the start of this race, John Costerman. Seven laps to go. And they open up now onto the Tigerberg Straight into turn four now. Saddle sweep onto the uh, back main they run. And uh, it is still going to be our all-time leader over here that we've had the whole day, Gerard Frey, that uh, leads them around. And uh, the last time out was 4.4 seconds between himself and Piers Knut. I can only imagine that has grown considerably as he comes underneath the bridge. The Castrol, Refield Motors and City of Cape Town Bridge. There he goes, fastest lap, a 119.487. On the uh, main straight he comes into turn one, he will then run. Piers Knut will come across the line, 6.8 seconds back. Willem Lowe hanging in there, 6 tenths back. And then Leighton Thomas is right all over the back there of uh, the uh, Willem Lowe Kawasaki uh, as they uh, make their way around on this uh, particular lap towards turn two, Castro Corner. They'll then run under breaking Piers Knut. He's got a little bit of daylight between himself and uh, Willem Lowe at the moment. Leighton Thomas watching where he can over here to find a way past. Last time out, a 121.850. That was six tenths of a second faster than Willem Lowe. So uh, he was pushing. He's pushing very hard over there. They cross the line. Well, not yet. So they go, they go around through turn three, I should rather say. Not cross the line. Got a little bit of way to go. Down the straight we then run. And there's Gerard Frey now. If you're watching on the online stream, he goes down towards Pertamina Faster on Turn 5, also known as Cape Town Corner, the traditional name of the corner, but proudly sponsored by Pertamina Faster on. Right behind him, or not right behind him, 6.8 seconds behind him the last time around was Piers Knut. Here comes Karat Frey, a 119.482 as he crosses the line on that number 21 bike. Now goes into Turn 1 with five laps left to go. Piers Knut. A two-tenths of a second between himself and uh, 
the uh, men behind him, Willem Lowe, on his outside, I think, has been taken through turn one by Leighton Thomas. Leighton Thomas has surely uh, come up past that uh, bright green Kawasaki of uh, Willem Lowe and into turn two now. Still Canute ahead of them and then joining the back of that group will be Sinkela Liwani. Liwani is actually uh, holding himself in there as well. 1.1 seconds the last time as they crossed the line between them. But surely that looks like he's closed up the gap quite a bit, Liwani. So watch out for him in that fifth position at the moment. They've left uh, Jason Bulterman though, uh, behind. Uh, he's going down the back straight once again is our leader. 9.6 seconds. He'll probably break the 10 seconds barrier now between himself and uh, Piers Canute. Piers Canute, uh, who uh, of course is on the Yamaha R6 and uh, Willem Lowe, uh, as I was talking about on that uh, Kawasaki ZX6R, crosses the line now. But, uh, well, Frey putting more fastest laps in, a 3.89, uh, 19.389 uh, from the man there, Gerard Frey, uh, on the Kawasaki. Now, here's some big moves being made over here. Knut under pressure. Leighton Thomas actually comes across the line ahead of Knut. Uh, Knut now into third position. Liwani coming up into fourth position ahead of Willem Lowe as they cross the line. 69 thousandths of a second between Liwani and Lowe. And uh, dropping off the back still is Jason Bolterman, who will be on his own, basically, as far as he's concerned in that sixth position ahead of Conrad Mayer, the leader of the breakfast uh, run class. Conrad Mayer on the Suzuki. Four laps left to go. The uh, gaggle going through the uh, turn three section. Willem Lowe on the back of that uh, section. Those are all Clubman's bikes and they've lost touch with the leader. 12.5 uh, uh, seconds between them. Onto the back straight now. So as uh, in turn five, it's going to be Frey that uh, goes through to complete the lap. The bunch behind him, Leighton Thomas and Piers Knut. Some Kela Luwani and uh, Willem Lowe all follow him uh, in the distance and uh, out through the uh, turn five section they run towards the line and towards the bridge. They will then uh, cross the line once again to uh, complete another lap stop. Their third last lap of the race. It is uh, Leighton Thomas Liwani coming up into third position and then Canute into fourth position in that uh, number 77 uh, bike. There comes our leader once again. Another quick note. Well, watch him now. So here comes the seven of Reynolds across the line towards turn one. He's going to have Shandon Thompson uh, right uh, behind him there. Also one of the Clubman's class uh, runners, uh, Shandon uh, Thompson. And that's on the Suzuki uh, 600. Uh, and then uh, we have Reynard and Gress, 11 seconds back, both of them off of Thompson at this present moment in time as Tyler Weber comes across the line. Now, down the straight we go. Gerard Frey will start his last lap but one in uh, that, uh, on that uh, Kawasaki ZX-10. Uh, oh, of course, the Somerset Auto Clinic and uh, Mad Max uh, sponsored machine. Here he comes now towards the line and uh, will start his uh, penultimate lap. And uh, second and third have just uh, swapped around. So that must be Liwani coming up into second position in this race. And uh, let's see if he can hold on to that one. Coming across the line as he does now. It is Simkela Liwani. Leighton Thomas in third position. Piers Knut in fourth position. Willem Lowe in fifth position. Still holding a watching brief there. Seven tenths of a second off of the bunch ahead of him. Then Jason Balterman comes across the line on his own in that uh, sixth position. Number 90. Uh, Jason uh, Balterman. The Power Steering Solutions BMW F800. Then Shandon Thompson comes up into eighth position ahead of Sharif Reynolds who still leads the classic uh, club uh, classic bike uh, race ahead of Matthew Reynard Matthew Reynard should be coming soon on the straight but now through uh, turn three the uh, usual bunch uh, Luani Thomas and Knut uh, they run there onto the uh, last uh, bit of the second lap of the second last lap rather, of the uh, race down the back straight out of uh, turn four they run 
and then uh, gunning it down to turn five and uh, as we speak then it will be the last lap being started by Gerard Frey now and uh, still a 119.342 his fastest lap it's actually now the new fastest lap of the race he has just put in and extends his advantage ever so much more well here we go here comes some Keller Luani crosses the line on bike number 49 Leighton Thomas in third Pierce Canute and uh, Willem Lowe in uh, the uh, fourth and fifth positions. This is there now or never lap. They can uh, make some moves here. Yeah, some of them are quite close still in battle, but it's going to be a bit of a tough ask as Jason Bolterman crosses the line now. We just wait and watch out for where our leader is at this present moment in time. And uh, just to uh, pick up that uh, Kawasaki ZX-10R uh, of the number 21, Gerard Frey, who has been absolutely dominant uh, in uh, this particular race. Going down the back straight now is uh, our leader. He's led every lap of race one, led every lap of race two. Well, we won't speak too soon. Coming out through the last turn now and uh, run and close the day off here at this very, very successful uh, power series the flag is out number 21 Kano Frey takes the victory on the Kawasaki magnificent stuff from him then we wait a little while over here a few lapped uh, bikes Mario Ferreira down uh, in the uh, outside of the top 10 William Morris William Morris uh, does likewise on his BMW no John Costerman of course the Luani uh, takes second place Leighton Thomas will take third Piers Canute will take uh, fourth position Willem Lowe will take fifth position on the Kawasaki, Jason Balterman. He's the next man to come through then. Yeah, on the number 90 machine, the F800 BMW, then uh, Conrad Mayer will uh, take the win in the breakfast uh, run class. And uh, Shandon Thompson will come through in his clubman's class bike, on his clubman's class bike, in uh, the 10th position or 8th position rather, ninth is Sharif Reynolds, the winner of the Classic Bike Class, Matthew Reynard and uh, Philip Rimmer. So first Matthew Reynard comes through in uh, the 10th position, then 11th, 12th and 13th will be uh, Philip Rimmer, Tyler Weber coming through now, number 76 and Wayne Griss, who's very happy to see the, uh, the finish of this race. Well, folks, that uh, brings us to the conclusion of this uh, second last uh, Power Series event of the year. We've got one more still to come for uh, the championship and uh, a lot of championships being wrapped up now. But uh, I want to uh, personally thank uh, my uh, good friends and co-commentators today. Hmm? The 18th of November is going to be our last uh, one for the Power Series. Yes, that's the 9th. Uh, power series powered by Wingfield Motors, but uh, I'm just continuing over here. A big thank you to our eye in the sky, the Gazza, big Gary Fleming. It uh, was also, you heard him a few times today, but also, you know, eagle eyed out there and uh, keeping us, uh, you know, following the action. And uh, of course, uh, big thanks to uh, Emil Tiny Brunt. Uh, for the information always uh, being given to us and uh, keeping his uh, finger on the pulse and then to um, Frankie Ennis yeah thank him too okay bye uh, anyway uh, yeah Frankie Ennis uh, thanks to everybody over here just for the fantastic day thanks to our marshals thanks to our officials thanks to you who's ever left here at Kilani thanks 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 for coming uh, Anyway, drive safe wherever you're going. Um, yes, it's a big game tonight. Don't drink too much. Okay. I am going to I'm going to stop now, Gary. Don't worry. I'm not giving Gary a headache here. I think the cap's too tight on his head. But thank you everybody and uh, from myself Byron Height uh, signing off.
Well, folks, the pit lane's emptying out. The racing's over. The cars are getting loaded back on the trailers. And you can see the driving is done for the day. I'm going to go chat to some of the drivers now, reflect on a wonderful day's racing, and maybe head home to go watch the rugby. Thanks for joining us here at Kilani Raceway Power Series, and we'll see you guys at the next one.